Tony was attacked Hi, by a surviving like member of the extremist group Patreon on the Killian's leadership. The official website, he was away during the big battle, and once he found out that Killian was dead and the extremist group was already crushed, on he lost his way. And where most of the After all, or he knew that the extremist virus had no antidote. It took time, but he eventually would explode into a million pieces. And so, he quietly waited for Tony to show himself, and to his surprise, Tony was really coming to the restaurant with his girlfriend to boot. So, once he saw that Tony was arguing with his girlfriend, he immediately rushed towards Tony in an attempt to blow himself up when he got close enough. At the same time, after hearing Pepper's warning, Tony immediately pulled the Iron Man's arm out of his watch and immediately aimed it behind him. But something unfortunate happened, the terrorist slipped after stepping into a can, and Tony's shot missed. The terrorist rushed towards Pepper as he knew that he wouldn't win against Tony anymore, but as soon as he got close to Pepper, a figure suddenly showed up and kicked him on his chest, flinging him away from Pepper like a rag doll. Tony immediately rushed toward the terrorist and stunned the guy for safety. But as soon as he turned back to see Pepper's condition, he was surprised to see Dio was already there to cover for Pepper. Dio himself only came out after receiving Pepper's call. He never thought that the terrorist's remnant was still out there. The first thought that crossed Dio's mind was that the black mist yesterday was aiming for Pepper. However, something unexpected immediately happened. Tony turned Dio around and immediately punched him with his Iron Man's fist. What are you doing, Tony? Dio said annoyedly as Tony's punch didn't affect him in the slightest for Dio always shielded his body with ham and energy. Tony. Are you out of your mind? Pepper said as she was surprised that Tony would do something like this. But Tony ignored Pepper and once again rushed towards Dio, at the same time, Dio knew that this was real. Tony was really going to fight him. Tony. Calm down. We should solve this with civilized manner and talk things through. Dio said reasonably. There is no need to talk things through here. It was obvious in my eyes that you are a snake. Tony said furiously as he called down the rest of his armor and immediately clad it. What is this, Tony? What are you thinking? Are you under someone's control or something? Dio asked as he frowned some more, he didn't understand what Tony was so mad about. He couldn't attack Tony as he knew that there were so many people watching right now, so he focused on dodging Tony's attack. Did you know, Dio? I specially made this armor to deal with you in mind. I knew that with your attitude and personality, we would cross paths someday. Tony said furiously as he tried to hit Dio with his fist. Dio sensed that something was off. Tony wasn't one to go on a rampage like this, so he must be under some sort of control. The only thing that Dio could think of was Crystal's power. It seemed that the black mist yesterday was still targeting Dio but used some complicated means to pit Tony against him. Dio was getting more annoyed as he noticed that Tony pulled out the adamantium knife to fight him. And so, he caught Tony's arm and turned him around and whispered in his ear. You want to fight? You get it. Now, how about we change the place first? This place has become too crowded. Dio whispered coldly. Tony immediately looked around and noticed that the place did become too crowded. There were so many people recording their fight and watching the scene. So, without any words, Tony immediately took Dio and flew into the sky towards a new battleground for them both. Pepper, who was left in front of Dio's restaurant, frowned as she didn't understand why Tony acted like this. But she immediately left the scene as there were so many people watching her right now. Inside Dio's restaurant, Crystal, who didn't know what happened outside and still immersed in watching TV. But unbeknown to her, the black mist came out a little bit and smirked as it knew that its plan was working. It still came out even though Crystal was still awake. After flying quite far from the restaurant, Tony stopped and threw Dio toward the open field. Based on Jarvis's scan, this place should be empty. I gave you one last chance, Tony. Stop, this madness, before I'm forced to stop you forcefully. Dio said warningly. Stop. Did you think that I will instantly lose to you? Are you that cocky, or it's just plain ignorance? I will crush you. I swear to God. Tony said as he has become too enraged to think clearly. Well, suit yourself. Dio said as he immediately summoned the, White Album, and, Horus. Dio immediately shot a bunch of ice shards towards Tony with, Horus, S power. 
Dio's ice shard seemed to have no effect as it shattered as soon as it hit Tony's vibranium armor, but Dio knew that Tony's armor wasn't perfect. It was still an experimental armor as he still couldn't combine the vibranium with the adamantium just yet. Therefore, Dio knew that the armor should have its limit, the ice shards might look like it was useless, but there was no doubt it chipped off Tony Armor's durability bit by bit. Hey, Tony. Heads up. Dio said as he threw a large-sized ice sculpture towards Tony. Tony, who was struggling to defend himself against Dio's ice shards, was surprised that a giant sculpture was suddenly thrown at him like this. The sculpture that Dio threw towards Tony was none other than a road roller sculpture. Dio could say that after throwing such a thing towards Tony, he felt this satisfaction feeling inside him. But Tony wasn't that easy to defeat. He pulled out another adamantium sword from his back and cut the ice sculpture into pieces. Tony's armor was made to convert the energy from enemy attack into energy that he could use for activating his suit. So, in a way, even if Tony was getting beaten inside this suit, he would never run out of energy. So, after receiving enough energy, Tony activated the thruster on his boots to 200, he immediately flew towards Dio at high speed, while thrusting his sword forward to pierce Dio. Dio immediately used the power of, Horus, to create layers of ice wall between himself and Tony, but unfortunately, Tony was too fast, and the adamantium sword was too sharp for the ice wall to block. So, Tony pierced through the ice wall like butter. Dio didn't seem panicked at all. He spun around and caught Tony's arm while also activating another trick out of his sleeve. Ice Cage Dio said as the ice wall that was previously destroyed by Tony, gathered around Dio, and suddenly restrained Tony. Dio knew that this ice cage was difficult to destroy, in fact, it took Hulk a while to break it with a pure brute force. It's over, Tony. Stop this nonsense now. Dio said with a sigh. He wanted to get this over with and ask Tony what was wrong. But at the same time, a red light flashed from Tony's Iron Man suit. Jarvis, lift the safety protocol and release the stored energy at the same time. Tony said solemnly. But sir. Your body wouldn't be able to withstand the impact even if it's covered by the vibranium gold plate. Jarvis said as a warning to Tony. Do as I say, Jarvis. This is an order. Tony said commandingly. It seemed Tony was hell-bent on defeating Dio. Jarvis immediately did as Tony told and the energy stored on Tony's back burst immediately. The ice cage that was holding him was blown into smithereens while Tony himself was also thrown away into the nearby trees. This time Dio immediately realized that Tony wasn't himself right now. There was no way Tony would do something this risky if he still thought that Dio was his friend. Jarvis, scan the damage my body has sustained. Jarvis? Tony said as Jarvis' voice couldn't be heard again, this meant that his communication device was broken. Tony was irritated, without Jarvis' help, Tony wasn't a capable fighter. He would no longer be capable of crossing swords with Dio. Dio saw that Tony was wobbly after the explosion and so he immediately rushed over and pinned him into the nearby tree. Even if he was using a vibranium-coated armor, Tony could still feel the pain from being tossed around. As Dio slammed Tony into the ground, he quickly tried to remove Tony's headpiece to talk with Tony personally. But as he did so, a gunshot was heard. Dio was in complete disbelief as he saw that his ice armor and Hammond shield was penetrated by a bullet shot through the Iron Man's arc reactor. Dio, who has successfully opened Tony's mask, saw that Tony was smirking underneath the mask. I used the remaining adamantium to make this bullet, how was the power? Was it strong enough to get the mysterious Grim Reaper down to his knees? Tony said with a smirk on his face. Dio reached out to hold his wound from bleeding out. He couldn't believe an adamantium bullet could do this much to him. He knew that the bullet wasn't the same as the one that was fired with a gun. This was Iron Man's arc reactor, it has ten times more shooting power than a gun would be. William Stryker had used these bullets once when he was cornered by Wolverine, and he successfully penetrated Wolverine's adamantium skull easily. Are you seriously trying to kill me, Tony? Dio asked in disbelief. Like a fire being extinguished with cold water, Tony immediately realized what he had just done. Tony was instantly shocked as he recalled the unexplainable hatred that he felt throughout his battle with Dio. Now, he was panicking as he didn't know what to do. He began to think that his mind was losing it. 
Jarvis, call an ambulance, pronto. Jarvis? Tony said as he ordered Jarvis to call an ambulance, but unfortunately, Jarvis was no longer able to help Tony as his communication device was destroyed when he detonated the reserve energy. Surely, adamantium bullet was very strong, but unfortunately, it wouldn't be able to kill me. Dio said as he dug out the silver bullet from the wound and immediately patched the wound up with, white album, ability. Here. Take it back. Now, consider ourselves a stranger. Dio said as he threw the blood-covered bullet back to Tony, and Dio immediately stood up and walked away from the shocked Tony. At the same time, Tony was struggling to find his voice to stop Dio from walking away. Fuck. What is wrong with me today? Tony said to himself as he picked up the bloody bullet and stared at it in guilt. Tony was confused, he wasn't one to act on anger, in fact, at some point, Tony actually believed that he would kill Dio. It was clear that Tony never meant this incident to happen, but everything seemed like perfectly weaved for him to act this way, in fact, it seemed like something else has amplified the smallest thought in his heart. Back to Dio's restaurant, Dio has finally calmed down and now resting while fixing his wound with the power of, gold experience. He never expected this kind of incident to happen. Now, he knew for sure that the black mist was sentient, it clearly improvised its strategy to harm Dio after knowing that a normal accident wouldn't do. Dio was pondering about the reason why Tony attacked him like that. There must be a reason for things to happen. At least Dio knew that the Black Mist's power was still using the universal law of cause and effect. He began to analyze everything that he knew so far. He knew that the Black Mist worked while manipulating Crystal's dream, but that was not all. The Black Mist also created an accident that was weird from the beginning, but what was accident to begin with? An accident wastes an accumulation of small coincidences that weren't predicted or planned beforehand. Could the Black Mist amplify the small possibility to happen frequently? If it did, then there might be something that urged Tony to go on rampage like before, there might be some clue that he didn't know yet. So, in the spirit to know the truth about Crystal's power, Dio then called Pepper to ask her about anything that she knew about Tony's behavior that day. After talking to Pepper about Tony's behavior, Dio was surprised. Not only he learned about why Tony was acting like that, he could also speculate about the Black Mist's power too. Now he knew what to expect, he knew that the Black Mist's power was still a probability manipulation, but it was on a scale that was much different than what he thought it would be. Dio knew that he must learn every single aspect of this power, and if he could, the situation would be under control. The good news was that the Black Mist couldn't manipulate reality, which meant Dio has much more chance to win and control it. After putting some thought, Dio then looked around and sighed to himself. He knew that he had to leave after the incident with Tony earlier. He couldn't stay there anymore after such fallout, even when he knew that Tony didn't really mean it. Moreover, he had to contain the black mist first. He couldn't do that here while the restaurant was almost always open. So, with no further ado, Dio called Crystal to pack up as he said that they would take a vacation for a while. The two didn't have that much luggage with them, Dio only needed to bring the snail, weapon box, and some clothes. Crystal brought even less as she didn't have anything to begin with. Zeppeli, book two tickets for me. It doesn't matter where to, but I want the earliest flight. Dio ordered Zeppeli the house A.I. Do you really need to leave, sir? Zeppeli asked. Yeah, I need to have a vacation after such a tiring occasion. If the customers called here for reservation, just tell them the truth, but don't tell them where I am going. Dio said casually. Okay, I understand. Now, the earliest flight that you can book based on your time to get there is to England, would you like this flight? Zeppeli said indifferently. That's perfect. Book two tickets for me. Dio said excitedly. Dio couldn't stop laughing as it seems fate still got bones to pick with him. He was after all, half British. Maybe his parent in heavens would approve of him to look on their ancestry land. So, without further ado, Dio stepped inside the car with Crystal and drove towards the airport. When Tony finally made his resolve to meet up with Dio to apologize, the restaurant was already empty. Although Zeppeli said that Dio was just going on a vacation, Tony knew that Dio wouldn't come back here again. After all, Tony knew how much pain the shot earlier caused Dio. Your majesty, your beauty is like a jewel from the sea. Dio said praisingly to the Queen of England, 
Dio wouldn't hold back his praises to the people that could give him so yuk riches. The queen herself was satisfied with Dio's treatment. Her skin has tightened, and now she looked twenty years younger than her real age was. Her first reaction was shocked as she was very old, and getting back her youth seemed to be impossible. But today, a mysterious doctor that was introduced through some royal family, has successfully to do just that. Mr. Dio, you are truly miraculous. Please stay and attend a dinner that I prepared for you. Many young girls would also be there to get to know you better. Queen Elizabeth said graciously. Please, your majesty. I am not a doctor. Although my treatment is undoubtedly real, it is not in the same field of expertise of those who work hard to become a real doctor. I am just a humble guy who was gifted to maximize the effect of the ingredients that I use for cooking. Dio said respectfully. After dealing with so many European aristocrats for almost a year, Dio has figured out how to praise them so that he could get the maximum amount of payment after his treatment. And sure enough, Queen Elizabeth would be very satisfied with Dio's sincerity and modesty. Dio immediately left the Buckingham Palace with Crystal. He held a black box in his hands that was filled with his payment for the Queen's treatment. Mr. Dio, do we really have to attend the banquet this evening? Crystal asked curiously. She has matured enough that people wouldn't call her a kid anymore. She also looked gorgeous for a girl her age. What? You don't want to go? Dio asked casually. Dio's appearance has slightly changed, too, now he looked much more refined after dressing up like an English gentleman. He immediately drove towards his hotel to rest for a bit before the banquet. Crystal nodded her head as she was already tired of the pretentious smile and laughter from the people attending the banquet. From Crystal's perspective, this banquet was pointless. She also didn't want the girl inside the banquet to get close with Dio as she hated the pretentious people the most. If you really don't want to go, you can wait for me inside the hotel room. It would be rude of me to refuse the Queen's invitation. Dio said casually. If that's the case, then I will come with you. Crystal said as she sighed tiredly. Crystal's attitude didn't change much, she was still cold to strangers and still followed Dio around like a puppy. Dio smiled at Crystal and messed with her hair a little. Since the past year, Dio and Crystal have traveled across Europe. Just like most people, they also happily enjoyed some tourist sites as they came across a new country. In order to resolve the black mist problem from Crystal once and for all, Dio needed a lot of gold. He had to find a stand that could infiltrate Crystal's dream, only that he could stand on an equal ground with the black mist. Dio also occasionally thought of the people he left behind, like Will, Jessica, Kristen, and the others that he hasn't contacted in a year. Plus, Dio still had his brutal tendencies as he almost beat some young man to death from trying to steal from Dio's pocket, but overall, Dio has changed significantly. After arriving at the hotel, Dio took a shower and ordered some food and tea to enjoy with Crystal. How long do we going to stay in London this time? Where do we go next? Crystal asked as she finished eating her food. Well, I think we could do one more treatment before leaving, how about we go to Asia next? Dio said casually. Asia? It sounds exciting. I never go there before. Crystal said excitedly. Dio smiled at Crystal warmly, although for a year the black mist never showed itself again, but Dio knew that it could strike again at any time. He had tried to pull some good stuff from the gotcha system six months ago, but as he expected, he was never lucky. But this time, he was determined to convert all his money except the amount that he would use for expenses, to gold. He was determined to get the, death 13, one way or another. Dio got a total of 4. Gold bars after converting 20 million dollar worth of cash. This meant that he could do 10x draw 420 times. Dio's Hammond energy at this time was at 900, which meant that once he got to 1 million, another stand slot would be unlocked, making five in total. At this point, Dio no longer did the shenanigans that he used to do before drawing from the gotcha system. After 20 draws, Dio was annoyed as he didn't get anything worth mentioning from the draw. In his 50th draw, he finally got something unusual. Morio Town, tourist card, you can enter the town of Morio, where you can enjoy the excellent fusion restaurant of Italy and Japan. Note, any item that a player got from the town while visiting can't be taken out of the town, also be careful of the office workers after midnight. Dio was furious after he reads the item's description. 
He found no use of such an item as he knew that there was no way this item was useful. Furthermore, what was, be careful of office workers, during the night supposed to mean? This item was nonsense. Dio kept drawing for a better item, but for the next 50 draws, he still got nothing. Dio kept chanting, this is normal, in his head as he tried his best to remain patient with this bullshit draw. After 220 draws, Dio only got a fragment of, stand arrow, a blue pet card, and a useless one-time use, the lock, stand. Stand name, the lock description, it's just a lock. Type, automatic stand ability, lock ability description create a lock in a person's heart. Attribute, destructive power, e-speed, e-range, a sustainability, a precision, e-growth, e-evaluation, another candidate for the worst stand beside, Hermit Purple. After reading the description for, the lock, Dio was furious. He was displeased beyond belief. But as he knew that nothing he could do to change the way the system worked. He immediately continued his draw. But the next thing that happened shocked Dio, the gotcha system suddenly shone in bright light, and as he was trying to look at what he got, he finally got another permanent stand. Stand name, red hot chili pepper description, an electric substitute with a twist. Type, long distance stand ability, electric absorption ability description, can absorb electricity. Attributes, destructive power, a speed, a range, a sustainably, a precision, C growth, A evaluation, the potential is huge. Dio was surprised as he got an excellent permanent stand for the first time in a while. In fact, this stand was really good. The only thing that it lacked was the precision, which could be resolved by his own ability to use the ability creatively later. This, red hot chili pepper, was one of the best stand, it was one of the stands that Dio wrote on his list of stands as it was the fastest. It could easily fight against the platinum star once it absorbed the lightning power of a town. This stand could also travel through the electric wire, making it hard to detect. It may be true that, red hot chili pepper, could be considered weak if it was used to fight against the opponent inside a jungle or a desert, where an electrical discharge was nowhere to be found. But if it was used in a city, red hot chili pepper, may undoubtedly become one of the strongest. Dio was also waiting for his next encounter with Thor. He would easily charge his, red hot chili pepper, without doing anything. At the last moment of the draw, Dio finally could breathe in relief. Although he didn't get that many useful things, he got the stand that he needed in his attempt to defeat the Black Mist. One time use stand card, death 13 description, a stand that invades the dream of a sleeping person. Type, close range stand ability, dream world control ability description, invade the dream of a sleeping person close to the user. Attribute, destructive power, C speed, C range, E sustainability, B precision, D growth, B evaluation, can kill a person in a dream. Dio was satisfied to see the Grim Reaper like the stand in front of him. This stand was the best choice for invading someone else's dream, if he was correct, Crystal's ability had something to do with the Black Mist's power, and that also had something to do with the dream world. So even if this stand was only a one-time use card, it was still precious. In addition to this stand, Dio also got a stand that he never saw before. The name was, Space Card, he was sure that the stand has never appeared in Jojo's novel before. Furthermore, the stand could lock an object inside a playing card, although it was convenient to have such a stand, the stand itself didn't have any appearance and status. In the last couple of draws, Dio also got a, CD Drive. Apparently, this item could copy a stand after the previous owner was dead within the time span of 30 seconds. For the balance of the game, this, CD Drive, was quite useful. It could store a stand from another person who also had a stand into a one-time use stand. But as he thought it over, he came to the conclusion that this item was also useless. The one who could use a stand in this world was only himself and the snail. But he suddenly thought of the Morio Town Tour card that he deemed useless before, he suddenly thought of using the card inside the Morio Town, he wondered if it would work if he used it like that. If it could work, he might be able to get, Killer Queen, the hand, bad company, and more. He was unsure whether this method could work, but otherwise, these two items really were useless. After that, Dio consumed all Hammond beads that he got from the draw and increased his Hammond pool to one. Million. The fifth stand slot was finally unlocked, making it easier for him to switch between stands. 
He no longer felt like a beginner now. But after the fifth slot opened, a new function appeared on Dio's phone. And that function was, alternative melting pot. It had a function to melt and fuse two stands of a user choice that would create a new random stand. But the catch was the new stand was random. That meant Dio could still get a useless stand out of it. Let's just say if he fused, the lock, and, hermit purple, together, he might get, killer queen, but the other possibility might also happen, he could fuse, the world, and, king crimson, together and only got, pearl jam, out of it. Using this function was a complete waste. Dio made a promise to himself to never use this function ever. Although he needed to get stronger to fight Thanos quickly, he was not that greedy. Dio then walked out of the room after he was out of gold, he walked towards the front desk of the hotel and asked for a deck of playing card to test out the mysterious stand that he got earlier. If it worked like what he envisioned, he could travel lightly. All he needed was his deck of cards, and all would be there. After that, he walked out of the hotel and found an empty spot for him to test out the red hot chili pepper out. He found out that this stand was even faster than the hanged man. But he also found out that once the red hot chili pepper ran out of electricity, just like a toy that ran out of battery, it became slower and soon stopped moving completely. This made Dio realize that if he wanted to fight using the red hot chili pepper, he needed to recharge it first. After finishing up his experiment, Dio felt satisfied, and now he focused his attention on finding the right time to use the Death 13 to invade Crystal's dream. The Death 13 that he had was a one-time use stand, so he had to do it properly. In the evening, Dio attended the banquet that was hosted by Queen Elizabeth with Crystal, who dressed beautifully right behind him. The Queen, who was happy for getting so many praises from her guests, introduced Dio to one royalty after another in the British Kingdom. All the nobles showed interest in Dio's miraculous treatment as all of them wanted to regain their youth and beauty again. Many girls tried to flirt with Dio too, as they were interested after seeing Dio's perfect figure. But sadly, Dio wasn't in the mood to get close to any of these ladies. In the end, Dio was trying to get away from the ladies going after him during the banquet. After the banquet was over, Dio sighed in relief as he could finally leave. Furthermore, Dio didn't want to get involved with the royalty drama in British royalty as it was one of the messiest royal families in the world. Mr. Dio, did you really want to treat all those women earlier? Crystal asked as they drove toward the hotel. Well, we need the money if we want to continue living lavishly like this, Dio said casually. Didn't we already make a lot of money earlier? Isn't that enough? Crystal asked confusedly. She saw how much money Dio has made during a year that they traveled Europe together. The amount of money that Dio has wasn't something that could easily be spent in a short amount of time, but she didn't know that Dio has already spent almost all of it earlier. After hearing Crystal's question, Dio felt a little awkward as he didn't know how to explain that he has already spent it all. He couldn't just explain it to Crystal that he used it all for buying gold that he immediately used to increase his power. So Dio thought for a while and then found a sort of plausible answer. Now, for a lot of people, this amount of money could be more than enough, but for some, that amount of money was not enough to make another choice in life. For this kind of people, the more option that you have in life, the better. Do you understand what I just said? Dio asked Crystal solemnly. So, Mr. Dio is saying that some people don't live for the money, but choose to live a life that they want. Does that mean Mr. Dio worked hard to make the amount of money because you have your own goal that you must achieve? If that's the case, then I would like to work hard too in the future. Crystal said solemnly. Yes, that was my point. Dio said as he reluctantly nodded his head to Crystal's conclusion. Dio's words were bullshit that he had to conjure up just now. But he was glad that Crystal took it positively. If that's the case, I will try to help you as best as I can. Crystal said determinedly. Dio nodded his head aimlessly, but he was suddenly interrupted by the knock on his car window while he was at traffic. Yeah, is there anything that I can help you with? Dio asked the woman that knocked his window as he opened the window. No, sorry. I thought you are someone I knew, the woman said nervously. If that's the case, can you please stop following me? Dio said rather annoyedly. Yeah, sure. Sorry for that the woman said as she left. The woman sighed as she returned to her car. Her friends inside the car were confused about her behavior. 
Who is that man? Why did you seem afraid of him? The woman's friend asked curiously. No. I just met the wrong person. I thought I knew him from somewhere, the woman said awkwardly. But the truth was, she saw Dio before at the incident in New Mexico, and she was afraid of him as his power was inhumane. In the next few days, Dio took Crystal around England as he cooked for the royalties one by one. On the night, Dio left Crystal alone in order to bait the Black Mist to come out once more. It seems the Black Mist was afraid of Dio's ham and energy, and so during year that Dio was constantly around Crystal, the Black Mist never showed up, not even once. Hey, handsome, are you alone? A woman said as she approached Dio seductively. No, I am waiting for someone, Dio said indifferently. He had rejected a handful of women tonight, and this woman wouldn't be an exception. But to Dio's surprise, this woman was persistent. I've observed you for these past couple days, and you are always alone. I guess the person that you are waiting for didn't exist, did it? The woman said knowingly. Dio immediately finished up his glass and ordered another one to the bartender. Knowing that Dio was purposely ignoring her, the woman became more frustrated and immediately opened her leg to show her panties to Dio. But Dio just rolled his eyes as he wasn't interested in her. You picked the wrong target now, woman. This is not the right time. Now, take that drink for yourself, and consider yourself warned. I am not a patient man, don't force me. Dio said coldly. He immediately left a couple of dollar bills for the payment of his drink and then immediately got up to leave the bar. The woman was still at loss as this was the first time that she was outright rejected like this. If it weren't because of Dio's delightful appearance and the thick wallet inside his pocket, she wouldn't even bat an eye. She ignored the beer that the bartender had served for her, and then she immediately chased after Dio. She was curious, for she never failed before. However, as she walked outside the bar to chase after Dio, she no longer saw him anywhere. She stomped her feet in frustration as she had lost one target for the night. At the same time, when Dio was about to leave, he suddenly received a notification from his phone. The black mist took the bait. Dio has already prepared several cameras inside the hotel rooms where Crystal slept. After receiving the notification, Dio immediately rushed towards the hotel with the fastest speed that he could. He used, red hot chili pepper, to get to the hotel faster as it was the fastest stand that he had. Once Dio was inside the hotel room, he immediately entered Crystal's room, surprising the Black Mist that didn't expect Dio's arrival. The Black Mist immediately retreated to Crystal's body, but this was the time that Dio was waiting for. Dio immediately summoned, Death 13, and ordered it to enter Crystal's dream. The Black Mist was startled by Dio's power. This was another thing that it never accounted for. It never thought for a second that Dio could invade someone else's dream. It could easily block Dio's access to Crystal's dream, but it was too startled to do so. The Black Mist was furious as it felt like being underestimated to the core. It immediately chased after Dio inside Crystal's dream to fight him on its own turf. The Black Mist was determined to get Dio out of the picture forever this time. Once the Black Mist entered Crystal's dream again, the room was calm once again. Crystal was back to sleep without any nightmare once more. Dio found himself in a pitch black darkness. He and the Death 13 were clearly out of place here. They didn't belong here at all. Why is this place so dark? Is this how Crystal's dream looks? Dio said to himself confusedly. He didn't know what to think as the scene was completely out of his expectation. But Dio remembered that Crystal once told him that her dreams were completely black and there is nothing that she could see in there, but once she got close to Dio, it was a radiating sun. Very warm and bright. From that memory, Dio immediately tried to activate his Hammond energy, and to his surprise, it worked. His body was radiating bright light, slowly dispelling the darkness around him. Hammond energy itself was the power that was supposed to emit the sun's energy. So, a Hammond master was in regard was the sun itself. It wasn't only effective against creatures of the night, but it could also expel the darkness. With that knowledge, Dio finally realized why the Black Mist was so afraid of him all this time. But Dio wouldn't show any pity for a thing that has made the life of a little girl this miserable. Dio then illuminated the place to expel the darkness that was surrounding the place from every corner, until at last, 
he found Crystal lying on the ground. Stop. Stop torturing me. Crystal said in front of Dio. Dio frowned as he suddenly saw a horrific scene. Crystal was crying on her knees while the scene kept changing, but all of them had one thing in common, they all were the scene that took a lot of people's lives. Dio realized that this was the Black Mist's power. He controlled Crystal's mind and made this scene a reality. Dio noticed that at the end of every scene, he was dead. But as Dio tried to approach Crystal, the scene stopped, and suddenly everyone in the scene turned their head towards Dio and said in a creepy voice, Get out. I am the master of this place. Dio ignored this creepy scene and headed straight towards Crystal, who was still crying on her knees. But the Black Mist immediately stopped Dio's advance by summoning the entire Avenger in front of Dio. They suddenly attacked Dio together while shouting for Dio to back down. Dio sighed and immediately shrouded his body with so much ham and energy that he emitted light itself. He then rushed forward and punched Hawkeye on his chest, sending him flying, unmoved. Dio threw another punch that was directed towards Natasha, and successfully broke her neck. Dio then summoned the Reaper's gaze, by thinking about it, he succeeded, and the scythe appeared in his hands. Dio then smirked and rushed towards the Hulk and easily decapitated the Green Giant, then he rushed towards Iron Man and split him into two, while he also did the same with Thor, but he also split the Mjolnir into two while he was at it. Counterfeit items have always been low quality. Dio said as he massacred all the Avenger in one fell swoop. Dio knew that he was inside a dream, so the mental state was the most important thing that he must have to hold his own ground and destroy this black mist. If he could maintain his mental state, nothing inside this space would be able to affect him. After all, everything inside a dream was nothing more than an illusion. Dio also had the same power that the black mist had. Death 13, had the power to control a dream. The scene kept changing, and this time, Dio was in the middle of the desert while the Shatori army swarmed the portal once again. Dio laughed at the scene in front of him as the Black Mist has come up with something stupid. Did you think these lizard men would be able to do anything to me? Even in reality, I am not afraid of them. Dio said, while laughing hard. Dio then ordered, Death 13, to summon a bunch of, Star Platinum, to attack the Chitauri army. With the abysmal power of the Star Platinum army, the Chitauri army was decimated in a matter of seconds. This was the true length of Dio's mental prowess. He wouldn't lose to anyone on this one. Knowing that it didn't have any chance of winning against Dio this way, the Black Mist changed the scene once again. This time, it brought Dio to the natural disasters biome, where Dio was in the middle of a tsunami, volcanic eruption, tornado, and even lightning storm. Dio was overwhelmed by the natural disaster power. There was no way to resist this kind of disaster easily. However, Dio kept his composure and stood in the middle of everything while being motionless. He let the wind blew his hair, tsunami and lava drowned him, and the lighting hit him head on. He knew that it was all fake, and all he had to do now was just persevere through it all. The black mist immediately called upon a meteor on Dio's position as it noticed that Dio has not moved from his spot, but as soon as the meteor nearly hit the ground with Dio in the middle of it, Dio disappeared. It seems I have overestimated you for a moment. Dio said as he appeared near the black mist. Dio suddenly roared, and every disaster scene around him was dispelled. After Dio dispelled the disaster scene, he found himself in the middle of London once again, stared by countless of people. While Dio noticed that the people's face was covered by a black mist, he realized that everyone was staring at him. Dio also noticed that his dead bodies with various causes of death were lying on the ground. He looked around and found Crystal weeping under one of his dead body. Dio took a step towards her, but he immediately stopped as everyone that was staring at him earlier immediately stood between him and Crystal. Leave. If you take one more step, you will die, everyone said indifferently. The combination of old, young, men, and woman voice was eerie, but for Dio, this was nothing than empty threats. Are you not going to show up by yourself? Don't fight me if you are afraid to fight me head on. Dio said as a taunt for the black mist. Dio then walked forward towards Crystal, ignoring the warning that everyone said earlier. But as he walked towards Crystal, the people earlier immediately jumped towards him in order to stop him, but Dio immediately cut them with his scythe. The black mist wasn't done yet. 
he kept resurrecting those that Dio had killed and kept Dio in place. While Dio may be walking towards Crystal, the Black Mist easily played with Dio's perception and made it so Dio would never get close to Crystal. Dio was annoyed. Did you think you are the only one who has the ability to control her dreams? Dio said as he immediately ordered, Death 13, to overturn the world, tossing everything around randomly, while Dio and Crystal were left unaffected. The Black Mist tried to control its world back in order, but nothing it did had any effect on Dio. The Black Mist then transformed into Dio himself and stood in front of Dio, blocking him from reaching Crystal. You are special. But no one can beat me inside my own world. The Black Mist said as it looked over to Dio with its black eyes. Dio was confused by the Black Mist's way of thinking. What would it accomplish by turning into Dio while it would never be able to use the Hammond energy? Dio tried to attack the doppelganger of himself with the scythe, but the Black Mist dodged the attack and launched a counter-attack of its own. Dio found it interesting to see the Black Mist was trying to one-up him using his own power. And so, Dio used the one thing that was impossible for the Black Mist to copy, his Hammond energy. Dio then concentrated so much Hammond energy on his palms and then rushed towards the Black Mist while abandoning the scythe on his hand. Sunlight Yellow Overdrive Dio said as he punched the Black Mist right in its chest. The Black Mist couldn't handle Dio's sun-infused attack, and it couldn't move after receiving such a devastating attack. Dio wouldn't give mercy for the Black Mist. He rushed towards the Black Mist and used his, Sunlight Yellow Overdrive, repeatedly. Once Dio was done, the Black Mist was reduced into a black tar on the ground. With the Black Mist losing to Dio, the Dreamland once again filled with light. Dio then walked towards Crystal who was still crying, and he immediately sat by Crystal's side. Remember when I told you, I really hated Crybaby? Dio said endearingly to Crystal. Mr. Dio. Crystal said as she felt the warmth that was coming from Dio. Why would you cry? Did you have a nightmare? Do you want to tell me about it? Dio asked nicely. I saw you die in front of me many times. I am so scared. I told them to stop. But it keeps repeating. Crystal said as she kept crying. Don't worry, it's over. It's just a nightmare. None of it would happen. Dio said endearingly. Really? You promise? Crystal said childishly. Of course. Why would I lie? Dio said warmly. Mr. Dio, could you do one thing for me? Crystal asked shyly. What is it? Dio asked curiously. Could you please, just die now? Crystal said as her eyes suddenly turned black. The entire dream world once again fell into darkness. The black liquid flowed out of Crystal's eyes, mouth, and noses, enveloping Dio. Stupid man. Enjoy the last few moments of your pathetic life. I will take over this body completely now, new Crystal in black dress said coldly. Dio finally realized the truth behind Crystal's power. The black mist was Crystal herself all along. Although it seemed like a different personality. This black Crystal was the personality that she developed when she was a child. This personality was the result of repressive thought that Crystal had when she lost her family. The black Crystal was all alone in the darkness. She felt every negative emotion that Crystal felt. Loneliness, depression, sadness, despair, torture. But for Black Crystal, this emotion was energy, as she felt her power growing while Crystal kept suffering. But after the Black Crystal has amassed enough power, she finally had enough of Crystal's stupidity and wanted to control the body for herself. She wanted everyone on this earth to feel everything that she had felt. She wanted the world to grief in pain and loss. She almost succeeded if Dio had not interfered. Crystal almost completely shut her heart, but Dio completely opened it back up. It was all because Crystal felt the warm radiance from Dio that day. The Black Crystal was desperate to kill Dio off so that Crystal could fall into despair once again. But it was proven to be tough, as no matter what she envisioned seemed to work against Dio. How could a person radiate such strong sunlight? Crystal wondered again and again. After Dio caught it red-handed, the Black Crystal laid low and hid on the deepest part of Crystal's heart, waiting for her opportunity to emerge again. But the worst possible case kept happening for the Black Crystal. She couldn't come out as Dio was always around Crystal. 
when she was trying to use her power again, she was always busted. The constructed nightmare was shattered, and Dio had weakened her significantly as a part of her kept getting destroyed. One time that Dio was careless and left Crystal unchecked, Black Crystal successfully pitted the Iron Man against Dio, but sadly, Iron Man also failed to kill Dio, and the result was rather annoying as Dio never left Crystal's side after that. However, she patiently waited for her moment, gathering up her power little by little, waiting for one opportunity to strike. But sadly, Crystal's life has turned for the better. She no longer felt any pain, remorse, despair, and all the other negative emotion that was supposed to fuel Black Crystal's power. In other words, Black Crystal has become desperate to use any little chance she had to use her power and kill Dio once and for all. She didn't like it when Crystal was happy and laughed around with Dio. She didn't like it when Crystal had a dream for her future. She didn't like it when she had to hide in the darkness on the corner of Crystal's heart. The happier Crystal became, the more hateful the Black Crystal was. She had arrived at the point that she wouldn't let Crystal happy ever again. She couldn't wait to make Crystal's life miserable again. And the quickest way to do so was to kill Dio. If Crystal saw that Dio was killed in front of her, she would break. Her mind would collapse, and that would be the time that she took over Crystal's body. This was her goal. Her ultimate plan to get everything she wanted. But once again, Dio came and crushed her plan. The bastard who wouldn't die, no matter how hard she tried and how creative she got. Now, he even came to her world and took it over easily. This man was too powerful for Black Crystal. She couldn't hold it anymore, the world was so unfair to her. She was created out of the darkness that ruled the world as a whole. But it was okay now. Crystal has created a black hole that would swallow Dio completely. There was no way that he would escape this one. At least that was how she thought things would go, as radiant light could dispel darkness, boundless darkness could swallow the light. Now, Black Crystal was trying hard to turn her dark power into a huge black hole, ready to swallow Dio at any moment. In the face of this true darkness, no trace of light could radiate. But, in this desperate moment, Dio, who was wrapped in layers of darkness, sighed and decided to shatter Black Crystal's hope. Did you think for a moment that you have won by trapping me inside this endless darkness? Dio said indifferently. Is that your last word? Black Crystal said amusingly. Did you know that my power comes from my soul? If you know that you would have run away a long time ago. Dio said indifferently. Smash the world. Dio shouted as, the world, immediately stopped the time. Even inside this dreamscape, the world, could still use its power and stop the time just fine. After all, Stand was just an extension of someone's spirit. So, there was nothing in this world that could stop Dio from summoning it. Dio's Hammond energy illuminated through Black Crystal's complete darkness, radiating in waves that melted the darkness completely. After a few seconds, the darkness was completely gone, upturned by the new sun. You lose. Dio said to Black Crystal that instantly fell to the ground as the time resumed again. Black Crystal's body gradually became transparent little by little. She was about to disappear as she couldn't resist Dio's power. Lose. Ha ha ha, your delusion was getting the best out of you. Look below you if you don't believe me. Black Crystal said with an evil grin on her face. Dio looked down and frowned as he saw another crystal in white clothes lying underneath a bubble-like substance. Do you want to die that badly? Dio said as he strangled Black Crystal's neck. Dio then transmitted his Hammond energy to Black Crystal, causing her to scream loudly. Just kill me, we will see what happen. She and I are one. If I die, she will lose a piece of her, and she will feel the pain, desperation, sadness, and loneliness that I felt all this time. In turn, she would cease to exist, and I would return anew. Black Crystal said confidently while laughing out loud. Dio frowned and let Black Crystal fall to the ground. Dio even dampened the radiating wave of Hammond energy that he let loose. What do you mean? Explain now. Dio said commandingly. I won't tell you if you don't beg for it. Black Crystal said teasingly while laughing like a maniac. Dio had enough. He didn't even care now. If Black Crystal's words were true, he just had to find another way to save Crystal. He then squished Black Crystal's throat. As she died from Dio's strangle, 
her lifeless body turned into a countless little speck of darkness. Dio immediately ordered, Death 13, to swallow all the darkness that scattered everywhere. Dio was taking a risk here, as he didn't know what would happen once the, Death 13, disappeared since it was only a temporary stand. But he decided to think of the consequences later. There was no need for that now. After the, Death 13, absorbed all the darkness, Dio then looked at the Black Crystal's memory that was also swallowed by, Death 13. Destroying the Black Crystal's existence would result in Crystal regaining the memory that Black Crystal absorbed for her nutrient. That meant that Crystal would know what happened all this time, and the burden of knowing that she really was the one who killed everyone that she held dear would be enough to shock her to the core. Sometimes, there were things that would be better forgotten, or even better, not knowing. Dio knew if he let Crystal regain Black Crystal's memories, then Crystal would become the Black Crystal herself. So, Dio quickly thought things through. What should he do to keep Crystal safe without receiving any of the damage that she would get later? So, Dio quickly descended to Crystal's deepest memories. Dio stared into the void for a while and then noticed that the void wasn't normal. Black Crystal. I know that you are in here. Come out now. Dio said commandingly. You are a strange one. Now that you know the truth, what would you do? How would you erase me, after knowing that the real crystal would be crazy after knowing the truth? So, here I am. Make your choice now, Black Crystal said while laughing. You know, I no longer have the power to resist your attack. Your insignificant attack would be devastating to me. So, with that in mind, do your worst. Make sure that you kill me in one blow. Black Crystal said solemnly. Did you just threaten me? Dio asked coldly. Threat? You think highly of me. What I want is Crystal to have a miserable life, but if I am not there to watch it happen, it would no longer serve a purpose. Black Crystal said indifferently. Dio then stared at Black Crystal intently. He was at a crossroads here. He believed that Crystal could endure the pain, but at the same time, he doubted it. So, after a while, Dio took another risk. What? Did you change your mind? You are too kind, it might be the reason that you could become Crystal's brother. You two are too kind to other people. This is ridiculous. Black Crystal said annoyedly. She even likes you more than she ever liked anyone, she even had something that she wanted to tell you, but she never had the courage to tell you herself. She is a coward. A coward that would run to his brother's side as soon as something that she doesn't like comes up. I fucking hate that bitch, Black Crystal said furiously. No, you are wrong. I know that Crystal was stronger than what you know. In fact, she might be way stronger than me. Dio said endearingly. Dio then approached Black Crystal and hugged her endearingly as this was the only plan that he could think of, making Black Crystal feel loved. Dio was standing by Crystal's bedside. He wiped the tears from Crystal's eyes and then left the room before Crystal was awake. In the end, Dio decided to purify the Black Crystal completely. He knew that leaving Black Crystal behind would cause trouble later, so he didn't want that burden in Crystal's mind later. After more than a year together, Dio has developed a soft spot for Crystal. Dio didn't want to lose the bond that both of them shared, but Dio knew that Crystal would somewhat change after this. If what the Black Crystal thought was real, then that meant Crystal would know that she was the one who killed all the people that were close to her, but then again, Dio was determined that he could help Crystal if the time came. After Dio left the room, the 30-minute mark of, Death 13, passed, the dream stand quietly disappeared from Crystal's dream. But unbeknown to Dio, a thin strand of hair were left behind where, Death 13, once stood. It may look like a normal hair at first, but upon closer inspection, the hair was wriggling. It suddenly delved deeper into Crystal's mind, disappearing between so many memories. What's the matter, Mr. Dio? Why are you looking at me like that? Did I have something on my face? Crystal asked confusedly as Dio kept staring at her. They are currently eating breakfast, and Dio was eager to see what Crystal would do. No, there is nothing, I am just wondering, did you sleep well last night? Dio asked Crystal casually. I feel like I had a tiresome dream, but I don't know if it's good or bad. Crystal said as he tried to recall what her dream was like. Dio remained silent, he didn't know how to tell Crystal everything that happened last night. 
If you don't feel so good, you can stay here and rest, Dio said solemnly. No way. I am Mr. Dio's assistant. I wouldn't let you go by yourself. Crystal said confidently. But at the same time, Dio was surprised that Crystal didn't act meek like always. If you really want to go, then it's up to you, but tell me if there's anything wrong, okay? Dio said commandingly. Did you remember something today? Dio asked right after. What? Did I forget something? Crystal asked confusedly. Dio frowned as he learned that there was nothing wrong with Crystal. He wondered what happened right now. Was Crystal just acting though in front of him, or what Black Crystal has predicted didn't happen at all? Dio even began to wonder whether he successfully erased all Black Crystal's presence inside Crystal's mind, or he failed. At the same time, Crystal was thinking hard about anything that she could possibly forget, but she couldn't think of anything. As soon as she started to think hard, she felt an extreme pain on her head that made her cry in pain. Dio was startled to hear Crystal scream while holding her head in pain. He instinctively discharged a wave of his Hammond energy that usually calmed Crystal down, but this time, it wasn't working. Dio then immediately picked Crystal up on the thought that he would immediately bring Crystal to the hospital, but as soon as he picked her up, Crystal immediately stopped screaming. How do you feel? Are you feeling better? Dio asked confusedly. I don't know, Mr. Dio. I tried to remember what that I've forgotten, but suddenly my head hurts like it was pierced by a hundred needles. Suddenly a blurry picture flashed quickly in my mind. I tried not to think about it, and finally it stopped hurting. Crystal said while holding her head. Dio began to wonder whether Crystal's headache came from her memories that were starting to return after it was released from Black Crystal's hold. But from the reaction that Crystal showed just a moment ago, he knew that Crystal needed to forget about all this. Stop thinking about it, there is no need to. Dio said solemnly. Crystal nodded her head and then remembered that she was still lying on Dio's arms. She blushed and immediately sat up straight, still flustered. Now, go change your clothes if you really want to go with me. It's time for us to go. Dio said endearingly. She immediately got up and ran toward her rooms while smirking happily. Dio, who just got up and walked towards the window, missed the black mist that flashed on Crystal's eyes. I hope that I can see you again later, handsome gentleman. It's a bit lonely to drink a glass of wine on this kind of night alone. A beautiful young woman flirted with Dio as her treatment was over. Crystal rolled her eyes as she was annoyed that this woman couldn't take a hint and stop making a move on Dio. But Dio too wasn't interested in her, so after bidding farewell, Dio and Crystal left without looking back. Mr. Dio, can I ask you a question? Crystal asked curiously. Sure, Dio said casually. Did you like a woman like before? Did I just get in your way? Crystal asked shyly. I do like young, sexy, and beautiful women, but I don't want to break a family. Dio said as he knew that the woman earlier already had a husband. Dio then smiled at Crystal endearingly and drove towards their hotel. In the next few days, Dio kept observing Crystal closely, but thankfully, Crystal's condition seemed to develop for the better. If she weren't forced to recall her memories, there would be nothing wrong with Crystal. So, in the embrace of the night, when Crystal was fast asleep, Dio locked himself in his room and immediately tried his latest theory. He immediately pulled out the Morio City Tour card that he got from his previous draw and pulled out the Reaper's Gaze, to hold if he had to fight there later. He activated the tour card so that he could prove his theory as soon as possible. Morio City was a small town that was located inside Japan's M Prefecture, near S City. Although this town was popular among tourists, the shops around the city had an indifferent approach toward the tourist. But if you introduced yourself properly and made an effort to get to know them, you will notice that they are kind-hearted people. When Dio woke up, he found that he was sitting on a sightseeing bus. He could see the Morio city from the bus, but he couldn't find his scythe anywhere. That meant he couldn't bring his weapon here. His clothes have changed too. Now, he was wearing weird tourist clothes that were entirely out of his style. He looked around and noticed that besides himself, there was only one sweet-looking female tour guide inside the bus. The tour guide was still determined to introduce every aspect of Morio to Dio, who wasn't paying attention to her up until now. But sadly, for her, Dio already knew all about this place. 
he was an avid Jojo fan back in his real world. Nonetheless, Dio was impressed by the situation inside this Morio town. It was like a tea with the animated series that he watched back in his real world. Well, now that we have near the end of the bus tour, each tourist could choose to freely roam the Morio town to see what the town has to offer them, or follow our touring schedule, the tour guide said welcomingly. The words that the tour guide has said this time piqued Dio's interest. As much as he enjoyed the bus tour as it nostalgically reminded him of the scene in each place, Dio hasn't forgotten his goal in this place. Although he knew that he would kill someone inside this town, he knew that this town was only a part of a game. The people inside this place wasn't real. So, Dio chose to roam the town freely as he already had his target in mind. After all, he only had one chance now. If he wanted another chance, he had to get this tour card again from his next draw, and he might not be that lucky. But once he got off the bus, he immediately regretted it. He didn't find a single dollar inside his pocket. He finally remembered that this town was designed to specifically use gold as a means of transaction. This was his co-worker's idea in the real world. He immediately checked his phone to see the amount of gold he had, but he also found none. He has already used it all on his previous draw as he thought that it was a waste to leave any gold behind. Damn it! Can I get unluckier than this? Dio shouted to the sky in frustration. But Dio quickly walked deeper inside the Morio city. He tried to ask for some information to the local vendors around the town for the whereabouts of the man that he was searching for, but all of them drove Dio out after knowing that Dio wouldn't buy anything from their shop. After receiving nothing from the market, Dio felt frustrated. He was furious that all the shopkeepers were rude fellows. If he ever returned, he would change this setting immediately. So, Dio tried to stop the taxi and told the driver the name of the person that he was searching for. This was a great idea, but unfortunately, the taxi driver also didn't know the man that Dio was searching for. Dio still had a backup plan. He knew the name of the high school that the main protagonist went to. So, he told the taxi driver to go to that school immediately. Fortunately, the taxi driver knew the school's location and immediately drove toward the school. When they arrived, it happened to be the time for class, as Dio heard the bell ringing loudly from the outside. But another thing that he hadn't found a solution to was the way to pay the taxi driver. But as Dio didn't know what to do, he immediately noticed that not far from the school gate, a student was being bullied by another student. Please wait a little while, sir. My little brother is being bullied there. Dio said to the taxi driver as he got out of the taxi. The driver hesitated whether he had to run after his customer or not, but in the end, he decided to believe in his customer as he saw that his customer seemed to be a tourist that should have no issue with money. He shouted from inside the taxi, do I need to call for the police, the taxi driver sincerely wanted to help. No need. Just wait for me for a little bit. Dio said to the taxi driver. He walked towards the kid who was being bullied by at least five high school students. Hey, kid. Give me all of your money. Dio said to the bullies threateningly. What? Are you mad? One of the bullies said confusedly. Let's just say it's a payment to keep my mouth shut and your safety as you just bullied my little brother. Dio said as he smirked to the bullies. You are Koichi's brother. Well, that changed everything. Why don't you give us your money instead? The bully said as he suddenly became confident. Dio was annoyed by the confidence that the bully showed just because Koichi was a meek boy. So, Dio immediately slapped the bullies one by one as he knew that this was just a fictional world, so there would be no consequence on doing things the hard way. Dio also took their wallet and took all the money inside. Thank you for helping me. They just wouldn't stop bothering me. Koichi said to Dio, but sadly Dio was too occupied with taking the money from the bullies. Wait a minute. Dio said to Koichi as he ran back and paid the taxi driver. Dio then walked back to where Koichi stood and asked for his name to make sure that he really got the right person. My name is Hirose Koichi, a freshman at this high school. Koichi said to answer Dio's question. Dio smirked as he really found Koichi, Josuk's best friend in this part 4 of Jojo. Why don't you use your stand to defend yourself? Dio asked knowingly to Koichi. Are you also a stand user? 
Koichi said alertly as he immediately summoned his stand, Echo ACT3. In the world of Jojo, every stand user could also see other stand. This could be an identification for a fellow stand user. Let's go over there to have a chat. I am indeed also a stand user. I am curious about why you didn't use your stand to deal with those people earlier. Dio said sincerely to talk with Koichi. After all, he needed Koichi's help to track down some of the stand users that he needed. Koichi saw that the man before him didn't seem to have any malicious intention, so he followed Dio to the nearby bench to have a talk. I don't want to use my stand to solve an everyday problem like that. Stand is a gift, those who didn't have it don't deserve to be punished by it. Koichi said confidently. So, will you let them beat you up, just to uphold your view on stand? Dio asked curiously. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Koichi said as he rubbed his head awkwardly. Koichi became a stand user thanks to Jasuk's stand that healed him when he was stabbed by the stand arrow. That was why throughout the series, Koichi's stand was evolving as Koichi's character also developed to be braver than the beginning of the series. Koichi didn't have a strong stand in general. That was because he had a meek personality, as a result, he couldn't get a strong stand, should introduce myself. I am Dio Brando, a tourist from America. So, is there a lot of stand user here? Dio asked while acting curious. He already knew how many people in this town who could use a stand. Dio had to figure out the answer to this question as he would be able to assess whether this world was connected to Jojo's real-time continuity or it was just a fictional place created by the mobile game programs of his company to make sure that everyone had a chance to obtain some stand from Morio as stand user. But before Koichi could answer Dio's question, the school bell rang. No. I am late. I am sorry, Mr. Dio, but I have to go to school first. Koichi said hurriedly. Dio nodded as he wondered what he should do next. He wondered whether the stand user who has died on the manga would be alive in this world. If that was the case, he already knew whose stand he wanted. But before coming to this school, Dio saw that Angelo Katagiri was alive as he has become a guard at some attraction park. So, the rest of the characters inside this town should also be alive. Dio tries to list all powerful stands that he could think of in Morio Town, he immediately excluded, Killer Queen, as Dio thought that the deadly bomb stand wouldn't achieve its purpose if it was only a temporary stand. As he listed all the stand that he wanted, the hand, still took the top of the list from the stand that he wanted. Its ability to erase space was so powerful. In the anime and manga, it was such a waste to give such a powerful stand to some muscle brain. This stand would easily ignore every opponent's defenses as it simply erased the space along with the enemy. He knew that the Nijimura lived inside a bard house to contain their father, for they were living in poverty, and they couldn't provide a better place for their father. He knew that because this town was just a copy and everyone was still alive, the Nijimura brothers should still be in the same place. So, he wandered around a low-end economy residency area and started asking around for the Nijimura residents, he found out that it was much easier to ask a woman as he could use his charm to make them talk. After so many inquiries, Dio finally found the house that the Nijimura brothers should be living in. Dio needed, the hand, above any other stands as he lacked a stand that could ignore his enemy defenses at this moment. If he has, the hand, in his fight against the destroyer armor, that armor would be easily destroyed. As soon as he walked through the house's gate, he noticed that he was being watched over the window gap on the second floor. Dio ignored the watcher for now but summoned the, white album, just in case the older brother decided to attack. Dio walked toward the door, and as he opened the door, he was immediately assaulted by shooting barrage from the, bad company, that was summoned by Keicho Nijimura. But thankfully, the attack of the, bad company, couldn't pierce, white album, s armor. At the same time, Dio didn't intend to remain in defense mode for too long. He immediately summoned, Horus, to attack the small soldier. The house was immediately covered in ice as the ice crystal that, Horus, was using pierced the small soldiers and stuck pinned them on the wall. And just when Dio was about to end the battle by attacking Keicho directly, he was suddenly pulled by a huge force to the side. The hand, had shown itself. But as Dio predicted, Okuyasu was too stupid to use the stand effectively. Although Dio was vulnerable, he still showed his compassion and didn't kill Dio immediately. 
Dio sighed and then shouted, smashed the world, everything stopped, and Dio immediately broke free from, the hand, s grasp. He looked toward Okuyasu and Keicho. He knew that he had to kill them both as Dio wanted, the hand, and Keicho wouldn't let him leave after knowing that Dio had killed his brother. Dio felt bad for this, but he had to do it. After all, this world would reset as soon as he left. Dio immediately walked towards Okuyasu and snapped his neck so that he could die painlessly and then walked toward Keicho and did the same. As he finished, Dio immediately resumed the time flow, and the Nijimura brothers immediately fell to the ground lifelessly. The brothers' stand immediately disappeared, and Dio hurriedly pulled out the CD drive that he got from his previous draw and put it on Okuyasu's body. The CD sank into Okuyasu's corpse and began to absorb the stand essence on Okuyasu's body. After a while, a blue and white stand card emerged from Okuyasu's body. Dio was overjoyed and immediately grabbed the card. Stand name, the hand description, a battle-oriented stand that capable of erasing space itself. Type, close-range stand ability, elimination ability description, anything that, the hand, s right hand touches as it makes a swiping motion will be erased to the void. Attribute, destructive power, b speed, b range, d sustainability, c precision, c growth, c evaluation, a powerful stand that would outdo almost all enemy, if the user has a brain to use it. A panel that said, please choose the stand card type, appeared on his phone, and so without thinking too much, Dio chose the time-limited type as it was safer than the one-time use card. He only needed to use, the hand, in a crucial moment, where the opponent was too defensive. A white light suddenly flashed on the stand card that he held and suddenly, the time limit was imprinted on the card. Time limit stand card. Time limit, 42 minutes. Dio smiled as 42 minutes was such a long time for such an overpowered stand. After securing the stand that he wanted the most, Dio wandered around the Morio town like a real tourist, and after 24 hours inside the town, Dio was forcefully teleported back to the real world. The first thing that he checked was his inventory, and Dio sighed in relief as he saw, the hand, temporary stand card was still in there. The next day, Dio, who was in a good mood, took Crystal to treat some more customer. On the road toward their next customer, they saw many police cars speeding. It seems they were in a hurry. Crystal looked at the direction that the police, but Dio didn't care as it wasn't his business to help the police here. But he changed his mind after he also saw the colorful beam of light that appeared in the direction that the police headed to. Dio began to think that Thor was probably here, as the beam of light that he saw just now was a light that came from Bifrost. Dio wanted to see what was happening and maybe went to Asgard with Thor as he wanted to get his hands on Asgard's resources. He remembered that Thor's second movie, The Dark World that also presented the third Infinity Gem, took place in London. Sure enough, when he arrived at the scene, Thor was holding a woman affectionately. This woman was Jane Foster. Thor's love interest and the host of the ether that later would be known as the Reality Gem. He totally forgot that the Reality Gem was in London. Otherwise, he would have already taken measures to secure it, but it seemed the plot continued normally, and Jane was still the one that found the ether and Thor has come to save her. After some thinking, Dio then told Crystal to wait in the car as he wanted to greet Thor. Hey, isn't it a little too cliché to dance in the rain like this? Dio said teasingly to Thor. Dio covered himself in Hammond energy to keep him from getting wet. Thor and Jane were surprised seeing someone interrupted their time together, but as soon as Thor saw who it was, he became excited. Dio. How are you? What are you doing here? Thor said excitedly. This is his first time back to Earth, and to his delight, he got to see Jane and Dio again. Well, I am tired of New York already, so I came here to relax a little bit. When I was in the vicinity earlier, I saw the Bifrost light around here, so I decided to check it out. Dio said casually. He then teased Thor about Jane and thus made the couple a little bit flustered, but as the police arrived and asked Dio what just happened and who was the person that he talked to just now, an explosion threw the police back. Dio and Thor weren't thrown away as they were strong enough to withstand the impact, but as they saw the source of the explosion, Thor was surprised as he saw that Jane was starting to float. Now, you better take care of your girlfriend, Dio said teasingly to Dio. Thor then immediately walked toward Jane with Mjolnir on his hand. Jane. Give me your hand. I will take you back to Asgard to cure you. 
Thor said as he tried to calm Jane down. Jane then reached out for Thor's hand, but as soon as she was close enough, a bunch of red particles came out of her hands and sent Thor flying because of the red particles explosion. Then Jane flew toward Dio quickly. Thor, who was staggered a little bit as he hit the wall quite hard, was nervous as he knew that Dio wouldn't hesitate to kill anyone if he felt in danger. Dio, look out! Thor shouted, but Dio has already seen all her move. He knew that Jane would keep lashing out the red particle of the ether, so he covered himself with a thick ham and energy and immediately summoned the red hot chili pepper, so that he could match Jane's speed. Dio immediately punched her stomach, instantly knocking her out. Thor then immediately flew to Dio to thank him for stopping Jane. Thank you very much, my friend. I will immediately take her to Asgard so that she can be cured of her ailment. Do you want to come with me this time? Thor asked curiously. Dio thought about it for a while and concluded that he could always go to Asia next time, but the opportunity to go to Asgard will not come again any time sooner. But what should he do with Crystal? Did he have to leave her behind or brought her along? But Dio quickly found his answer as he saw Crystal was looking at him from the car's window. He just made one fucking big mistake. Before Dio realized it, the ether from Jane was already near the car where Crystal was. He didn't know whether it was because the Infinity Stone recognized Crystal as someone with a far more powerful mind than Jane, or was it just something that happened indirectly, but for now, all he knows was that the Aether was trying to take over Crystal's body. Dio immediately rushed over towards the car. When Thor noticed that something was wrong, he immediately pulled Jane away. Sure enough, Thor saw that the Aether was coming out of Jane's body and rushing toward the car from the ground. Dio immediately realized that he wouldn't make it, and so he immediately activated, the world's ability to stop time. This way, Dio arrived at the car in time and put a Hammond barrier around the car so that the ether couldn't get to Crystal. As Dio resumed the time again, the ether immediately retreated to Jane's body. Thor was surprised, so he couldn't react fast enough to save Jane from being possessed by the ether once again. But nonetheless, he was determined to save Jane, so he didn't think about it too much, but the scene that ensued just now was really weird. What happened just now? Thor said as he walked to Dio with Jane on his hands. I honestly don't know, but it's definitely not a good thing. Dio said as he took Crystal's unconscious body out of the car. Dio couldn't help but think that the ether was drawn toward Crystal's body somehow because of Crystal's power also dubbed around reality warping to some extent. But surely, he had to bring Crystal with him as the Asgardians may know something that he didn't about Crystal. A minute later, a beam of light shot down from the sky once again, and the four of them were transported to Asgard. Only Jane's in turn was left on the scene. She stared at the sky where the light came with envy. She also wanted to go, but she knew that none of the superheroes earlier would want to bring her. Welcome to Asgard. Heimdall said with a serious face. Dio shook his head a little bit, as the experience riding on the Bifrost was interesting, but he surely needed some time to get used to it. Dio nodded to Heimdall as he saw Thor did so, and then Dio followed Thor towards Asgard. Dio saw for the first time the glory of Asgard. He saw many beautiful ladies walking about in the distance, and the building was all glorious in their white paint adorned with gold. But Thor didn't take Dio for sightseeing. He took Dio directly to the palace, where he ordered some of the guards to bring medics and took Crystal and Jane into the sickbay. Asgard had many excellent witches who mastered excellent healing spells and modern understanding of the human's body. Thor's mother was one of them, and so Dio calmed down a little as he knew that these Asgardians were more trustworthy than Earthener's doctor. What is happening to both of them? Thor asked curiously to the witches that were examining Crystal and Jane. We don't know yet, the energy coming from her body was totally different than that the Midgardian should possess. As for the child, we didn't detect the same energy from the lady within her, but she had more powerful energy hidden deep inside her soul, the witch said solemnly. But as Dio was about to ask the witch another question regarding Crystal's condition, a stern voice interrupted them. Did you not heed my word? Why are you still doing whatever you want like this? Odin said as he came to the sickbay. They are sick, father. They need my help. Thor said confidently. They are all mortals. They are all sick. But nonetheless, none of them is welcomed in Asgard, bring them to Midgard immediately. Odin said rudely. 
I am sorry, but I've always thought that Odin was a wise and calculative god. But my first impression is not that good. All I saw just now was arrogance. Thor was having the same issue when he first showed up on the earth, but now I know that it is all because he was just acting like you do. You are just a god full of contradiction, in fact, you are not worthy of the title of a god itself. Dio said challengingly. Although it wasn't good to challenge his host like this, Dio wouldn't let it go if he was being insulted like that. Everyone on the room was silent as they were surprised to hear such a word came from a Midgardian mouth, but Thor was the most surprised as he never saw anyone went against his father like this before, at least no one else besides him and Loki. Odin never expected that he would hear something like this from a Midgardian and so he was furious after hearing Dio's word. But Dio didn't care. He wouldn't let Odin insult him like this even if he was just a guest in Odin's home. Dio knows that Odin has long exceeded his peak. Now, Odin was just a weak old god who was trying his hard to control his territory. Although Dio knew that Odin still had the power to fight him, but Dio was confident that he would be able to deal with it. Do you know who you are talking to, boy? Odin asked furiously. Of course, I am talking to a rude and arrogant god that thinks that the earthlings were epidemic and the Asgardians were kings. If the Ancient One ever heard of this, you may be having some chat about the honor of life. Dio said confidently. Odin was surprised after hearing the Ancient One being mentioned like this, he considered the Ancient One as one of his friends and an entity that was powerful enough to stand beside him on his prime. What is your relation with the Ancient One? Odin asked curiously. He seemed to calm down after hearing that name. It doesn't really matter. After all, the Ancient One is just another walking epidemic. Dio said challengingly. Odin seemed to contemplate about something, but Dio could see that the old god has already calmed down. Midgardian, you are fearless. But I will never take back what I said, I will talk to Ancient One about this when I have the time, but I said it once again, Asgard doesn't welcome your kind here, so follow the guard to Bifrist and return to your home. Odin said confidently. Odin knew that no matter what happened here, the Ancient One wouldn't care less. If Odin didn't take his army to invade the earth, the Ancient One wouldn't do anything. However, as soon as the guards got close towards Jane, they were suddenly thrown away towards the wall as Aether inside Jane's body recognized them as a threat. Stop, retreat. Odin said to the guards as he recognized the red particle that attacked the guards just now. This is impossible. Odin said as his expression became more serious. The energy inside her body was trying to protect her. The witch that diagnosed Jane earlier said in fascination. No. It was trying to protect itself. Odin said in a knowing look on his face. The other girl also has bigger energy deep within her soul, the witch said as she was also wondering about Crystal. Odin immediately turned his attention toward Crystal, who was lying on the bed near them, but as he walked towards Crystal, Dio blocked his path while covering his body in intense Hammond energy. Since we are not welcomed here, we will leave immediately. There is no need for you to check on my sister's condition. Dio said confidently. No, you didn't realize the severity of the situation now. I need to confirm what is happening to her first if you want to leave. Odin said confidently. Didn't you say Asgardian was a hospitable place before, Thor? Did I have to fight my way outside now? Dio asked as he looked towards Thor. Father. Stop. This is not how we welcome our guests. Thor said to Odin as he was trying to defuse the situation. Odin looked into Thor's eyes, and after a moment, sighed and told Dio to follow him. Dio looked at Thor, and they both followed Odin towards the hall. For once, Odin put aside his prejudice toward another race and then explained the dark history of the Nine Realms and the power of the Aether that created chaos among the realms. Are you saying that the Aether would kill Jane eventually? Is there any method to extract it out of her body safely? Thor asked worriedly. No, I don't think the record ever said something about extracting the Aether from the host. It would be a lot easier to secure it once the host dies. Odin said solemnly. Thor was immediately disappointed, like a kicked puppy. From the looks of it, the little girl was also infected with the ether's particle. Of course, I can check her condition, but then again, I will not force you if you really want to go back to Earth. Odin said solemnly. No wonder Odin changed his attitude as he knew the power behind the ether. 
he was afraid that soon the ether would endanger the universe. Odin's suspicion about Crystal's energy was Dio's worry, and so he agreed to let Odin inspect Crystal for a little bit. Odin then walked back inside the sick bay and inspected Crystal, but after a while, a surprised expression was clear on Odin's face. Father, how did it turn out? Thor asked curiously. No, the girl is okay. It would take some time for her to wake up. If your friend is not in a hurry, he can enjoy Asgard for a while, let him experience the hospitality of Asgard. Odin said with an annoyed face. Of course, father. I will do just that. Thor said excitedly. But remember. No more meaningless thing. Odin said as he walked away. He detected a powerful potential from Crystal's body, but the thing that surprised him was when he knew that energy was sealed by the Ancient One. That was also the reason for Odin to let Dio and Crystal stay in Asgard, for he didn't exactly know how deep their bond with the Ancient One was. Dio. You are too brave. I am having a cold sweat just from remembering the scene earlier. Thor said excitedly as Odin was no longer in the vicinity. I don't want to be rude, but I was insulted for no reason. Dio said annoyedly. Originally Dio wanted to come to Asgard with a low profile, but now, it was clear that he couldn't do so. Dio completely threw his respect for Odin out of the window as he knew that Odin shouldn't act like that. If Odin weren't Thor's father and the ruler of Asgard, Dio probably would have punched him in the face when he insulted him like that. On the other hand, Thor didn't know what Dio was thinking, but he knew how Dio felt, and so he opted to defuse the situation before he spoke. He wished Loki would be here right now as he would be able to make some snarky comment that would defuse the situation quickly, but right now, Loki was still in jail, and that wouldn't change for a long time. Now, I will take you to your room, and after that, I will personally guide you to sightsee Asgard as you saw fit. Thor said sincerely. Okay. I hope that kind of situation earlier would never happen again. Dio said casually to Thor as he knew that Thor would feel a little bit guilty about the situation earlier. Dio then picked Crystal up from her medical bed and brought her along. Dio intended to keep a close eye on Crystal. If Black Crystal decided to show up again, he knew that he was the only one who could stop her from turning a dream into reality. After arriving at the room, Dio left his suitcase, pet carrier, and the weapon box behind. Fortunately, he always carried around a spare suitcase, and the weapon was always within the arm's reach as he knew that something unexpected might happen at any given moment. After resting for a while, Crystal finally woke up. She was confused as there was nothing inside the room that she could recognize except for Dio. Mr. Dio. Where are we? Crystal asked confusedly. Oh, you finally wake up. How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable? Dio asked endearingly. I feel fine, but where are we? Crystal asked once again. Well, do you ever know about Asgard on Norse mythology? This is the king's palace in Asgard. Dio said casually. Crystal was surprised, and Dio could see that she didn't believe Dio at first, but after seeing through the window, she finally realized that what Dio just said was true. The scenery was beautiful. It was the kind of scenery that wouldn't exist anywhere on earth. Are we already dead? Crystal said as she was in awe with the scenery in front of her. Dio was surprised that Crystal arrived at that conclusion, but after some thought, Dio nodded his head wickedly. The next day, Thor took Crystal, Jane, and Dio around the palace while introducing them to the gods that also lived inside the palace. After a couple of hours or so, Dio had become bored of sightseeing the palace alone. Although the palace was an interesting place, he couldn't care less. On the other hand, Thor and Jane seemed content and enjoyed each other company. Seeing these two constantly flirting with each other, Dio felt annoyed. It was like he was all alone here, while Crystal was still sulking. Finally, Dio couldn't take it anymore. Thor, I heard that Asgard has a flying horse. Why don't you take us to see them? It would be interesting to see a flying horse for a change. Dio said tiredly. Thor was surprised for a bit. He never told Dio about the Pegasus before. I am sorry, but Pegasus is off-limit right now. Since the Valkyrie has fallen, the Pegasus is almost extinct. All I know is that several Pegasuses were in my father's protection. Even I don't know where they are. 
but I can take you to see any other magical creature that Asgard has. Thor said apologetically. After listening to Thor's explanation, Dio sure was disappointed. One of his goal coming to Asgard went up in smoke. He didn't mind neglecting his customer on Earth if it meant having a chance to get one Pegasus as a mount. But from their earlier interaction, Dio doubted that Odin would even talk to him. As for URU metal or some other treasures that he might still get, Dio could always ask Thor later. After having lunch, Thor brought them all to the forest near the beach to see any magical creature inside the forest. Dio obviously didn't give up on his quest to find a pet that could withstand the stand arrow's power. But Thor's next word annoyed everyone. You know, the forest is too close to the palace, so the magical creatures that inhabit the forest have been driven away from the palace to the middle of the forest. Thor said apologetically. Everyone sighed as they were disappointed, but then Thor offered that he could bring them there faster by flying. Dio was the first one to agree to that because he didn't like to waste his time tracking the forest. So, Thor immediately took Jane on his arm and swung Mjolnir to lift him into the air, while Dio held on to Crystal in one arm and hold on to Thor's cape on another. Crystal, who never experienced this kind of thing before, closed her eyes as she screamed nervously. But after a while, she couldn't help but opened her eyes and saw that she was really flying right now. She admired Dio even more. If it weren't because of Dio, she knew that she would still be in a state of despair like before meeting Dio. At the same time, Thor, who was still focused on flying towards the middle of the forest, didn't know that his little sightseeing tour has successfully made a girl admire Dio even more. If he knew that this would happen, he would try to make Dio look bad for teasing purposes. But fortunately, Jane, who was holding tightly to Thor's neck all this time, was still fascinated by Thor and Thor alone. Finally, they arrived in the middle of the forest, and they descended to see the magical creatures that Asgard had. Dio could feel this part of the forest was indeed full of creatures as he caught the movement of many animals not too far from their location. In fact, Jane and Crystal even saw some rabbit, hopping about the forest. What is that? Jane asked Thor curiously. What do you mean? It is a rabbit. Didn't Earth also has one? Thor asked confusedly. I mean, what did you call a rabbit in Asgard? Jane asked curiously. What do you mean, Jane? We call it a rabbit, just like any other ordinary people. Thor said confusedly. Jane's face gradually reddened in embarrassment as she was surprised that Asgard was using the same language. At the same time, Dio and Crystal were laughing hard at Thor's insensible words, and at Jane, that surprisingly expected too much. Dio finally knew why Rocket. Raccoon was still named after an earth animal while he admitted that he wasn't from earth. Dio decided that he might take Thor to a zoo later if they were on earth to show the difference between animals on earth and the one on Asgard. After their discussion about rabbit earlier, Dio and the others tracked deeper into the forest to see that some animals were indeed different than any animal on earth. In the meantime, Dio was secretly using his stand arrow to check if there was any potential stand user among the creature in the forest. Dio saw a flower that apparently was a lizard in disguise, a snake with a mouse head, a giant earthworm, an electric butterfly, a man-eating tree, and so many others. At the first time, Jane and Crystal were frightened as some of the creatures were nightmare-fueled, but after a while, it seemed they had become accustomed to the bizarre creatures and eventually laughed at the how weird and scary some creatures were and pondered over some that were cute and great-looking. They didn't need to fear any of those animals as they knew that Thor and Dio would always protect them from harm. As if right on cue, the ground beneath the girls shook violently, like there was a stampede somewhere. Dio and the girls were confused as they didn't know what happened, but Thor flashed a knowing look on his face. I will go over there to take a look at what happened. You guys stay here. Thor said casually. Thor then flew using his hammer to see what happened. Dio then covered his body with ham and energy as he knew that things might go south. After a while, Dio was surprised by the roar of a beast, and then suddenly, a beast charged towards him with an overwhelming speed. Luckily, Dio was ready for something like this, and he pulled out the Reaper's Gaze, from his card and hit the beast's head with it. Dio didn't know how far the beast slipped as it was far too quick, and so when Dio saw it was dead, Dio sighed as he didn't have time to check the beast's potential on the stand arrow. Dio was slightly embarrassed as the girls saw that Dio was startled by the beast just now. 
He smiled at them awkwardly and observed the beast for a while. Thor then finally arrived, and from the look of dirt on Thor's clothing, Dio knew that Thor must have been sent flying by the beast. So, how far did you get knocked back? Dio asked teasingly. No, I just underestimated its power, that's all. This is Bristol, by the way, according to legend, it destroys everything in its path. Although I do not know why we have a Bristol here. Thor said as he tried to change the subject. So, you were knocked out by it. Dio said as he raised his eyebrows teasingly. Shut up. You don't have a proof. Thor said as he was annoyed by Dio's teasing. But suddenly, another Bristol was sighted. It was rushing towards Thor while roaring furiously. Dio immediately took Jane and Crystal to safety while observing Thor's fight. Dio shook his head as Thor was acting stupid again. Instead of dodging the Bristol's charge, Thor made a stand head-on. It was obvious to Dio that Thor was just trying to act tough in front of Jane. It was way too obvious that Dio was sick of it. Dio sighed, and instead of joining hands with Thor to defeat the new Bristol, Dio then pulled Jane and Crystal up and quickly ran away from the scene. Thor, be sure to stop that thing, alright. I will make sure Crystal and Jane are safe. Dio said with his perfect act. He just wanted to leave Thor alone without any spectator so that he couldn't brag later. The last scene that Dio saw was Thor being stomped and hammered like a nail into the ground. Of course, his Asgardian physique wouldn't exactly get him injured just from an attack like this, but it was foolish to fight that beast head-on like that. All that Dio knew after that was the roar of the beast in pain. The Bristol's body was covered by thick scales, and there was hardly any opening to it, making it almost impossible to attack head-on. But Thor immediately summoned lightning to knock it out, but Thor was surprised as the thunder still did nothing to the Bristol. In fact, all the thunder did was agitated it even more than before. Dio, who was standing in a safe distance, observed Thor's fight and smirked as he saw that even an Asgardian like Thor still had a tough time dealing with this beast. The Bristol then charged toward Thor at an incredible speed and rammed Thor's who still had no intention to dodge the attack. It'd be great to have a little bit helping hand here. Thor quipped as he thought it was about time Dio gave him a hand. I am sorry, this place is too dangerous now. I can't leave Jane and Crystal unguarded. Dio shouted back with a smirk on his face. Thor clicked his teeth and kept on trying to electrocute the beast as he saw that it was the only thing that had a smidge of effect to the beast. Thor was a little bit annoyed as he knew that Dio was having a great time seeing him struggling against this beast, but Thor knew that Dio's reasoning was valid. The Bristol kept on rampaging and finally, Thor was slammed by its hind leg. This time Thor couldn't shake off the damage that he got from said attack and vomited blood. Finally realizing that Thor was having a tough time, Jane immediately told Dio to go help him. Dio sighed and walked towards Thor with his scythe, ready to attack. If Jane didn't make a fuss about it, Dio would have watched Thor struggle a little bit more before he helped him. Dio immediately summoned the White Album so that he could feel more at ease. Hey, beast. Look here. Dio said as he taunted the Bristol. The Bristol immediately shifted its attention to Dio as it felt challenged by Dio's posture. As the Bristol charging towards him at an incredible speed, Dio immediately swung his scythe several times in succession, and the Bristol was instantly cut into pieces. The scythe was made of three metals with a strong offensive attribute, and the Bristol's scale couldn't withstand any of his attacks. But Dio was surprised as he saw that the Bristol wasn't dead just yet. Even with its leg already cut off and its body was eviscerated, it still showed an immense will to live. It roared one more time and tried to attack Dio with its huge tusk. Dio noticed that Thor was charging a powerful thunderstrike right now, so Dio knew that he didn't have to do anything else for now. Dio just constantly dodged the Bristol's attack as he waited for Thor to finish charging up his attack, and not long after, Thor finally released a huge thunder that hit the Bristol head on. The Bristol began to squirm as it was electrocuted badly by the thunder just now, the weather itself started to change due to Thor's attack. It was starting to rain now, although it was sunny just a moment ago. At the same time, Dio was freezing the Bristol to prevent it from struggling. For the last attack, Thor then lifted his hammer toward the sky and swung it into the staggered Bristol's head, killing it on the spot. At the same time, Dio was sighing because if this creature had any potential to be a stand user, Dio would have made it into his pet. 
The thought of having such a strong and enormous beast as his pet alone was already a great image in his mind. But no, the beast didn't have any potential, and therefore Dio couldn't waste his pet card on this beast. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Dio then put back the Reaper's gaze, into the cards and de-summoned the, white album, as he didn't need them now. Dio looked at the enormous beast once again for the last time as it was really a disappointing kill. Dio kept thinking what if the beast had potential, as he thought it was such a waste, considering how strong the beast was, but even so, he didn't need a strong beast who had no potential to be a stand user. Dio then plucked the tusk off from Bristol's dead body and put it inside his card. He would make something out of it later. Although Bristol was very powerful, in the end, it was a beast without any intelligence. And so, Dio and Thor could defeat it relatively easily. Thor's hiccup earlier was because he was trying so hard to look gallant in front of Jane. But as they were about to go and look for another magical beast to show Jane and the others, a loud sound was heard from the palace's direction. Thor was instantly alarmed by that and immediately went back with Jane, Dio, and Crystal at once. Thor knew that something bad must have happened because something that loud wasn't heard that often in Asgard. At the same time, several stealth aircrafts appeared on the sky one after another. Heimdall only managed to destroy one of them, but he couldn't catch up with the rest. Asgard's anti-air unit was immediately deployed to fight against the incoming raiders, but the raiders proved to be very agile as they easily outmaneuvered Asgard's anti-air unit. The enemy even destroyed all Asgard's anti-air turret for their smooth invasion. Heimdall, who saw that the enemy easily penetrated Asgard's line of defenses, immediately activated the palace's energy shield in thought that the enemy would have no means to threaten the royal family. But the shield was immediately shattered. The Asgardians and Heimdall especially were shocked as this was the first time that the palace's shield failed to work properly. This was bad, as it meant the enemy had infiltrated the palace for quite some time, as the shield could only be shattered if the energy core inside the palace was destroyed. Rolling back an hour before the invasion, a riot took place inside the palace's prison. Loki, who was also an inmate inside the prison, immediately knew that this was just a distraction for something bigger, but it seemed he was the only one that noticed it quick enough as he saw that almost all the palace's guards were coming to the prison to quench the riot. And so, the invasion began. Melkith, the leader of the Dark Elves, was the one that orchestrated the invasion, and he was also present as the Dark Elves army that he commanded arrived at the Asgardian palace. He brought destruction to the people inside the palace by throwing many implosion grenades towards every Asgardian that he could find. Melkitha's hatred ran deep. He hated Asgard and everything within it as he blamed Asgard for the death of thousands of his people thousands of years ago. After thousands of years of waiting for the right opportunity to strike, he finally found it. The Aether. If Melkith got his hands on that ancient artifact, he would surely be able to kill all his guardians. When Thor arrived at the palace, he and Dio ignored the chaos that ensued outside and immediately ran straight to check Odin's condition. On their way to the king's chamber, they saw that a group of invaders was shooting at the palace's guards. Thor wanted to attack this invader, but he was stopped by Dio, who said that he would handle the enemy there, and Thor should check on his mother as soon as possible. Thor nodded and left with Jane immediately. He was grateful to have Dio here right now. Otherwise, he would waste his time fighting the enemy while his parents might be in trouble. After Thor left, Dio immediately summoned, Horus, and, White Album. He really liked these two stands' offensive capabilities. It was easy to use with little Hammond energy consumption while it effectively destroyed the enemy units. Crystal, who was beside Dio all the time, was scared but she knew that Dio wouldn't let anything happen to her, so she tried to remain calm the entire fight. But one invader, who wasn't immediately killed by Dio's ice shard, threw one imploding grenade toward Dio. Look out! The Asgard royal guard said as they saw that the Dark Elves had thrown the grenade to Dio. They already knew the powerful aspect of this grenade and that the grenade will rip through any defenses. Dio immediately responded by creating a thick ice wall in front of him to protect him from the blast while immediately falling back a little bit. The sound of an explosion was heard, and Dio was a little bit surprised that the thick wall that he created earlier was destroyed in half. Dio knew that the Dark Elves had this kind of technology, but he never expected it to be this smooth. It was a little bit different than what its effect portrayed in the movies, this one was more powerful. 
So, to make sure that the enemy couldn't use the grenade again, Dio froze them instantly by, White Album, S Absolute's Zero Ability. But Dio was a little bit annoyed to himself as he has forgotten about the Dark Elves. He took so much effort to get, the hand, while he could just get these imploding grenades. After killing the Dark Elves, Dio rummaged through their belongings as he was intrigued by the implosion bomb that they had. But he found none of it as he searched. It seemed that the previous implosion took all their belonging with it. But as Dio disappointedly walked toward the next area, he was immediately attacked by the Kursk. Dio knew this creature from Thor's movie. That was the special ability that the Dark Elves had. They sacrificed their strong warrior to turn them into Cursed Warrior. But sadly, this Cursed Warrior has dwindled in number as the number of the Dark Elves decreased. The Cursed Warrior threw a stone-like object at Dio, and Dio, who immediately realized that it wasn't a normal rock, immediately created a multi-layered ice wall to block whatever the rock may be. It exploded as soon as it came into contact with Dio's ice wall, and soon after that, Dio immediately attacked with, Horus, and slammed the Cursed with many ice blades. The Cursed roared in anger as the ice damaged it a little bit. The hot temperature that the Cursed had melted the ice that Dio was throwing, and so his attack has a little to no damage except agitating the Cursed. Dio knew that he wouldn't be able to win with, Horus, so he immediately used the, Life Magnetism Overdrive, for himself so that he could enhance his vision, and then he used the, Metal Silver Overdrive, to the side so that his attack would have a more considerable impact to the giant. With his vision enhanced, the giant's movement was like a snail for Dio, and with his scythe enhanced with his Hammond energy, he successfully cut the giant like Tofu. The cursed staggered as Dio successfully cut one of its arms and immediately roared in anger once again. Dio knew that this cursed warrior wouldn't go down before they died, and so once the giant attacked again, Dio immediately cut another arm, and this time, Dio also cut one of its legs. As a stand weapon, Reaper's gaze, was quite strong. D.O.P. didn't even have to use, Anubis's power that was still dormant inside the blade. He hadn't used, Anubis, even once as he didn't see any needs for that now. Anubis's power enhanced the blade's durability and sharpness, sure, but the true value of, Anubis, was that the user would be controlled by, Anubis, in the fight, and because of that, the user would become a powerful swordsman in an instant. Anubis, would be able to identify the enemy's weaknesses as well as their combat style, making, Anubis, one of the best close combat stand there was. Even if the cursed warrior had lost both of his arm and one of his legs, he was still persistent in attacking Dio. This was the cursed warrior's perseverance. Even if it lost everything, as long as it still breathed, it would continue to attack his enemies no matter what. The cursed warrior jumped towards Dio and intended to bring Dio down with him while burning his core. But as soon as he got close to Dio, Dio immediately activated, White Album, S ability and turned his surrounding into absolute zero. The high temperature that came from the cursed warrior was immediately cooled down by, White Album, S ability, but Dio knew that his opponent wouldn't die just from this attack, so he immediately crushed the ice solid cursed warrior with the, Reaper's gaze. Dio was calm from the beginning to the end as if the most powerful soldiers that Asgard has ever seen was no big deal. Nevertheless, Dio was able to kill him easily. As Dio desummoned his stand, he walked toward Crystal and reached his hands for Crystal to take. Are you afraid, Crystal? Dio asked endearingly. Crystal shook her head quickly as she didn't want Dio to think of her as a coward. She immediately stood up and held her shirt's hem nervously. Dio smiled and messed up her hair endearingly like usual as his way of saying that it was okay to be afraid. She puffed her cheeks and looked at Dio with a frown on her face. She really didn't like it when her hair was a mess. Dio just laughed as he saw the look that Crystal gave him, but Dio knew that he had to get Crystal to safety. Let's go, there are too many enemies around here. Dio said to Crystal as he held her hands. Crystal nodded her head but she couldn't wait to ask Dio about the terrifying creature that she saw just now. Mr. Dio what is the bone bird just now? Why does it look like a dinosaur? Crystal asked curiously. You saw that creature? Dio asked as he was startled by Crystal's question. Of course, it was so big. How can I not see it? Crystal said as she pouted once more. Dio was really surprised that Crystal could see, Horus. While Dio was attacked by the cursed warrior, 
Thor and Jane have run into trouble themselves. They encountered Melkith with a couple of his men. I am Melkith. The leader of the Dark Elves. Now I would like you to give what is rightfully mine. Melkith said to Thor coldly. Over my dead body, Melkith. Thor said as he pulled Jane to his back. He knew that Melkith must have come for the ether. So, Thor immediately summoned lightning and attacked Melkith with it. Melkith dodged Thor's attack and immediately ordered his men to open fire. Thor immediately pulled Jane out of harm's way and hid behind a pillar. He summoned another thunder and shot the dark elves that attacked him one by one, turning the table once again. Melkith seemed to be furious with how the battle ensued, so he immediately threw the imploding grenade to Thor's position in order to finish Thor once and for all. But unfortunately for Melkith, Thor hit the grenade with his Mjolnir and successfully sent it back toward Melkith. Melkith immediately grabbed a soldier near his foot and threw him to the grenade's trajectory. The grenades imploded, killing the soldier that Melkith threw as his shield. Thor saw the grenade's firepower and surprised as it was no doubt could kill him in one attack. But, after the grenades imploded, Melkith commanded his army to stop attacking. He knew that he was falling short on this attack. He obviously couldn't win against Thor right now, and if he insisted on beating Thor to get his hands on the ether, his army would be slowly killed by the Asgardian army, and eventually, he had to face against Odin all by himself. That is not what he had planned, and so he ordered his army to retreat. Son of Odin. I admit your bravery and your strength. But I think we can make a deal. Melkith said solemnly to Thor. As the future king of Asgard, I will never make a deal with a terrorist. Melkith, I will personally rip your head along with your soldier for killing and invading Asgard. Thor said coldly as he still held Jane on his back. Thor's word moved the palace's guard and Jane, Thor was a hero. I sure hope that you can uphold that word of yours in the future, future king of Asgard. Melkith said as he laughed sarcastically. He then commanded his man to bring something, and soon Thor's eye looked at the scene in front of him in anger. Melkith. If you dare even to touch her hair, I swear to God, I will chase you to the end of the universe. Thor said coldly. The one that Melkith brought out just now was none other than Thor's mother, Frigga, Queen of Asgard. Wow, as a descendant of Bor, your threat is weak. So, let us make our deal. Give me that woman, and I will leave your mother unharmed. Let me see your choice, future king of Asgard. Melkith said as he laughed evilly. Melkith felt that he was lucky to found Frigga once he entered the palace, but in the process of capturing her, she left a deep wound on Melkith's face. This wound would be his shame reminder as it would remind him of the time that he couldn't handle the power of a single woman. At the same time, Thor didn't know what to do. He looked at the woman that he fell in love with and a woman that gave him his life and love. He had his answer in mind, but he couldn't say it as he knew that the result wouldn't be good. Thor. Calm down. He just wants to provoke you into doing what he wants. You already know the right thing to do now, so don't hesitate. I love you no matter what, and please know that I am proud of you." Frigga said with a proud look on her face. She looked at Thor with so much love and proudness that Thor's began to weep of what to come. Frigga, who knew that Thor would have a hard time deciding the outcome, immediately took the option to her own hands. She immediately reached for the imploding grenade that was hanging on Melkitha's waist in order to kill him with her. She knew that the grenade would be so devastating that there was no way Melkith would survive it. Mother. Don't. Thor shouted as he saw what Frigga's intention was, but Melkith, who was annoyed that she was struggling to get away, immediately cut her throat open. Frigga's blood spurted around the floor as she fell weakly to the floor. While her body reached the floor, a thunderstrike full of rage hit Melkith's face and melted half of his face. Thor wasn't satisfied with this outcome just yet. Compared to losing his mother, melting Melkith's face was nowhere near enough. Melkith knew that he couldn't win against Thor right now, and he also didn't have any more token to barter, so he retreated towards his stealth jet. Thor, who was immersed in his rage, immediately sent a thunderstrike that was huge enough to destroy several enemies' jets, but as soon as Melkith's jet and some other turned invisible, he ceased his attack. Odin, who has just finished fighting against the enemy on his side immediately ran toward Thor's direction. Odin was clearly not as fit to battle as he was, because he got there panting. 
But as soon as he saw Frigga's lifeless body, sadness and despair shrouded him like what happened to Thor and every other Asgardians that came with him. Odin immediately ran towards Frigga's body and hugged her sadly. At this moment, Odin was neither god nor the king of Asgard. He was simply a weeping husband who would lose his wife. Frigga that was in and out of her consciousness, reached out toward Odin's face, but she fell short as she didn't have enough strength left to do that. Seeing his wife's hand move, Odin immediately reached out and held her hands in his. Frigga then turned her attention to Thor. She knew that she could no longer convey how much she supported and loved Thor, but at the very least, she could see him for the last time. But at this time, Dio barged in with Crystal behind his back. Dio. Please save my mother. Thor said as he saw Dio. He knew that Dio has a weird healing ability that even saved Tony on the verge of dying. However, Odin was confused. He didn't know Dio's power, so he wondered how a mortal being like Dio could save his wife while no one in Asgard could do anything. Dio frowned and ran over towards Frigga's body and immediately administered the energy from the golden experience. From his memory, while watching Thor's movie, Dio knew that Frigga shouldn't have died. She was too good to die like that as she was the only one who could control Odin and Loki. Odin, who was watching from the side, was shocked as he saw the radiant energy that was slowly invigorating Frigga's body. Odin knew that this energy was life energy. It was as warm as sunlight. He began to wonder how a mortal could possibly master such energy. Not long after that, Odin was shocked once again as he saw that Frigga was slowly getting back her complexion. The stunning part that happened to Frigga was that the wound that Melkith has left on her neck was also healing and left no scar. As the king of Asgard and the god of Asir, Odin knew that this was truly a miracle. Question after question popped in Odin's mind regarding Dio, and the biggest one was the possibility that Dio might be the one that the Ancient One has chosen to become her heir. It just made sense, with such potential, Odin knew that Dio would be a powerhouse in the future. Unlike Odin, who was wandering in silence, Thor was giddy with excitement. He felt despair when his mother fell weak to the floor, but now he saw that her complexion was slowly getting better, all thanks to Dio. Dio himself was focused on treating Frigga. No one dared to interrupt him by making any sound or even move a muscle as they were afraid that their action could halt Dio's treatment. Although, Golden Experience, could heal back any living being completely, it still needed a different amount of energy according to the living being's life force itself. If by any chance, Dio had to save an ordinary human from their death, Dio would only need around 10 seconds of, Golden Experience, s time, but for Frigga, who was considered the strongest witch in the Nine Realms, Dio had to spend 2 minutes of, golden experience, s time. Fortunately, Dio had used the recharge card on, golden experience, so even after he finished Frigga's treatment, he still had another 43 minutes to use in the future. After a while, Dio took a deep breath in relief and de-summoned the, golden experience, as he was done. Frigga was no longer in code red. Dio. How is my mother? Did you save her? Thor asked impatiently. There is nothing to worry about anymore, as long as she takes a good rest for a couple of days, she should be back in top shape. Dio said casually, and then he turned around, leaving Odin, Thor, and the rest of the Asgardian palace guards who were looking at Frigga expectantly to take his own rest for the day. Dio's intention on saving Frigga wasn't completely an act of kindness either. Dio knew that with him saving Frigga from death, Asgard would be indebted to him. Did you hear that, father? Mother is alright. Thor said as he was excited and grateful that his mother was fine. I heard him all right, now, please take my wife back to my chamber. I would like for her to rest and recover as soon as possible. Odin said to the female attendant that was also in the room. Please convey my gratitude towards your friend and tells him that I'll await his presence when he had enough rest, Odin said to Thor as he left with Frigga. After almost experiencing the death of his wife and the battle before it, Odin felt tired himself, and he would like to rest too. Thor felt incredibly lucky that he invited Dio to come with him this time. Otherwise, his mother would have been dead. But at the same time, Jane, who was completely silent the entire time, finally spoke to Thor. I am sorry, this was all because of me. If you gave me up earlier, your mother wouldn't have to go through all this. Jane said as she was barely holding back her tears. Jane, listen, it wasn't your fault, and my mother is alright too. 
There is no need for you to blame yourself. Just forget what happened here, Jane. We are all right. Thor said as he held Jane on his arms. This incident caused Thor to realize that there were so many forms of love. He loved Jane and wanted to be with her, but this love for Jane was completely different from his love for Frigga. And that was why, no matter how many times he faced the same kind of situation, he wouldn't be able to choose. After knowing that Odin wanted to meet with him later, Dio wasn't surprised. He has already predicted that it may come to this. After all, Odin had to show his gratitude in public since an outsider has successfully saved his wife's life. Before meeting with Odin, Dio told Crystal to wait in the room as it was best for Crystal to stay away from being alone with Jane for the moment. Although he knew that the ether inside Jane's body hasn't come for Crystal again since they arrived in Asgard, Dio still didn't want to risk it. After all, there was so much that he didn't know about the Infinity Gem itself. Even Melkith, who had become the host for the Aether for such a long time, was also incapable of controlling the Aether to his wishes. And so, Dio walked toward the throne room with Thor, and as he arrived there, he overheard that Odin was still discussing the palace's security with a few people. He was annoyed that the palace's shield hasn't come up yet and the fact that Heimdall brought with him as Heimdall claimed that he couldn't see the invasion coming. Heimdall was like a true observer for the Nine Realms, as he could see anything at any time, but this time, he couldn't see the incoming Dark Elves invasion. This meant that Dark Elves' technology has surpassed that of Asgard. Odin was angry as this meant that Asgard had lost its defensive capabilities. He then saw Thor and Dio had arrived at the throne room, so Odin immediately dismissed the people that he talked to just now. After everyone but Thor and Dio left, Odin sighed quite a few times before talking to Thor. Now that we have the Aether on our possession, Melkith will try to get it once more. Odin said as he sighed. You're overestimating this guy. Thor said confidently. What would you know? We don't even know whether they're hovering in their invisible jet on top of this palace right now. Odin said tiredly. I know that when they attack again, I would have prepared ten. Soldiers to obliterate them once and for all. Odin said confidently. And how many soldiers from that number will die? Thor said as he argued with Odin. A sacrifice is needed for the greater good. I will not rest until the last of Asgard's enemy is dead. Odin said as he yelled at Thor. With that loud voice coming from Odin, Dio immediately knew that the wise god wasn't so wise anymore. And plus, Dio also noticed that Odin was no longer fit to battle as an old age could be seen crawling around his appearance. If that's the way you think, what makes you different? Then Melkith? Thor asked, increasing the moral pressure to Odin. The difference is that the final winner shall be me. He will just be another loser who wishes to take Asgard for themselves. Odin said confidently. After hearing that answer, Thor was taken aback. He didn't know what to say to that argument. Odin knew that Thor was done, there was nothing else that he could say to overturn Odin's decision. So, he turned his attention to Dio. Dio Brando of Midgard. On behalf of Asgard, I thank you for everything that you did to help us when we were attacked so suddenly. Odin said solemnly. But that is me as a king, but let me also thank you for saving my wife. Now, I will grant your request. If it's within my power, I would make it happen. Odin said solemnly. I want one Pegasus and some URU metal. Dio said as he smirked victoriously. I will take note of that, as this war was over, I will prepare it for your reward, Odin said casually, but Odin was slightly annoyed that Dio was asking for something very rare. Dio nodded his head politely. He knew that this was a way for Odin to use him against the Dark Elves so that the matter could be cleared faster. If Dio refused to help, then Odin could make an excuse about the matter was not over yet. Dio and Thor immediately left the throne room after that, but Thor was the only one who still had an excited look on his face. Don't worry, father's promise never falters. If we kill Melkith, everything would be back to normal. Thor said excitedly. Dio clearly became more annoyed as he heard Thor's words, after all, the Dark Elves were attacking Thor's realm and wanted Jane, Thor's girlfriend. In short, all these shenanigans had nothing to do with Dio. What did you think will happen if Melkith got the Aether for himself? Dio asked Thor to break his annoyance and boredom. 
Thor was silent for a second as he thought of what Dio had asked him for, I think that wouldn't happen as both of us would be enough to destroy them all. Thor said confidently. Hmm, you sure are confident about this? Dio said as he rolled his eyes. Although Thor's plan was risky, Dio knew that it was the best for the current situation. Asgard would no longer become the target for the Dark Elves' invasion, and Jane would be able to relieve herself of the ether from her body soon. Unfortunately, Odin didn't have the same opinion with Thor and so, knowing Thor wouldn't listen to him, Odin ordered the closure of the Bifrost, so no one was able to come or leave Asgard. In prison, the most important prisoner in Asgard was still left untouched by the Dark Elves as the Dark Elves themselves knew that this man brought nothing but trouble. Thor. How lucky I am to be granted your presence. So, what did you come here for? Mock me? But seeing your expression, something bad happened, didn't it? Loki said coldly. Enough. Put away your illusion, Loki. Thor said annoyedly. Behind the prison glass, the scene suddenly changed, revealing a scruff-looking Loki, instead of the usual neat and tidy Loki. Now what? You have seen what this prison does to me, and now what? Loki said coldly. Thor remained silent as he knew that he would just infuriate Loki further by talking back right now. So, is she okay? Loki said with a sad look after some silence. Thor knew that Loki was a good guy deep down, but his desire to prove that he was capable of Odin completely steered him into a wrong path. But Thor knew that Frigga was different. She was the only one who could calm Loki down. In fact, Frigga was the only one who kept visiting him, here in prison, while everyone turned a blind eye against him. Thor knew that Loki must have heard of what happened to Frigga during the invasion, and Thor also knew that Loki must have regretted being unable to stand by her mother's side when she needed it. Seeing Loki at his current state, Thor knew that his plan would work. Thor knew that he would feel bad in the end after he deceived Loki, but he had to think that it was only retribution for Loki, who has always deceived him in the past. I am not here to mourn with you, Loki. I know that you wanted revenge for what they have done to our mother, and so I am giving you that opportunity now by helping me escape Asgard and comes back later. Thor said solemnly. Thor knew that there was no real benefit for Loki to comply with his request, but Thor knows that Loki wouldn't miss the opportunity to exact revenge against the Dark Elves. But, instead of accepting the offer, Loki laughed sarcastically. And why did you think you can trust me? Loki said in between laughter. I don't trust you, Loki, but sadly my mother did. Thor said solemnly. With that word, Thor had successfully brought out the rage inside Loki's heart. I never expected to see you this desperate, but when do we leave? Loki asked with rage in his eyes. Dio, who was observing the scene from a hidden spot, was amazed. He never knew that Thor had this kind of acting skills. He even deceived Loki with his acting. But Dio still wondered whether Loki really was deceived by Thor's acting or just went along until he could do what he wanted later. But right now, Dio knew that none of it really mattered. If Loki guided them out of Asgard, Dio didn't really care what Loki would do next. After knowing that Loki had agreed to help Thor, Dio left quietly and did his own part. He still had a couple of things to do before he left with Thor. He still had to fetch Jane, and the only way to do that was by using, Knum. Dio walked around to find Asgard casual suit that would look okay when Odin wore it and immediately transformed into Odin to give the order for the group of warriors that guarded her to let her go. Dio then brought Jane towards the rendezvous point with Thor. Their crystal, Thor, and Loki had waited for his arrival. Hey, you never told me that this guy was also here. Loki said annoyedly. Shut up, Loki. You don't have the right to argue now. Just remember, if you betray me now, I will kill you myself. Thor said coldly. Don't worry, Thor. I will keep an eye on him throughout the way, you know, I was still annoyed that I failed to kill him that time. Dio said with a smile on his face. Both Thor and Loki were surprised as they completely forgot that Dio really wanted to kill Loki. When Loki led the group through a secret passage that led out of Asgard, Dio was confused with Loki's honest behavior. Here, we are. I think it's about time you release this thing from my neck. Loki said as he tried to push Dio's scythe away from his neck. Thor. This guy is useless now, do we have to keep him alive? Dio asked Thor with a casual but threatening tone on his voice. 
Loki was visibly stiffened by Dio's word. He knew that Dio could chop him up once he got permission from Thor. But Thor was a kind-hearted man that he was always was, and so he spared Loki once more. No, we can use his trick later while we are fighting against the Dark Elves. Thor said while smirking victoriously. He never thought that day he could successfully control Loki's behavior would come. That's a shame. Dio said as he retracted his scythe back from Loki's neck. Loki was furious with Dio's behavior, but he couldn't do anything as he knew that Dio would easily beat him in a fight. At the same time on the Dark World, Malekith sensed the ether was coming towards Svartalfame in speed. He killed a man by his side out of joy that the ether whom he was waiting for so long finally came back to his world. With the ether's power, he would become the greatest being again. After all, he knew that Odin had passed his prime, and Odin's son wasn't as powerful as their father yet. However, Melkith knew that the incoming ether was a trap or something akin to it. There was just no way Odin would let the ether fell back to Svartalfame's hand once again. Melkith rubbed his face as a reminder that Asgard was truly despicable people. He was burned by Thor's thunder earlier, and now he was disfigured. After a while, Jane was floating in the air while moving toward Melkith's palace. The ether was slowly leaving her body in a red liquid form that was also floating in the air. After the ether completely left her body, she fell to the ground. Thor quickly grabbed her before she could touch the ground, and he immediately fired a thunder strike toward the ether that was trying to gather in one place. Thor was hiding using Loki's trick. He was hidden inside a hole on the ground that was perfectly camouflaged. Dio had told Thor that he had to strike Melkith immediately with the element of surprise, but Thor wasn't listening. He attacked the ether like it would be fragile enough to be destroyed by a mere thunderstrike. Dio felt helpless as Thor had ruined his plan. But the next scene was also quite surprising to Dio as Loki loyally dragged Jane back to the illusion to save her from the incoming danger. The thunder that Thor had released was indeed strong, Melkith himself wasn't fast enough to react to it, and he had to let the thunder cease first before making a move towards the ether. Dio was right once again. After the thunder dissipated, the ether was still floating on the air as if nothing happened. Melkith moved towards the ether and immediately bonded back with it. At the same time, Thor hasn't given up yet and fired a thunderstrike towards Melkith this time. Dio sighed as he knew that Thor's attack wouldn't do anything to Melkith, now that he has bonded back with the ether, or rather the reality gem. He had, the world, ready in case things went south. So, Dio immediately activated, the world, s time stop ability and leaped towards Melkith with, Reaper's gaze, ready to strike. With one fluid motion, Dio decapitated Melkith's head with ease. No one witnessed this triumphant attack as everyone froze in time. Loki was still looking at the scene with an expectant look on his face, while Jane, Dio, and Crystal were having their own moment. Dio also noticed that Melkith's underlings were rushing from a hidden spot with their guns ready. Dio sighed and resumed the time flow once again. Thor was instantly surprised as he saw Dio suddenly appeared out of thin air, whereas Melkith was already decapitated near Dio's feet. Thor was confused as he didn't expect Melkith to die just like that. Thor was visibly shaken by Dio's power as he never saw anything like this within the Nine Realms before. Thor couldn't fathom the logic behind Dio's power, so he made up his mind to never made an enemy out of Dio as he would never find a way to counter Dio's power. As far as Thor knew, Dio was safely hidden inside Loki's illusion before, and there is no way he could suddenly appear out of thin air like that. With an ability that absurd, Thor knew that he wouldn't stand a single second if he somehow ended up fighting Dio. The Dark Elves that came to fight were also staggered after seeing that their leader was decapitated like that. They clearly didn't want to continue fighting as they know that there was no point in prolonging this anymore. With this kind of mentality, Dio knew that Melkith has been forcing the Dark Elves to fight for him. As soon as the Dark Elves were about to retreat, Loki jumped out of the hiding spot and started to kill them one by one. Even though Dio knew Loki's intention, he didn't have time to react as he noticed that the ether that has lost its host was trying to possess Dio's body. Thor. Where is that container that you have prepared for ether? Dio said as he dodged the ether. Thor, who was surprised by things that happened before his eyes, immediately snapped back to his senses, and took a small capsule-like jar and threw it to Dio. This jar was made specially to contain the ether particles as it couldn't be contained by anything else. 
This jar had a special black stone on each end that was able to stabilize the ether once it was captured inside. Thor really wanted to destroy the ether, but he knew that he couldn't do that, so the second best option here was to capture it and seal it somewhere safe. But this time, Thor was feeling a little embarrassed as he still had the pride of Asgard and that he still thought that he was superior than Midgardian like Dio. But like a slap on his face, Dio once again stole his enemy with one fell swoop. Thor immediately walked towards Dio to help him contain the ether, but once again, like a hit to his pride, the ether completely ignored him and kept chasing after Dio. Dio was very puzzled this time as he knew that previously on Earth, the ether wanted to possess Crystal's body, and this time it relentlessly chased after Dio. He was very confused regarding Ether's randomness. Obviously, Crystal wasn't so far away from him, but it seemed the Ether took no interest in Crystal this time. In order to understand the reason behind him being targeted by the Ether, Dio deliberately led it towards Crystal, but as if confirming Dio's earlier theory, the Ether completely ignored Crystal and Jane. Thor, contain it. I can't get close. Dio said as he threw back the jar container to Thor. Thor nodded and swiftly came between Dio and the ether to contain it. Fortunately, Thor succeeded in one try. But the strange thing happened once again as Dio felt that the ether was somewhat sad that it was contained. Does the infinity gem also have an emotion? How can an object have an emotion? This is very strange. Dio said to himself. I am probably just too tired. Dio said as he shook his head tiredly. On the other side, Thor, who successfully closed the lid on the container, directly squeezed the container and kept it inside his pocket. He wouldn't let his sight off this thing as it kept making trouble for him and Asgard. We made it. Our job is done. Thor said excitedly to Dio. Yeah well, it's good to be done, but it seems your brother has run away once again. Dio said as he was slightly amused by Loki's skill to escape. Thor immediately froze as he has completely forgotten about Loki's presence, Thor immediately looked around and saw that Loki was wiping his dagger after killing a dark elf, but he knew that he was already fooled often enough to trust Loki, and so he threw Mjolnir towards Loki. Unfortunately, the hammer passed through Loki's body, destroying the illusion that Loki created previously. Thor was a little bit disappointed by his brother's action, as he really wanted to believe that Loki has changed. But no, he kept tricking Thor again and again. Thor knew that Odin would be mad for two occasions once he got back to Asgard, from directly ignoring the king's decree and releasing a dangerous criminal. Thor sighed as he also knew that he would be cleaning after Loki's mess again in the future. Thor also knew that Loki had someone who helped him for the Battle of New York. There was no way Loki could pull off something like that by himself. Before returning to Asgard, Dio searched the corpses of the Dark Elves and obtained three implosion grenades from them. He wanted to try to replicate the Dark Elf's technology on Earth. If it proved to be a challenge, Dio could just come here again and capture the rest of the Dark Elves to make them do what he wanted. This thought brought a new idea to Dio's mind, what if he became the leader of the Dark Elves? After all, they were like a headless chicken right now after the death of Malekith. And so Dio made a mental note to let Odin know that he wanted the Dark Elves later. Otherwise, he knew that Odin would just annihilate them once again. Dio wasn't in a hurry to save the Dark Elves as he knew that Odin wouldn't attack Svartalhaim just yet, and so, Dio and the others returned to Asgard with Thor bringing the Aether and Melkitha's head back. Dio knew that Odin wouldn't be able to stay mad or furious to Thor. As a result, it showed a great conviction. While it may be a problem that Loki has escaped once again, Odin still loved Loki as his own son, so he would probably ignore that problem until Loki make another mess. In the throne room, Dio kept looking at Odin expectantly as the old god has promised to give him what he wanted after all the Dark Elves' trouble has ended. The palace would be in repair until next week. I will also hold a ceremony to celebrate the end of the battle with the Dark Elves that day. Your friend will also receive the highest courtesy from Asgard that day. Odin said solemnly. Odin knows that he has already on the receiving end due to his old age, he honestly didn't know how much longer he could keep this position as the king of Asgard but he wouldn't give the king's throne to Thor, at least not until Thor learned that a king sometimes had to make a decision that was against their own heart. Odin couldn't help but think that maybe his way of raising Thor was wrong. After some exchange regarding Thor's action and Loki's escape, Thor immediately left the throne room as he knew that he had disappointed his father once again. On the other hand, 
Dio took a close look at Odin one last time and followed Thor out of the throne room. He was not sure whether Odin that they met this time was the real Odin, or it already was Loki who has transformed himself into Odin. Nonetheless, if something has changed one week from now, Dio would know that Loki has taken Odin's place. One week passed, and now, the time has come for Odin's grand ceremony that would celebrate Asgard's victory over the Dark Elves. The last time this grand festivity was held was when Odin had announced that Thor would become the next king of Asgard a few years ago, that was all before Thor's exile. This time Odin was sure that Thor had all the qualities that he needed to become a king, he has already paved a path that would make it so Thor would become the greatest king that Asgard had, and so, Odin has planned for this grand ceremony to demonstrate Asgard's power to the Nine Realms and raise Thor's prestige to the next level. With the achievement of defeating the Dark Elves and saving the Nine Realm from Maelkitha's abominable plan, there was truly nothing that could stop Thor from receiving the prestige that Odin wanted him to have. After all, this was also how Bor, Odin's father, gave Odin the prestige that he had now. He paved Odin's prestige from winning wars against many enemies. There was nothing that could increase one's prestige as effective as winning a war would. The ceremony went very smoothly, Odin was able to list off Thor's achievement in pride, and all the people of Asgard has cheered for Thor in delight. This was all according to Odin's plan. He would like the people of Asgard to see that Thor could become the next king of Asgard. But Thor's personality this time was slightly different than what Dio had known in the movie. Instead of feeling happy from the cheers that everyone had given to him, Thor was still humble and said that none of it would have happened if he didn't receive any help from everyone that equally do their task efficiently. Dio thought that Thor's popularity would have suffered from this act of humility, but no. Thor's prestige had risen through the roof. Clearly, everyone held respect to a humble leader more than a selfish and arrogant leader. If Thor succeeded the throne now, Dio knew that his name would bring another thousand years of peace. Next, I want to announce another person that equally shares the same honor that Thor has during the Dark Elves' invasion. He had saved my wife from death like a piece of miracle, and he also played a big part in vanquishing the Dark Elves in Svartalheim. Odin said charismatically. It's your turn. Just do what I did earlier. Thor said as he gave Dio a back slap. Dio then realized that he had to deliver a speech, not a foolish speech that Thor had just done, but something that wouldn't draw too much attention to himself. He showed up onto the stage while slightly nodded his head to the people of Asgard that expectantly waited for him. Now, I introduce you to Dio Brando, a brave man from Midgard. He is Thor's best friend and Asgard's eternal friend. He holds the power of sun and life itself, a living miracle. Odin said as he introduced Dio to the rest of Asgard's citizens. Listening to Odin's introduction made Dio a little bit embarrassed as his previous plan to not draw any unnecessary attention had failed before it even began. He just had to suck it now as he couldn't possibly take back all of Odin's words. The highest honor that Asgard gave to a war hero would be a golden sword and a silver badge of an unknown metal that looked very beautiful, but for Dio, these items didn't have any value. It was better to give him a buck load of gold than the sword and shield. Dio had heard that the badge was called the Guardian of Light, and those who held the item could pass through the Gate of the Nine Realms unimpeded. But that was the thing, Dio didn't need to go to other realms beside Earth, so he didn't have any use for this badge. Although Thor was happy that Dio would become the first Nanus Guardian that would receive the badge, Dio didn't share the same feeling. Dio knew that Asgard would soon be destroyed by Thor's sister, Hela, anyway. Hela was a very strong character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She could destroy Mjolnir with just her grip power, while Thanos had a hard time against it later. In the end, Thor was the one who made the decision that Ragnarok should be initiated and thus dooming Asgard with Hela in it. In fact, Dio himself wouldn't be confident fighting against Hela now as the strongest move that he had was only, the world, which had a time-limited ability, the hand, which had close range and slow movement. This grand ceremony didn't take too long, as all the rewards were given, it has come to the party event that Odin has catered to hold the festivities of the day. Even though Dio still hasn't got the real reward that he wanted yet, he knew that Odin would give it to him privately. After all, it wouldn't be good for a king to make an exception, even to an outsider. At the very end, Dio knew that Odin didn't lie to him as he had sent a chunk of URU metal to Dio's quarter, and the person who would also become Dio's guide to where the Pegasus would be. But, because of this, Dio didn't know whether this Odin was a real one or a fake that Loki has created. 
The plot has been messed up so bad that Dio couldn't tell what will happen next. However, with this reward that he privately asked from Odin before Thor released Loki, Dio had a slight inclination that this Odin was still the real Odin. But as Thor knew that Dio would be brought to the Pegasus's place, he declared that he also wanted to go, but sadly, he was quickly turned down by Odin as he didn't deem it was necessary for Thor to know where the Pegasus was taken care of. But as soon as Dio followed the man who raised the Pegasus through a teleportation hole, Dio immediately realized that the Pegasus wasn't kept in Asgard at all. The teleportation portal was connected to an entirely different planet, and the number of Pegasus inside this planar wasn't much either. After the death of many Pegasus when the Valkyrie battled against Hela, only three Pegasus survived. Dio didn't need to catch a wild Pegasus as only three Pegasus left. Although His Royal Highness has allowed you to take one Pegasus away, if you can't get the approval of the Pegasus, I will not allow you to force them to come with you. The Keeper said solemnly. Dio was a little bit surprised to see that this Keeper was so attached to the Pegasus here, and so with a calm demeanor, Dio asked for the man's name. I honestly don't remember my own name anymore. I've been here for as long as I can remember. Those Pegasus likes to eat green dates, so calling me green dates will do. The keeper said solemnly. Listening to the man's word, Dio nodded his head as his way of saying that he understood and walked towards the stable where the man kept all the Pegasus. Dio finally noticed three horses with pure white hair. They looked so beautiful as they grazed and ran along the open field. On their side, their wings were folded as they didn't need to use it on the ground, but sometimes, Dio could see them stretching their wings and showing him the majestic scene as they spread their wings. Dio didn't feel the need to take out the, stand arrow, so quickly. He decided to approach the Pegasus slowly as the first thing he wanted to do was make contact with all of them. As Dio was fascinated by the Pegasus in front of him, he failed to see the jealous look on the Keeper's face. When Dio was close enough with the Pegasus, they all turned their heads to look at Dio at the same time. The Keeper looked at Dio with a smirk on his face as he knew that this was the telltale that the Pegasus would attack. Dio put another step forward, and the closest Pegasus to Dio immediately raised its two front legs, ready to stomp Dio away. The scene was incredible that Dio was completely fascinated by its moves. Dio didn't understand that this move was a warning sign, and so he still moved forward one more time, but the next thing happened was Dio being slammed and bounced back as the Pegasus neighed in anger. The Pegasus action was very shocking. It seemed that wherever it was, the animal instinct was still the same. The instinct to survive was predominant. Obviously, the Pegasus was a prideful animal, so its strongest instinct was to fight. Dio was kicked and sent back flying. Thankfully, Dio always coated his body with his Hammond energy, so he barely took any damage. It was so unfortunate this majestic creature must face extinction like this just because Odin was jealous and feared Hela's power. Odin imprisoned her on the underworld, and the price from doing so was the annihilation of the Valkyrie army along with the Pegasus. The Keeper kept his poker face as to refrain from being rude and offend Dio. Originally, he was supposed to help Dio draw the Pegasus' attention and help him earn their recognition, but his own feeling conflicted with that. He didn't want to give up the Pegasus as he has already watched over them ever since they were born. He even abandoned his life in Asgard just to take care of these Pegasus. Because of that, even if that was the order from Odin himself, he couldn't bring himself let them go so easily. He knew that Pegasus was picky when it came to allowing someone rode their back. If they didn't like it, they would throw a temper tantrum that would hurt those who rode them and themselves. As he thought that Dio, who was just kicked by the Pegasus, would give up, he was surprised to see that Dio smirked and once again tried to get close to the Pegasus. Dio couldn't hide his excitement as he knew that it was his own fault that he got kicked. He ignored the Pegasus warning and kept getting closer. The Keeper turned back to his poker face and shook his head in disbelief. He realized Dio was too determined to get one of the Pegasus for himself. Now, he didn't know what to do, he could leave this man alone, but he was sure that Odin would eventually come if the man was too stubborn. But eventually, Dio knew that the man had said that the Pegasus loved green dates so much, and so he asked the Keeper on where he could get green dates. They are in the forest around two kilometers west of here. The Pegasus love the green dates, but that place is also a territory of the Ironback baboons. The baboons are very aggressive, so best of luck to you, the Keeper said indifferently. 
Dio smiled at the man and took two empty barrels beside him, and walked westward. The keeper sighed as he didn't want to show Dio the green date's location at first, but he knew that he couldn't completely ignore his king's request. He still must help Dio, but just in the smallest way possible. His goal was to make the Pegasus throw Dio off, but if the Pegasus gave him their recognition, he wouldn't stop it either. It was the same feeling as letting his own daughter marry some man that he barely knew. Dio was walking quite fast, and it didn't take long before he arrived at the forest where the keeper said that he would find the green dates. But Dio was surprised as he didn't see any dates, but instead, it was more like a big green apple or green peach than a green date. Dio, who didn't know whether he was wrong or not, sighed and immediately got ready to get the supposed green dates from the tree. Dio climbed the tree and began to pick the fruit and fill up the barrel that he brought earlier. During the process of filling up the barrel, he couldn't help himself to taste the green dates as he was curious about its taste. Wow, damn. This fruit is sweet. Dio said as he was surprised by how sweet the green dates were. They were full of juice, and besides its sweetness, it also had a strong fragrance that smelt like floral perfume. This fruit was no question, a super fruit. No wonder the Pegasus loved them so much. But while Dio was happily filling up his barrel, a sudden strange roar was heard from inside the forest, and suddenly, a group of big baboons surrounded him. One of those baboons was at least two meters tall, and the baboon had gray hair in front while iron black colored hair grew on its back. What the hell, just let me have this fruit. I will get off your land once I am done. Dio said annoyedly. But another giant baboon that was at least three meters tall came and took Dio's word as a challenge. He roared and rushed towards Dio with the intention to kill. Dio sighed as he realized that nothing was easy. But as he knew that the animal wasn't at fault here, he must hold back to refrain from killing any baboon. Dio wanted to know how strong this iron back baboon really was, so he covered himself in Hammond energy and let the baboon attack him. But Dio was immediately surprised as the baboon's attack was fierce enough to make him back away. Not only the baboon was strong enough to chop a tree with their fawn, but their attack was coordinated by their leader. This is a sign of intellectual being. Even if the baboons weren't as smart as humans, it has already shown a sign of learning and flexible thinking. After learning the baboon's power, Dio immediately unleashed his own counterattack. He punched and kicked every single one of them until they couldn't fight anymore, but he didn't kill any of them as he already made himself clear that those animals were just defending their turf. After realizing that they didn't have a chance to win, the baboon leader roared frustratedly and charged towards Dio. It didn't know that Dio has been keeping an eye towards him from the beginning, Dio knew that in order to dominate the baboon, he just had to beat the leader. The iron-back baboon leader opened its mouth widely to bite off Dio's head, but Dio let it do what he wanted as he just enforced the Hammond energy that he used for defenses. The next thing that happened was a shattering sound came from the leader's mouth as its teeth broke. Dio then grabbed its head and threw it right to the big tree in the forest, destroying several trees in the process. Seeing that their leader was beaten up, the rest of the baboon immediately stood up and ran back to hide in the forest. Dio didn't chase after them as he doesn't find any needs to do that, he immediately returned to his task of collecting the fruits back into the basket to bring it back to the Pegasus. Dio then left after filling up two baskets full of fruit. The iron-back baboon leader that played dead the entire time immediately stood up as it noticed that Dio had left, and he was safe, but it immediately felt anger welling up as it noticed that the rest of its pack had already run away by themselves, leaving the leader behind. When Dio returned with two baskets full of green dates, the keeper's face changed a bit. It was clear that he was surprised that Dio successfully managed to get the green dates himself, but he still had to remain calm. I brought back the green dates from the forest. Now, how can I feed them? Dio asked the keeper, sincerely. Dio could always try to use his golden pet card, but there would be no thrill in that. He had to do this the normal way, not the easy way. The keeper nodded his head in acknowledgement, but he still showed a cold attitude towards Dio. Throw several fruits on the ground near their feet, they would know that it was a gift from you, and if you stand close to me, they will know that you mean no harm and that's it. What you will do after is truly up to your own desire. The keeper said coldly. Dio knew that the keeper's way of talking sounded a bit arrogant and cold, but he didn't mind as he knew that it must be hard to go separate ways with such a majestic creature. 
So, Dio immediately did what the keeper said and threw several green dates near the Pegasus and stood beside the keeper expectantly. In the beginning, the Pegasus ignored the green dates, but after they looked at the keeper who also ate the green dates that Dio brought back, they began to eat the green dates, although very slowly. Seeing that the atmosphere was eased somehow, Dio approached the Pegasus once more with the green dates in his hands. This was his way of showing that he wanted to get close to the Pegasus. Dio made significant progress as he was finally able to close the distance to one meter without the Pegasus making any disapproval look. But he still couldn't go any further as the Pegasus immediately walked away when he got to the one meter mark. Dio wanted to ask the keeper again for some tips, but after Dio saw the cold look at the keeper's face, he chose not to. But he didn't want to give up just yet. Dio pulled out his stand arrow and tried to see if any of these Pegasus had any potential to be a stand user, and sure enough, as he pulled the arrow out, it reacted to one Pegasus that kicked him the first time. The strongest and the most majestic looking one. There was no doubt that this Pegasus was the leader of the Pegasus pack, and then he immediately thought of using the standard pet card that he also got from his draws earlier. The keeper watched Dio from the fences with his cold eyes. He thought that one meter was the best Dio could do now. Unless he helped Dio get close to the Pegasus, Dio would never succeed. Or so he thought. Dio immediately pulled out his standard pet card because he wasn't sure whether the gold one would succeed. However, as soon as he uses the standard pet card, a blue light shone from the Pegasus, and as quick as it came, the blue light dispersed immediately. This was the sign that the card failed. Dio looked at the keeper and noticed that this blue light doesn't bother him, meaning that the keeper couldn't see the blue light at all. So, without hesitation, Dio pulled out the golden pet card. Dio immediately used the card, and a bright golden light shone on the Pegasus. Dio bit his lips in anticipation as he knew that even though this golden pet card was the highest pet card with a great success rate, it still had a chance of failure. Instead of dispersing, this time, the bright golden light dimmed slowly, but his phone hasn't confirmed whether he succeeded or not yet. But Dio knew that he wasn't successful as he couldn't establish the mental link with the Pegasus. Dio smacked his face in frustration as he never thought that taming a Pegasus would be this hard. But as he was ready to give up, he noticed that the Pegasus shows a different attitude than before. It clearly showed interest to Dio now, while it wouldn't even bother to look at Dio's face earlier. Dio was utterly surprised as the Pegasus suddenly walked towards him and bunted its head on Dio's chest and eat the green dates on Dio's hands. Dio was happy with this progress, and he immediately tried to reach out to the Pegasus' head to give it a petting, but the Pegasus immediately looked at Dio's stretched arm. Dio immediately stopped as he didn't want to surprise it, but sighed happily after seeing that the Pegasus didn't seem to mind. Dio was overjoyed to see that he was finally able to pet the Pegasus. However, Dio wasn't the only one who was surprised by this sudden change of behavior. The other two Pegasus and the Keeper were equally surprised. The two Pegasus started to neigh at their leader, who was currently comfortably eating the green dates inside the bucket near Dio, but the leader didn't seem to care. The Keeper showed some jealousy as he knew that Dio was halfway done. Now, all that Dio left to do was to establish a connection with the Pegasus and rode on its back. Once it was done, the Pegasus would become Dio's partner for life. But the Keeper didn't understand the reason behind the sudden change in the Pegasus attitude. It took him a long time even for him to get close to the Pegasus. He spent a long time even just to touch its hair. On the other side, Dio, who was still playing with the Pegasus, didn't understand why the Pegasus changed its attitude so suddenly either. The truth was, the standard pet card that Dio used the first time stimulated the Pegasus, so it didn't see Dio as a stranger, while the gold pet card urged the Pegasus to get close to Dio on its own. That was why it showed this kind of closeness to Dio in such a short amount of time. Without knowing why Dio, then pulled the last standard pet card that he had and used it once more to the Pegasus. Once more, the Pegasus was covered in blue light, and instead of dispersing or dimming, this blue light gradually turned white. A success. Dio was surprised that he finally got the Pegasus as a pet. The Pegasus immediately acted like a baby and nuzzled close to Dio. Dio immediately laughed and petted its head playfully. The Pegasus then nudged Dio to ride it, which Dio delightfully did. Once Dio got on its back, it spread its wing widely and started to run and glided. The Pegasus quickly soared into the sky majestically. 
Dio was happy that he finally experienced something so amazing like this, they circled around the sky, and the Pegasus even showed off its amazing speed to Dio as it flew at high speed through the clouds. The other two Pegasus was bewildered, and the keeper was shocked beyond belief. The two Pegasus immediately flew on their own to follow their leader, while the keeper, who was still shocked, was left alone on the fences. Although he has already taken care of the Pegasus in a long time, he never could ride on its back and fly like that. He was hurt, no doubt. It was a blow to the keeper's pride. The keeper sighed in defeat and walked back into his wooden house with his lonesome self. At the same time, Dio, who still didn't know the keeper's feeling, was still enjoying himself flying with the three Pegasus up in the sky. When Dio had enough playing with the Pegasus, he came back and saw that the keeper still maintained his poker face as always. This should do, right? Dio asked the keeper. The keeper immediately nodded as he knew that there was nothing he could do about it anymore. As we agreed before, you can take him away. The keeper said indifferently. Thank you. I will take good care of it. I will come here again if I have the time to let them play again. Did this Pegasus have a name? Dio asked curiously. The keeper was surprised that Dio was asking for the Pegasus name while usually, everyone was content on calling it Pegasus. No, I am afraid not. I am only the caretaker of these Pegasus, I am not qualified to name them. The keeper said as he smiled slightly at Dio. Dio was silent for a minute as he was thinking of the perfect name for the Pegasus. He thought of the endless journey that he would have with the Pegasus under the light of the thousand stars. Dio suddenly thought of the name related to star and found that Galaxy was the most appropriate one. I will name it Galaxy as I want to explore the entire galaxy with it. Dio said confidently. Very good name. I know now why it chooses you so quickly, the keeper said with a smile as he petted the Pegasus for the last time before Dio brought him along. Galaxy seemed to be happy to receive this name and neighed excitedly. Dio was embarrassed when he heard the keeper's praises as the truth was he cheated to draw the Pegasus' attention. If it were not for the pet card, the Pegasus would never come to him like this. But before leaving, Dio immediately returned to the forest earlier to take some more green dates for Galaxy to eat later. Dio then tried to put the fruit inside the card and immediately noticed that one card could contain roughly 20 fruits. He quickly filled one deck of cards full of fruit so that Galaxy wouldn't miss it later. If he ran out of green dates, he just had to find another source of food for Galaxy as he knew that the cosmos was a vast place and so there should be something that the Pegasus would like to eat eventually. Inside the Asgardian Palace, Dio rode the Pegasus in pride. Now, all they knew was that the Valkyrie was decimated and with them went the Pegasus, and so, Pegasus become a legend. But today, everyone could see clearly that the outsider was riding on one. Fortunately, this outsider was the one that Odin had awarded the Light of Guardian badge earlier. Otherwise, Dio would have been targeted by the jealous public. When Thor received the news that Dio was back, he quickly brought Jane and Crystal to show them the Pegasus. Pegasus was a symbol of strength, and so, Thor was excited to see that Dio had tamed one for himself. For Asgardian, the Pegasus was a sacred animal. I never expected to see that the Pegasus took you as its master. Thor said excitedly. What can I say, my manliness and my handsomeness won it over. Dio said as he smirked to Thor and petted the Pegasus head. Everyone was shocked as they saw a majestic Pegasus in the outsider's hand as this was the first time they ever saw a Pegasus since the Valkyries were all gone. They wanted to touch it too, but refrained from doing so as the Pegasus glared on anyone coming close. Dio was in a good mood the entire afternoon. It was cool to have the Pegasus by his side. He sauntered the Pegasus to every corner of the palace like he was bragging to everyone that he had a Pegasus with him. Dio was also excited in the prospect that he could ride the Pegasus anywhere he wanted in the future, while others could only watch from down below jealously. Crystal, come here. Let me take you into the sky. Dio waved toward Crystal to come closer. Crystal's eyes lit up in excitement, but she was still unsure of coming close to the Pegasus. Don't worry. Galaxy is docile. Besides, I am here with you. Dio said encouragingly. Crystal nodded and walked closer to Dio. The Pegasus then sniffed Crystal as it knew that Dio was telling Crystal to come close. In the end, Galaxy approved and licked Crystal's face casually. 
Crystal was surprised and excitedly climbed to the Pegasus back with Dio's help, and suddenly as Dio and Crystal were sitting securely on its back, the Pegasus sped off and flew to the sky. It looked even more majestic in the sky when its wings were fully spread. In Svartalheim, Galaxy quickly flew off to pursue the running Dark Elves. They were panicking as they saw that Dio was chasing after them. They know that Dio was the man who killed Melkith before, so they knew that they would not be able to fight Dio even if they wanted to. Dio himself showed no mercy. He swept the Reaper's gaze, while flying with Galaxy, killing any Dark Elves who were unfortunate enough to catch Dio's attention. Seeing that they couldn't escape the Pegasus, the Dark Elves finally curled up on the ground, waiting for their demise. But as Dio saw that the Dark Elves had given up, he signaled for Galaxy to come down. Now, take me to your base or die here. Dio said coldly. No. Just kill us already. We will not betray our race. The Dark Elves said confidently, although Dio could saw the fear beneath their eyes. They thought that Asgard would kill all of them again as they have done in the previous war. They'd rather die there so their race could survive. If they didn't say anything, Asgard would never find their base location as it was hidden behind the stealth technology that even Heimdall couldn't see through. Dio sighed and killed the Dark Elves in one fell swoop. At the same time, Thor arrived from above. He saw the gore scene that happened in front of him and didn't say a word about it. He didn't have any pity for these Dark Elves, who almost took his mother's life. Thor was coming to Dio's side this time to see if Dio wanted any help on dealing with the Dark Elves. Now, did you find what you're searching for? Thor asked curiously. He knew that Dio didn't come there under Odin's order as Odin didn't seem to care what would happen to the Dark Elves. Yeah, but it sure took some effort. They don't want to talk to me even after I threaten them with death. Dio said as he sighed tiredly. In the desolate area of the Svartalheim, the last surviving Dark Elves battleship was hidden here. The ship had 100 Dark Elves on board, as this amount was all they needed to continue surviving. The Dark Elves had a long lifespan, but they couldn't reproduce in a normal way. They were a creature born out of darkness, and thus must meet several conditions for it to happen. Melkith has exhausted thousands of years just to prepare a thousand soldiers. But as the plan to get the Aether from Asgard failed, many of that long cultivated number of Dark Elves died. But unfortunately for them, a thunderstrike appeared right in the front of the battleship. In the name of Thor, son of Odin. I order you to lay down your weapon. Your safety would be guaranteed, and those who resist shall be killed on the spot. Thor said as he came down to the ship. The Dark Elves seemed panicked as they didn't know whether to believe in Thor's word or believe in their ancestor's word that said they should never trust an Asgardian. At the same time, Dio appeared with his Pegasus. I am Dio Brando. A freelancer for the Nine Realms. I am a Midgardian, and I have reached an agreement with Odin that you all will be under my protection if you are willing to follow me. I will provide shelter for you. Dio said as he came down to the ground. The Dark Elves immediately fell into commotion as they became more nervous after what Dio had said. They couldn't believe that someone would do that for them. Dio then gave Thor a look as a signal that it was Thor's time to act. The King of Gods sent me to hear your answer. This Midgardian had performed well and persuaded the King for sparing you. But I really hope that you will reject this offer. Thor said as he slammed Mjolnir to the ground, creating a spark that drew everyone's attention. I am the temporary leader of the Dark Elves. My name is Mapedoth. We don't want to be the enemy of Asgard anymore. In fact, we've already persuaded Melkith to cease his action, but he killed several of us and proceeded with his own plan. Son of Odin, please spare us, we are willing to swear in the name of God of Darkness that we will never do harm to Asgard or the Nine Realms ever again. Mapedoth said sincerely. Dio was speechless, and so he looked at Thor and let him decide. At least, now they knew that not all Dark Elves yearned for war against Asgard. But since he and Thor started it with a good cop bad cop situation, he had to continue to do so to receive the utmost loyalty from the Dark Elves. Do you want my mercy? You are clearly making a mistake attacking Asgard this time. I will never allow for this kind of action to repeat itself again. Thor said as he pointed Mjolnir to the sky and started calling down the thunder. At this critical moment, when all the Dark Elves were left looking horrified of their life, Dio came to save the day by stopping Thor. Thor! 
Odin has left the decision of what to do to these dark elves in my hand. I can't tolerate your whimsical act like this. You better leave now. Dio said as he held Thor's shoulder. At the same time, the two of them looked at each other while trying to hold their composure. They know that their acting was so bad that it was hilarious. After playing along with such an embarrassing act, Thor, who was acting as the villain, left as he kept cursing, but Dio, who stayed on the ground, continued acting like he was the messiah. You see, I can protect you from the wrath of Asgard. If you promise to follow me, I will make sure that you will eventually get a place that you can finally call home without anyone bugging you. Dio said confidently. What do you need us to do? Mapedoff asked curiously. No, no, no. You are clearly taking it wrong. It's not that what I need from you, it's more like what can you give to me. Dio said with a smirk. We are not a fighter, but we can give you all of our research so far, Mapedoff said sincerely. Dio knew that this wasn't really the truth as the Dark Elves were born as a skilled fighter, but it seemed Mapedoff was determined never to fight again. But nonetheless, all that Dio was needed from these Dark Elves was their scientific breakthrough. Dio didn't need the Dark Elves to fight for him as he could do it himself. Okay, if that is the case, then I promise that you won't have to fight again, and for that, you will have to serve me for 100 years. Within that time, I will provide you asylum, and after that time, you will be free to choose whatever you want to do. Dio said confidently. This was all a promise that could guarantee the Dark Elves' allegiance to him as Dio knew that the Dark Elves could just revolt if they were too constrained. After all, 100 years was a long time for a human, but a very short time on a longer lifespan creature like Dark Elves. As soon as Dio stopped speaking, the Dark Elves immediately argued Dio's word excitedly. They knew that 100 years was all it took to rebuild themselves a new home, and they also needed protection as the Dark Elves was one of several races that were being hunted for their unique feature and rarity. Your promise is tempting, but we don't know for sure that you will follow through with this promise after a hundred years. Mapedoff said to Dio as the argument with his fellow Dark Elves were done. I know that I can't give you any reassurance, but you don't have any choice, do you? Dio said casually. That was the truth. It was either annihilation from the Asgard or trusting Dio's word. So, after taking a deep breath, Mapedoff raised his hands and knelt on his knees in surrender. We, Dark Elves, agreed to follow you for a hundred years that you have promised. Mapedoff said solemnly. The rest of the Dark Elves followed Mapedoff's example and disarmed themselves of any weapon that they had. Dio was very happy that he finally had a group of talented scientists on his hands. He also gave the deputy position to Mapedoff so that he could still lead his Dark Elves brethren to make it easier for Dio. This was also Dio's way of saying that he wouldn't control the Dark Elves too much. Now, the first thing that I need you guys to do is to repair this warship as soon as you can. After that, we will leave this place. Dio said commandingly. Yes, Master. Mapedoff said solemnly. No, don't call me Master. Just call me, Sir. Dio said flatly. Of course, sir. Mapedoff said as he immediately ordered the Dark Elves to repair the battleship to take off. After giving the order, Dio then returned to Asgard as he waited for the Dark Elves to finish, and in Asgard, Thor was curious and worried about Dio's plan to leave into the vast galaxy. Are you sure you want to do this? Thor asked worriedly. Of course. I am curious about what I can find in this universe. This is a rare opportunity, and don't lie. You have seen what the Dark Elves are capable of. They could be said more advanced than Asgard. Dio said with a smirk on his face. Okay. Since you have made up your mind, I will not question your decision any longer. After you leave, I will also return to Earth to take Jane back home. Thor said casually. Sure, after all, your father doesn't like the Earthlings that much. But what happened to the Aether? Dio asked curiously. It has been sent to the Collector in nowhere. His name is Tanalir Tyvan. Thor said casually. Dio nodded as he noticed that the plot for the reality gem was still the same as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He knew that Thanos would show up in nowhere and wreak havoc there to retrieve the Infinity Stone from the Collector's grasp. Fortunately, the Collector couldn't be killed by any normal means. He once made a bet with Lady Death and successfully earned immortality as they were banned from death. 
There was a place where the various treasures from the entire universe were stored, an excessive amount of rare plants, rare minerals, or a part of some extinct creatures were all collected on the same spot by Tanalir Tyvan. People often came to him in order to seek something that was almost impossible to find in exchange for something unique that could match the price. On a very strange day, the collector house received two very unusual guests. I introduce you to the one and only, the collector, Tanalir Tyvan, the pink maid said emotionless. The collector bowed a little bit as his way of showing his etiquettes. Mid-guardians, how rare. Tyvan said as he observed Dio and Crystal. Dio wasn't surprised that the collector could immediately guess their race just by one look, but the one thing that completely impressed Dio was his wealth. You should have already known why I am here. Dio said as he pulled out a box and put it on the table in front of Tyvan. Dio wanted to wander around the universe, but Odin tasked him one last time to deliver ether to the collector himself. Odin also knew that Dio had taken all the remaining dark elves under his wings, but still, Odin said nothing. Dio was confused by Odin's behavior, but he knew that Odin would never tell him any of his reasoning. Tyvan nodded and put on a white glove as he wanted to open the box. After he opened it and saw the content, he sighed in satisfied expression. I promise you that I will take proper care of it. Tyvan said as he smiled at Dio. Dio snorted as he heard Tyvan's word as he knew that if Tyvan really kept the reality gem securely, Thanos would never be able to snap half the universe out of existence. But to refrain from being rude, Dio smiled as he knew that the reality gem was no longer under his protection. It was Tyvan's problem now. Since we're done with our business here, we will leave immediately. Dio said casually. Since you've come all the way here, aren't you interested to see my collection first? I believe that you will find something that might strike your interest. Tyvan said alluringly. This was also one of his hobbies. Tyvan liked to brag all his collection to anyone that he deemed worthy of seeing them. But for now, Dio didn't see the need to waste his time seeing something that he doesn't need. Sorry, maybe next time. Dio said casually. Of course, but I also took an interest in your collection of dark elves. If you are interested, I can find you a good by next time. Of course, I am still interested in taking one if you are willing to negotiate the price. Tyvan said politely with his evil smile. Sorry. They aren't property, and I have no interest in selling them. Dio said casually. That is a shame, but if you come across something unusual, you can always come back here again. I will gladly put a price on it. Tyvan said politely again. Sure, but I have a question, did you have Yaka metal on you? Dio asked curiously. Of course. After all, the Ravagers frequently made a trade with me. You can trade it with something that strikes my interest. Tyvan said while smirking evilly. After hearing the Ravager's name, Dio immediately knew that it was Yandu. He was the only Centaurians who wanted to do something like this. What do you want for a change? Dio asked curiously. My maid smelled a pegasus in you. I would gladly take it off your hands in exchange for some Yaka medals and some other item that's worth more than the pegasus itself. Tyvan said with a smirk on his face. I am sorry, but it wasn't tradable. Dio said coldly as Galaxy was mentioned. Well, I know that you would reject it, but business is a business, right? It doesn't hurt to offer. But still, I apologize if I pushed too far. Tyvan said politely. Seeing that Tyvan was apologizing, Dio let it go this time. After all, the collector's word made sense. One would never know if there was no question to answer. Can I at least know the name of the Ravagers who made a trade with you? Dio asked curiously. I am afraid that is impossible. I have a reputation to uphold. Selling my customers' personal information would tarnish my reputation immediately. But I can tell you the origin of the Yaka metal itself. It comes from the planet called Centauri 4 or also known as Beta Centauri. Tyvan said politely. This was not the information that Dio considered valuable. He has already known all this information beforehand. But at least Dio had made himself into the collector's good grace. It surely would be helpful in the future. Thank you very much. Dio said sincerely and immediately left the collector's place. The collector himself took the ether to his safest vault and put it on a special pedestal while mumbling that he still had five more to go. 
But what he didn't know was that when he closed the vault, the shake from the vault cracked the ether's jar, and the dark red liquid of the ether leaked out of its container. The pink maid then walked close to the vault, making her the target for the ether's possession, but this time, the ether left a fake reality inside the vault that showed the ether's container was still stable and untouched. The dark elf's battleship looked like a giant cross. It was not great in terms of appearance, but the technologies inside were among the top in the entire universe. The stealth system alone was already the best in the whole universe. It could fool Heimdall's eyes, which could see through everything. Plus, the implosive grenade that they invented was one of the strongest tools that they had. It could literally erase space itself. It really was a pity that their previous leader was too blind of rage and vengeance to even see the worth of his own race. Dio was determined that he would never make the same mistake again. Dio knew that Odin was testing him by sending him to deliver the ether to the Collector, and because of that, Dio also tested the Dark Elf's loyalty too, he took Crystal and took his time inside the Collector's mansion, but while Dio was there, the Dark Elf still waited for him to return and didn't go off on their own, abandoning Dio and Crystal. Dio knew that this was all because of the mutual trusts between them. He knew that there was no reason for these Dark Elves to go out of their way to escape Dio. To be honest, I am a little bit surprised that you guys didn't run away, Dio said to Mapedoff as he entered the cockpit. I am sorry, sir, but several Dark Elves did have that idea, but I know that we can trust you, so I stayed. Mapedoff said as he bowed his head. Well, I am a little bit disappointed to hear that, although you have pleaded for their protection, I don't want to hear this kind of thing happening again in the future. Understand. Dio said commandingly. Of course, sir. I will execute them myself if they try to revolt against you. I know that we will end up as black market goods if you aren't here with us. We know that you will definitely give us a home to stay at the end of our 100-year agreement. Mapedoff said confidently. Dio nodded his head in content as he was satisfied by the loyalty that Mapedoff had shown. The Dark Elf still had the hierarchy system to hold, so if Mapedoff, who held the highest authority among the Dark Elves, said something, everyone must follow. I trust you on this. I hope you can live up to your promise. I can protect you from anything, and it may not take 100 years for me to find you a place that you could call home. If we come across a planet that you like later, we will make sure you can use it as your home planet. Dio said sincerely. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Mapedoff said excitedly. He now knew that Dio was a man who appreciated loyalty, so he was determined. To serve Dio for 100 years that they have agreed upon. Sir, so where is our next destination would be? Mapedoff asked curiously. Centauri 4. Dio said without any hesitation. Mapedoff nodded his head and immediately entered the coordinate for Centauri 4 without any question. Dio was very satisfied by the Dark Elf's performance as he saw that they were efficient. They were not a cruel race like Asgard described them to be. In fact, they were very polite and knowledgeable. It was all because they became the enemy of Asgard for some unknown reason that their reputation was tarnished, and their real personality was hidden through Asgardian's history book. In Dio's eyes, this Dark Elves had the same personality as Otaku on Earth. They have never left Svalterheim in their whole life, and they weren't built for combat as they have focused themselves on advancing their technologies. And so, Dio shook his head as he no longer wanted to delve into Asgard's dark past and chose to bond with Galaxy. At the same time, not too far from the nowhere, two Asgardian battleships were floating in space. Sif received Dio's report, so she no longer needed to stay there. Mission completed. Return home immediately. Sif said to the pilot, and they quickly left towards Asgard, leaving Dio to do whatever he wanted. Mapedoff was a little bit surprised to see the two Asgardian battleships not too far from their location. He immediately knew that if they had run away earlier, these Asgardian battleships would have shot them down. The stealth coating that they had on this battleship was no longer efficient against Asgardian as earlier, Dio had told Frigga all about the stealth device that the Dark Elves used, and because of that, Asgard should have already figured out the weakness of the stealth technologies that they had. In a bar that was situated on an inconspicuous planet, a guy in a leather jacket opened the door and looked around with his eye lenses that looked like the power detector in Dragon Ball. Soon, the man's attention was focused on a humanoid green-skinned man with eight tentacles instead of hands. 
Wanted criminal confirmed. Name, Alexei and Warner Brothers are offering 15. Star coins if he was brought alive, have if he was brought dead, the man read from the information that his eye lenses captured. The man immediately flipped a card, and suddenly a dark red scythe appeared out of nowhere. Everyone inside the bar was startled and immediately felt scared as the man that was none other than Dio himself was looking very menacing. Small man, do you know whose place is this? Do you really want that trouble, a blue-skinned giant man said from behind the bar. He was the bartender of this place, and he was looking very relaxed as he was used to dealing with so many drunkards. You better not disturb my business. I am here to capture a man with a bounty. Dio said coldly. At least do it outside. The bartender said annoyedly. He knew that bounty hunter would stop at nothing whenever they went after their target, so the most logical way was to let the bounty hunter get his bounty. However, Dio was not listening to the bartender. He immediately jumped and used the scythe as a pull and drop kicked the bartender unconscious. The tentacle guy over there, can you come with me? Dio said coldly. Knowing that his identity was revealed, Alexei immediately flipped the table and tried to escape into the back room. But Dio has already checked the bar before entering. He knew that there was no back door there. Knowing that he couldn't escape, Alexei immediately pulled out a gun and shot out an ultrasound wave that made those who were hit went berserk. The people inside the bar, who was affected by the ultrasound from Alexei's gun, immediately got into a brawl with each other. Taking advantage of the chaos, Alexei immediately rushed outside. He immediately tried to check the position of the bounty hunter who was chasing after him, but he lost track of him. He could no longer see the bounty hunter anywhere. Hey, tentacle guy, are you looking for me? Dio said from behind Alexei. Alexei was surprised and immediately bent his tentacle to shoot at his back without having to rotate his body. However, as soon as he did so, his tentacle was cut off from his body. You've already wasted my time. Now, if you want to keep your limb, I suggest you come with me obediently." Dio said coldly, making Alexei shook in fear. Dio then immediately threw a small metal ball that immediately expanded and swallowed Alexei whole and then instantly resized back to a small ball. This capture ball was very efficient to capture anyone who tried to run away from him. Okay, I am done for now. Dio said as he tapped his wristband a couple of times, and suddenly, a huge battleship appeared out of nowhere. Dio then got inside the battleship, placed the capture ball inside a safe place, and immediately sat down on the sofa. He has been exploring the space for about four months of Earth time. Originally, he wanted to go to Centauri 4 to find a Yaka medal immediately, but he quickly realized that he couldn't do it. There was not enough gas inside the battleship to complete his journey there, and as soon as he wanted to fill up the tank again, another trouble got in his way. Earth money didn't worth anything in space. So, after knowing that he didn't have money, Dio then searched for a job that would give him easy money. He sold a batch of implosion grenade to a small-time collector to fill his gas tank to reach a planet that might have a potential job. He bought some necessary supplies, too, like water and food, including the universal translator that allowed him to talk to any creature in the universe as long as their race's data was recorded inside the small neckband. Not too long after, Dio learned that becoming a bounty hunter was the easiest and the fastest way to earn the money he needed to reach Centauri for. Despite all the troubles, Dio was having fun. He adapted relatively fast, and the bounty hunting was thrilling as he didn't know what he might see in this vast universe. After returning to the battleship, Dio left the metal ball in the Dark Elf Guard's care as he wanted to take a shower and refresh in himself. Where is Crystal? Dio asked Mapedoff casually. Young Lady Crystal is still resting on her room, sir. Mapedoff said respectfully. Dio frowned a little bit as he noticed that Crystal was taking a nap almost all the time after they took off into space. Dio had asked the Dark Elf Doctor to run a diagnostic on her health, and they found nothing abnormal about her state. He guessed that it must be something related to her power. Dio firstly thought that maybe Dark Crystal was trying to take control again, but he didn't see anything out of ordinary happening around him. So, with a sigh, Dio set Crystal's problem aside for now. Okay, so where do we have to deliver the bounty now? Dio asked Mapedoff. One is at Kanda Star, the other one is at Jewel Star, and the last one is at Xander. Mapedoff said solemnly. Do we have enough fuel for the trip? Dio asked curiously. 
Of course, sir. It is enough to reach Xander, but we have to refuel once we're there. We can finally order a saddle for Galaxy in Xander, too. I believe we finally have enough money to order one. Mapedoff said solemnly. Dio nodded and told Mapedoff to go as they didn't have anything else to discuss. Half a month later, the Dark Battleship hovered above Xander as they couldn't enter Xander with Crystal's strange illness and the Dark Elf's rough appearance. So, Dio rode Galaxy and entered Xander on his own. After landing smoothly at custom, Dio paid a small fee to enter Xander. As the capital for the new Nova Empire, Xander was very popular among so many immigrants of countless races as the Nova Empire was deemed to be fair and never discriminated against any races. As he entered the capital city, Dio noticed that this city was unlike any city on earth. It was so much cleaner with tall magnificent buildings and large trees with so many flying transportations around. This city was beautiful, and the air was still fresh. Dio had seen so many cities on so many planets, but none of them could be compared to this city. Dio quickly snapped back from his thought as he remembered that he had to deliver his bounty first. He finally found the place in the merchant quarter. Otto Gable. Dio said as he knocked on the door. After a while, an old man opened the door and signaled for Dio to come in. Inside, Dio put the metal ball on the table and suggested the old man check it first. I have captured Alexi for you. Dio said as he smirked casually. The old man immediately checked the content as the metal ball could become transparent to see the content, and as soon as he saw that the person inside was indeed Alexi, the old man smirked and nodded his head to Dio. I am impressed. This man was hard to get by. You are the fourth bounty hunter who has tried, but clearly, you are the only successful one. The old man said casually. So, how do you want your money? I can do cash, or I can transfer it to your account. The old man asked Dio casually. Transfer it to this account. Dio said as he gave the old man a piece of paper that had his account number written on it. A sudden pinging sound was heard after the old man returned from his computer. Dio immediately checked his phone and noticed that it was a transfer notification. The old man has transferred him 15. Stars. Being a bounty hunter wasn't a good job as it wouldn't always pay, the marked target could be already dead, or other bounty hunters might have captured the target first. But for Dio, he knew that this was the best way for him to get money without making too much name for himself. Old man, this is my first time in Xander. Can you introduce me to a place that I can buy stuff? Dio asked politely. Go to the broker. If there's something that you want, I believe he should be able to get it for you. The old man said casually. Well, thank you, old man. Pleasure doing business with you. Dio said politely as he left the old man's place. Dio then rode Galaxy to the broker that the old man mentioned. He had saved around 50 stars, including the transaction earlier, so he had to spend it wisely. Dio finally arrived at the place that the old man mentioned, but Dio frowned as he thought that his day was going to be a bad one as he saw that the broker's place was already closed. But fortunately, the door was suddenly opened as someone left. Dio quickly entered the broker's place as he knew that it might be closed again. Once inside, Dio could see that the place wasn't big but tidy and neat. In the innermost part, Dio saw a long table with a lizard man standing behind it. You are the broker. I am here as Otto Gable said that there is nothing that you can't get. Dio said solemnly. Well, maybe. I don't know what you want just yet. It might be something that I can't get. But sure. Because you are here because of a friend's recommendation, I will give you 10% off for your first order. The lizard men said casually. But Galaxy suddenly showed herself in front of the lizard men as she followed Dio inside, but the lizard man was shocked to see a legendary Pegasus on his establishment. Wait. Is that horse a Pegasus? The lizard man asked in awe. Dio was displeased that the lizard men showed an extra interest in Galaxy, but as he wanted to make a saddle and body armor for Galaxy, Dio knew that he couldn't hide its identity either way. Yes, she was the reason I have come here in the first place. I need body armor and a saddle for her. Dio said confidently. The Dark Elves didn't have any ability to create such a complicated battle armor as they were more about researches than crafts. But with Nova Empire's tech, Dio knew that it should be easy for the broker to obtain the body armor that Dio wanted. 
Are you planning to ride the Pegasus to explore the universe? Although it was an enviable idea, I can't help but think that it's a little bit presumptuous. But, if you want to sell her to me, I can give you a price that would be difficult to refuse. I can guarantee you that I would bid the highest for this Pegasus in the entire Nova Empire, the broker said excitedly. Sorry, Galaxy isn't for sale. Dio said as he remained indifferent to the broker despite the broker looking all excited. Seeing Dio didn't show any change in his expression, the broker felt a little bit of regret that he acted all high and mighty earlier. He couldn't force Dio to sell the Pegasus to him, although he was a bad guy, he still had some rules to follow. Now, after I observe your Pegasus, I've already made a rough sketch about her equipment, and I roughly estimate that you at least need 80. Stars coin for it. The broker said as he handed Dio his rough sketch. Damn, is it really that expensive? Dio asked curiously. Dio only had around 50. Stars coin on his account. Furthermore, Dio was a little bit suspicious of the broker as he knew that 100. Stars coin could buy a small spaceship with two cabins. The broker caught Dio's suspecting eye, and he sighed as he knew that he had to explain it all. Now, don't judge me just yet. I assure you that I'm not ripping you off. Following your requirement, the base of your Pegasus armor is a rare metal that was expensive, to begin with. Plus, because of the unusual appearance of a Pegasus, it had to be worked on by the master itself. There was another issue with the oxygen equipment and the pressure and temperature regulator equipment. Those were not cheap. All of that plus my intermediary fee 80. Star's coin was already a bargain, the broker said as he sighed once more. After Dio listened to the broker's word, he was surprised as he didn't expect his pursuit to perfection would be this expensive. But Dio knew that he couldn't compare Pegasus armor with the metal used to build a spaceship. Pegasus needed a flexible metal and hard enough to hold for impact. If the metal used was the one to make a spaceship, the Pegasus would lose its speed. Dio also knew that despite the material cost and other stuff, the seller himself had to make some profit out of it. But Dio didn't expect the broker's price for his service was that high. He had to think about this for a while. He couldn't just spend all his money in one go like this. Dio clearly didn't have enough money for now. He had to find a way to make money quickly as he couldn't really stay in one place for too long. So, he left the broker's place, but the broker immediately stopped him once more. I am sorry, but can you tell me your profession? I might have some high rewarding task for you if you need it. It doesn't matter if you are wanted criminal or anything, customer's discretion is our professional ethics, the broker said curiously. I am a bounty hunter. I would like to see the task first before I would agree to it. Dio said casually. The broker nodded and immediately pulled out a glass scanner and a monitor. The broker asked for Dio to swipe his identity card to the scanner as he needed to know Dio's track record. Dio swiped his bracelet that served as his identity item, and his data immediately showed up on the monitor. The broker was shocked to see that Dio had a 100% success rate on his jobs with only 3 months on his belt. Not only that, but Dio also completed a high-risk bounty that worth above 10 star coins. The broker knew that leaving the task to Dio could return as a surprise. He knew that he would have nothing to lose as he has already entrusted this task to several other people. I believe that you have the capability to finish this task. Now, all you need to do is find this thing and bring it back to me. I will pay you 100. Stars coin for it. The broker said as he handed over a tablet that contained the image of an iron ball with a complicated carving. Dio was surprised as he knew what this iron ball was. This was the shell that housed Power Gem. It seemed this broker was the one who sent Yandu to find this iron ball, and once Star-Lord came to deliver it, the broker informed that Ronan also searched for the ball that made the broker immediately kicked Star-Lord out of his establishment. Didn't you have to follow some official process on this bounty hunt? Or is this just your personal request? Dio asked the broker with a smirk on his face. No, I am just a middleman. The customer wants to avoid unnecessary trouble, and thus he makes it look like it was an illegal bounty. But I can assure you that the reward is real, the broker said confidently. A hundred thousand for this? Really? Dio said as he smirked knowingly to the broker. He knew that the collector would pay at least four billion stars coin for this power gem. 
he wanted to refuse the task and find the power gem for himself that he would later sell to the collector. But he immediately remembered that this power gem was also the one thing that kickstarted the entire Guardian of Galaxy team up. Please trust my credibility for this one. I would never take advantage of my customer. The broker said solemnly. Dio knew better. He knew that the broker must have a better deal than he kept from Dio, but for now, he was interested in Guardian of the Galaxy's progress. And so, he accepted it. Send me the information. But once I brought it back, you better have the money for me. Dio said casually, but he knew that if the broker kicked him out just because the broker learned that Ronan also wanted to have the iron ball himself, Dio clearly wouldn't let the broker get away with it. I am relieved that you agree to take it, the broker said as he immediately sent the information regarding the iron ball's whereabout to the tablet that Dio held. After that, Dio immediately returned to the battleship with Galaxy. For now, he knew that he didn't have to go out of his way to search for the Iron Ball as he knew that Star-Lord would bring it there himself. He only had to take advantage of the mess between Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot later. After purchasing 10 star coins worth of gas and resources, Dio frowned a little bit as he now realized although Xander was a beautiful city, the price almost doubled the other places. But everything in Xander was guaranteed to have the best quality out of all places, and so he couldn't complain. After returning to the battleship, Dio ordered several Dark Elves to lay in wait near the Broker's place in order to ambush Star-Lord later. He also told the Dark Elves to notify him as soon as they saw a talking raccoon and a walking tree together. Dio knew that if Rocket and Groot were sighted, Peter Quill wouldn't be far behind. As for now, Dio wouldn't sit around doing anything either. He would go and collect some bounty while he waited for the good news from the Dark Elves that he left in Xander. At the same time, the plot played like it was supposed to be. Yondu, who got himself the task to recover the Iron Ball, ordered a young earthling that he took as a child to take it for him. Yondu knew that Peter Quill, who gave himself the name of Star-Lord was a genius in finding things. Peter Quill was the space version of Tony Stark. He was eccentric, playboy, and a huge sarcastic prick. The only thing that made him different from Tony was Peter's love of classical music that his mother left him before she died on Earth. Dio's battleship slowly descended into a desolate planet. Analyze air composition. Detecting cosmic radiation. Send a search team to find the target location. The Dark Elf operator said hurriedly as he noticed that the planet wasn't safe to inhabit. A few minutes later, a huge amount of data was transferred to Mapedoff, and he immediately sends it over to Dio. But strangely, the planet was rich in oxygen, and there was almost no harmful gas anywhere. So, the desolation of this planet was bizarre. But nonetheless, Dio's task there is to find and rescue a team of scholars who crashed into this planet and has been lost in contact with the Nova Empire ever since. But that was the second mystery that Dio encountered on this planet. Although he found the crashed spacecraft that the scholar used, Dio couldn't find any life signal around them. This is a troublesome request, but he could nail 30. Stars coined by completing this task. Mr. Dio. Is this mission dangerous? Crystal asked as he watched the condition on the planet curiously. It was rare for Crystal to be awake, so Dio let her see the scene outside from the cockpit. Danger always exists, Crystal. They always come the more we don't expect them. But what happened? You're rarely awake these days. Dio said wisely. I don't really know, Mr. Dio. But after I wake up, I felt something bad coming, and now, the feeling was stronger than before. Crystal said worriedly. Dio was surprised upon hearing Crystal's word, and so he asked what Crystal meant by that urgently. This planet is dangerous, Mr. Dio. I feel nervous just by looking at it. Crystal said nervously. Dio then heightened his awareness as he knew that Crystal wasn't joking around. Dio had thought that maybe Crystal has woken up because her power had manifested once again, and this time it was a warning for the dangerous situation that she was about to get into. At the same time, the Dark Elves that Dio had dispatched to search for the Scholar group found something and immediately reported back to Dio. They had found a Scholar in the middle of a meadow, who was still alive according to the heat signal that the Dark Elves provided. But as he looked closely into the live feed that the Dark Elves provided, he noticed that something wasn't right. Sir. Do we order the search team to rescue the survivor immediately? It seems we got company not too far from here. 
Mapdoff asked solemnly. Dio realized that with this kind of reward money, there must be many more bounty hunters who were trying to complete this request. No. Order them to return to the ship immediately. Let the newcomer save the survivor first. We must go up into the atmosphere a little bit. Let them see that we will not stop them if they come close to the survivor. Dio said commandingly. Dio wasn't sure of everything this planet has shown to him this far. Plus, Crystal's warning really bothered him. Dio also noticed that the scholar who was still alive in the middle of a meadow just now didn't have any weapon or any basic survival equipment on him. There was no way the scholar could stay alive on his own without having anything like that. Because of this thought, Dio realized that the survivor must have been a trap. The Dark Elves obeyed Dio's command and pulled up to the sky. The rest of the Dark Elves who flew around with a mini spacecraft also returned to the battleship as soon as they heard that Dio gave the order to return immediately. Not too long after that, Dio saw that many spaceships of different variety approached the survivor spot. Many of them chose to leave the ship, fully prepared for a battle. But the problem was they didn't know what they were up against. Dio also noticed that the people who got off their ship just now suddenly argued as they wanted to rescue the survivor themselves. Everyone. Since no one's willing to back down from saving that survivor, how about we settle things in the right way? A tall buff red woman with a tail on her back said to all the bounty hunters that argued. Her suggestion is to have one representative of each team to fight it out, and the final victor should take the survivor for themselves. I agree. That way, we will save ourselves some time. A man said not too far away from the red woman's position. Everyone on the scene immediately nodded as they agreed to it. Before we begin, I suggest that people with a medical background check on our survivor's condition, it would be a shame if he died while we're still duking it out, trying to find who is worthy of completing the mission. The red woman said confidently. A medic from each team immediately nodded and rushed towards the scholar while carrying a bag of medical equipment and medicinal items. The scholar was lying on the ground, waiting for rescue. The goddess were famous scholars that were known for their adventurous nature. Once the medic got close to the scholar, they found that the scholar was delirious and mumbling something confusing. There was a giant. The scholar said, but he never looked at the medic even once. It was like the scholar was under some sort of trance. This was a trap. Macrophages are here, the scholar said, still in a trance. The medic seemed to know what the scholar was talking about and stepped back in horror. But it was already too late. The ground shook under the medic's feet, and suddenly a huge mouth appeared from the ground below, grinding the soil with its huge teeth. The medics and the scholar were immediately swallowed and grinded by the huge teeth. It's an adult macrophage worm. Everyone, get ready to fight. A blue-skinned warrior shouted to snap everyone from their shock. A huge worm immediately came out from the ground and rushed towards the group of bounty hunters earlier with its hideous mouth full of teeth ready to grind everyone. None of them ever expected to encounter this monster on this planet. It was so big that it was already within the 500 meters radius from the group of bounty hunters. No one really knew how long Macrophage's worm could grow. Fire. Kill it. The blue-skinned warrior said as he shouted once again for everyone to open fire. The war was immediately covered with bullet holes, green mucus-like blood spurted all over the place, but fortunately, it wasn't corrosive. Otherwise, everyone would have been dead. After that, a loud explosion was heard as the red woman earlier fired a huge cannon towards the worm. The worm now had a big hole on its body. The red woman was also pushed back from the recoil of the huge cannon, making her unable to shoot in succession. Even Dio, who was observing the fight from a safe distance on the planet's atmosphere, was shocked to see the red woman's firepower. Keep bombarding it. Don't let it run, the blue-skinned warrior earlier shouted as he knew that the worm wasn't dead yet. The bounty hunters immediately threw every grenade that they had and successfully blew the worms in two. What a shit day, the blue-skinned man said as he kicked the worm's mouth. Idiots. Get away from it, the red woman shouted, but it was all too late. The worm's mouth suddenly moved and grinded the blue-skinned man alive. This macrophage's worm could still move on instinct after a certain period, even if they were dead. This was also the reason why the macrophage's worm was classified as a dangerous alpha class. 
As soon as they ceased their attack on the dead worm, none of them was in the mood to finish the mission anymore. Most of them immediately returned to their ships to leave this planet for good, but several people were trying their luck whether they could find some evidence to prove all scholars were dead. But the ground shook once again. Be careful, it was more than one macrophage here, a man said, but unfortunately for him, the worm appeared right under his feet. The man was killed instantly as the worm grinded him alive. Without the man shouting, giving everyone a warning, everyone has already noticed that there were more macrophage worms there. The people near the first worm scattered as they know that they were too distracted to fight back, but unfortunately for them, a dozen more worms popped out of the ground and began sweeping everyone on the ground into their mouth. The unluckiest of them were those who were hiding inside their ships were also killed by the worms that swallowed the ship whole. After seeing the horrible scene, Dio's face frowned. He never expected those worms would have such a high intelligence. It was clear that the worms used the scholar as bait, and judging from the place they emerged from the ground, it was clear that these worms have already targeted the ships that landed on the ground too. But as Dio observed once again, he could see that a red figure was still fighting during chaos. The red figure finally started running as the place that she previously stood was now covered with so many angry worms. She could no longer hold her huge cannon as it dislocated her shoulders because of constant use. But the next scene came as a surprise to Dio as he saw that the worms that rushed towards the red woman suddenly changed direction, ignoring the red woman alone. Dio then realized that the worms had higher intelligence than he first thought, and therefore, he immediately knew that even though he was up high in the sky, there was no guarantee that he was safe. I will go with the galaxy. Immediately bring the ship higher as soon as the rest of the search and rescue team return. Dio ordered. Mapedoff immediately nodded his head as he understood what Dio was worrying about. Mapedoff immediately brought the ship higher, but suddenly the ship shook as a loud bang was heard. Sir. The macrophages were preventing the ship from gaining altitude. We can't get away. Mapedoff said nervously. Dio cursed loudly as he never expected such a risky enemy would appear in a 30. Stars coin mission. Turn on all the thruster. Don't mind the fuel this time. We must get away at all costs. I will try to kill the worms hanging on to us. Dio said as he rushed out immediately. Inside the ship, Crystal looked at the retreating figure as she became more anxious. Although the macrophages were a huge problem, they were not the source of her worry. Dio rode on Galaxy's back with, Reaper's gaze, in hand. He knew that he couldn't fight on land as the ground became his blind spot. But if he fought in the open air, he didn't have any blind spot at all. Plus, Galaxy's flying speed was so fast that there was no way the macrophage's worm could catch up. Dio then coated the, Reaper's gaze, with his Hammond energy so that it could cut through the macrophage's worm's thick skin. With Galaxy's speed and, Reaper's gaze, S sharpness, Dio cut the worms in half. The Dark Elf's battleship immediately rose as Mapedoff didn't want the macrophages to grab. Onto the ship again. He even activated the ship's stealth ability to ensure that the macrophages couldn't find the ship anymore. Suddenly, another macrophage's worm stretched out towards the battleship that hasn't completely disappeared yet, but the worm couldn't reach the ship as it was already too high. Furthermore, Dio also slashed the incoming worms in the mouth to block it from coming any higher. This sudden attack by the macrophage's worm scared everyone on the ship. Mapedoff instantly ordered the pilot to fly even higher, and once they were at 3 kilometers high, Mapedoff sighed in relief as he knew that the macrophage's worm couldn't reach them with that height. Now, all he had to do was to wait for Dio's return. Dio was shocked to see that the worm's level of intelligence. It wouldn't attack a ship that high if it didn't have any mind to make that strategy. Dio sighed as he knew that he will have to deal with these annoying creatures now. Dio saw another macrophage emerged from the ground once more, but this time, it was toward himself. Dio sighed and threw one of the implosion grenades into the worm's mouth, and after a while, it imploded, destroying the worm's mouth into dust. Dio now knew why the planet was deserted even though it was suitable for living. It was simply because this planet has already become the macrophage worm's nest. There was nothing that these beasts couldn't eat, leaving no other room for another species to live there. The macrophage worm on its own was clearly an alpha threat beast, but if it was a nest we're talking about, it became an omega threat. A threat was so dangerous that it was considered a special case. 
a planet with a macrophage nest couldn't be used anymore. Thankfully, the macrophage didn't have the ability to traverse the universe. It must be brought in by something else. The usual case was that the egg of a macrophage was brought inside a spaceship inadvertently, and thus released once the ship boarded into another planet. If the macrophage's worm could traverse the universe on their own, they would become the biggest threat the entire universe would experience. For now, Dio didn't know how long this planet has been occupied by the macrophage worm, but it really seemed that they've already occupied this planet for a long time since it was impossible for them to have this kind of number in a short amount of time. Just as Dio thought that he should leave this planet for good, another macrophage broke through the ground and rushed towards him. Fortunately, Galaxy could avoid the worm's charge with ease. Dio sighed and threw another implosion grenade at this worm as he knew that the worm would target him relentlessly. The implosion killed the worm in an instant. As its body collapsed after some parts were missing due to the implosion. Galaxy dodged the worm splattered blood beautifully. Dio felt satisfied as he used all the material that he bought earlier on Xander to make this implosion grenade. As far as Dio knew, he was the only one in the universe who had the technology to create this implosion grenade. He hasn't seen anyone who could create anything like this. Dio even made a small improvement to the grenade itself, where if somebody tried to disassemble the grenade in order to find out how to make it, the grenade would trigger, and the implosion would happen. Dio, who still flew with Galaxy, looked down and saw that the ground was already covered by the worms. It was a really horrifying and disgusting scene. But nonetheless, it was just a worm. So, if he maintained his altitude, it wouldn't be able to reach. Dio realized that he could order the black battleship to fire on the worm, but it would be a waste of resources. This time, Dio was ready to leave this planet, but he hesitated once again. He knew that the mission wasn't done yet. If he left like this, he wouldn't get anything, plus his perfect mission completion record would also be broken. But the only problem was that the reward for this mission wasn't worth the risk at all. So, he immediately contacted Mapedoff and told him to follow Dio, but the ship should stay on the same altitude as before. He wanted to see if there was anything that he could grab as proof that all of the scholars had been annihilated. Dio saw that the ground where the scholar was used as a bait by the worms earlier was already back to normal. He occasionally saw a few small worms grinding a weapon or a piece of metal that didn't belong to this planet. This was also one of the macrophage's abilities as it could restore the ground that it destroyed back to its former state. Dio finally saw that a red figure was lying on the ground where the scholar was seen earlier. Dio instantly knew that the red woman was used to become the next bait for the worm's prey. Dio saw that she didn't have any equipment left in her hands as her hands itself were twisted, obviously dislocated from her fight against the worm earlier. Dio looked away as he didn't have any reason to save her. And that was where he saw something that made him smirk joyfully. Dio saw a piece of horn that clearly didn't belong to the previous bounty hunters. This meant that it was something that belonged to the previous scholar. Furthermore, the horn was lodged on the dead worm's teeth, and so, it was clear that it would be easy to take. If he got this horn, combined with the video that he recorded earlier, the mission would be complete. Although the reward wasn't worth the risk, it was still a huge reward. It could pay off for the resources that he burned here at the very least. Moreover, he could complain to the client and ask for readjustment for the reward too, but as he now was talking about profit, Dio looked at the red woman again. Dio then ordered Galaxy to fly close to the ground and told her to fly away as soon as there was any movement on the ground. Galaxy immediately neighed in approval of Dio's order, and soon, she flew close to the red woman. Hey! I will save you if you pay me 100. Star's coin! Dio shouted to the red woman. Dio immediately cut to the point as he knew that there was no point in small talk. After all, it was simply business, not a scene to make a friend. The universe was vast, people died every second, so there was no need to think highly of some stranger. If he didn't get any benefit here, he wouldn't risk his life to save this woman. I don't have that much money. All my wealth has been grinded to a pulp by these stupid beasts. The woman said frustratedly. She knew where Dio was coming from. After all, she would do the same thing if she was in Dio's shoes. But I still have 10. Star's coin in my account. I can give it all to you and raise some money to pay my debt in the future, the red woman said confidently. Dio was taken aback by the red woman's honesty, 
and that alone encouraged Dio to save her. After thinking for a while, Dio knew that an extra 10 stars coin profit wouldn't hurt anybody. Dio nodded to the Red Woman as his way to say that he agreed to the Red Woman's proposal. Galaxy immediately swept down, and Dio killed two small macrophages worms that were eating a metal junk near the Red Woman. Then Dio immediately flew toward the huge dead macrophages that were in possession of the horn earlier and took the horn in one single swoop. But the ground immediately shook, and Galaxy flew higher in response to avoid the incoming giant macrophages worm that came out of it. The Red Woman was looking desperate as she could sense the worms moved under the ground below her. She felt frustrated as she felt that she still had a chance to survive if the man earlier saved her immediately instead of negotiating the price first. But now that she was at death's door like this, strangely enough, she didn't resent the man for bailing on her like that. The only thing that she regretted was that she could no longer explore the universe as she knew that there were so many things that she hasn't seen yet. But from the corner of her eye, she saw the man earlier came flying towards her. Stop. Don't come near me. There is another worm lying in ambush below me. The red woman said to Dio warningly. Dio was startled to see that the woman was honest enough to warn him like that, he knew that the woman has already given up on being saved because of that, but Dio has not given up just yet. He was determined to get the extra star coins that the red woman has promised. If the red woman didn't warn him just now, Dio might be caught off guard when he saw the worm emerged beneath her, but now that Dio knew that a worm was lying in ambush there, he wouldn't fall for that trap. Go. I am beyond help now, the red woman said frustratedly. She didn't want the man to die because he was trying to help her. Shut up, woman. Dio said annoyedly. The red woman was startled and fell silent as a result. But, as she did so, she could feel the ground beneath her vibrate. When Dio picked her up and about to fly away, the macrophages worm instantly popped out. At the same moment, Dio realized that Galaxy wouldn't be able to escape the macrophages worm fast enough. The red woman looked horrified as she looked at the approaching worm's grinding teeth. But as she looked at the man's face, she wondered why the man still looked confident in the face of a mortal danger like this. She even wondered why this man was adamant in saving her just for a measly amount of star coins. For Dio, this worm wasn't really a problem at all. He immediately summoned the world, and stopped the time. Everything immediately stopped to a standstill under the world's power, and because of that, what danger could Dio face? What trap could lie in wait for him? None. Dio then spun his reaper's gaze, and chopped the macrophage worm into bits. Three seconds passed, and Dio snapped his finger, restoring the flow of time once again. Everything back to how it was before, except for the macrophage worm. It was already destroyed into bits below them, the red woman was clearly disturbed as she didn't understand how the worm died just like that. Galaxy successfully carried Dio and the red woman out of the danger zone, while the red woman was still left wondering about Dio's ability. She didn't see Dio move at all, so what happened? But as she looked around, she finally noticed that the scythe that Dio held was different from before. It was covered with too many green fluids that obviously was the blood of the worms. Because of that, she concluded that the man had the power of the old gods. The power of time manipulation, or space manipulation, or something like that. There was no doubt in her mind that the person who saved her was a very powerful man. She thought back earlier when the man told her to shut up and realized that the worm was no different than a worm that people used to fish for the man. At this moment, the red woman looked at Dio with extreme admiration on her face. But, the ground on the whole planet began to shake tremendously. Dio was confused by what was happening, but the next scene clearly shocked him to the core. Thousands of macrophages worms emerged from the ground, like a flood. Dio immediately sensed the danger that he was in right now, so he ordered Galaxy to rush towards the dark battleship in the fastest way the Pegasus could fly. Dio finally reached the battleship safely. Everyone inside the ship sighed in relief as they saw that Dio has finally returned. Let's go. We must leave this place quickly. I have a bad feeling about this. Dio said to Mapedoff worriedly. The medical team immediately carried the red woman to the medical bay as she was bleeding in several spots while Dio was still instructing Mapedoff to fly away as fast as possible. Right now, the planet was swarmed with the macrophage worm. There was no ground that wasn't covered with the worms. 
Dio realized that his action earlier has caused huge trouble now. So, the Dark Battleship immediately moved to get out of the planet. But at the same time, the planet began to shake heavily, and the ground began to collapse like it would be destroyed. Dio could feel the vibration even though he was high up in the sky. Dio was confused by what was happening, he immediately realized that the way the ground collapsed was the same as what he saw before. Turn off the invisibility tech. Load all energy into overdrive. We have to get away from here. Dio shouted hurriedly. Mapedoff immediately nodded and obeyed what Dio just told him to do. Because of Dio's quick thinking, they successfully got out of the planet, but Dio knew that he burned an unnecessary amount of fuel just to get out of that planet. But as they were sighing in relief, an indescribably huge macrophage worm emerged from the huge hole in the middle of the planet. It was obvious if Dio didn't instruct Mapedoff to get away earlier, they would have been swallowed by that king macrophage. Even if they were already in space and far from the planet, they could see the contour on the gigantic worm's body. They all saw the planet shook violently as the huge worm moved from side to side. Nobody could imagine just how big the macrophage king really was as it was only its head that came out of the ground. This time, Dio immediately realized what Crystal mean by saying that the planet was dangerous. This planet was the home of the macrophage's worm's king that would easily eat the entire planet easily. Dio sighed in relief that he successfully escaped the danger in the nick of time. The mission would have been failed no matter what, but fortunately, he could make some extra money despite the danger he went through. Sir, where do we go from here? Mapedoff asked respectfully. To Xander. We don't have to go anywhere else for a while. Dio said as he slouched down in the captain's seat. He didn't have enough fuel to work with anymore, so he decided to take a break in Xander while waiting for the Guardian of the Galaxy to come. After all, he could see the exhaustion on the face of everyone on the ship. The nerve-wracking scene on the previous planet must have caught up to them now. Just as the battleship set sail toward Xander, Dio looked at the planet once more and saw that the macrophage king slowly submerged back into the ground. He saw that the ground itself slowly returned to normal. The scene was so wacky that Dio had to do a double take on what he was seeing. Fortunately for Dio, he has already recorded everything that happened there. Now, he had to get the star coins from the red woman as he wouldn't take it kindly if she lied to him. So, Dio ordered a dark elf to summon the red woman to the cockpit. The red woman quickly changed her clothes with the clothes that the dark elf has prepared for her, and she immediately went to the cockpit, like the dark elf had told her to. Her medical check showed a positive result, as no macrophage egg was found inside her body. After she arrived at the cockpit, she showed a courtesy of her people. She bowed in one knee and offered her bracelet for Dio to take. Dio nodded and took the bracelet from her hand, and swiped it to the tablet in his hands. Her information immediately popped up. Dio saw that she had roughly 13. Stars coin, just like what she said earlier. Dio immediately transferred all of it without shame and threw the bracelet back to the red woman. Now, you are clear to go. I will drop you off in Xander later. Dio said casually. No. I am sorry, but we from the Red Star race held true to our promises above all else. You clearly said that you would save me for 100. Stars coin, and now, I only gave you 10% of the amount you said earlier. Although I have nothing now, I can work for you until my debt is paid off. The red woman said confidently. Dio was confused. He obviously couldn't reject her offer as she was determined to serve him, but to be honest, he didn't mind. Obviously, she was one of the elite warriors in the entire races, but compared to Dio's ability, she was still far from exceptional. Dio once again stepped his feet on Xander's soil. This time, he must have an official statement regarding the mission earlier. It was clear that the reward was too small for a mission of that scale. And he had to ask whoever gave the mission to cancel the mission. So that his mission completion rate didn't fall just because of this one mission. And so, Dio took the matter to the hand of Bounty Hunter Union under Nova Empire's control. He took the Red Woman who he learned was named Red Rose, with him as Crystal was already back to sleep. Boss, won't we be in trouble if we report the task publisher to the Bounty Hunter Union? Red Rose said worriedly. Although she was a warrior, Dio knew that she wasn't dumb at all. 
She knew that if the discussion with the Bounty Hunter Union went south later, the task publisher could make them the new Bounty Hunter target under a false accusation. But for Dio, none of this was a problem. He didn't care about how much influence someone possessed. If they chose to make an enemy out of Dio, he would gladly kill them. Dio didn't even acknowledge Nova Empire as a nation that must be feared. After all, the only one that Dio had to be careful of right now was only Thanos. That man had an influence as well as power. No, none of it mattered to me. But you can walk around, for now, maybe get something to eat while you're waiting for me to return. Dio said casually to Red Rose as he walked inside the Bounty Hunter Union. Red Rose gritted her teeth as she knew that she had no choice here. It was better for her to walk in with Dio than let him go alone. After all, she has promised to always support Dio no matter what the situation was. Hello, this is Bounty Hunter Union Xander Division. Is there anything that I can help you with, the staff asked as Dio walked into the mission room. I am here to hand over the mission. Dio said as he took out the horn that he got earlier. He also handed over his bracelet as the bracelet was the same as the ID card used in space. The staff immediately scanned both Dio's bracelet and the horn that Dio gave. This is indeed an item that was used by one of the scholars. The information was accurate, but according to the request, you have to hand over a certain information before you could finish this mission properly. The staff said politely. Dio took out a large transparent plate that was a recording platform that he used to record the situation on the macrophage planet earlier. That's the recording that my crew took while we are at the mission's planet. It should be enough information there. But I need to get the task publisher on trial. The mission's description is incomplete, and because of that, so many bounty hunters died on that planet. I hope the Union can give me a satisfying solution regarding this matter. Dio said coldly. The staff was taken aback by Dio's sudden change of attitude, so he immediately checked the content of the recording that Dio has handed over. After watching all of it, the staff was horrified. She has never seen anything like this before. I understand, I will immediately report this finding to my superior. We will check on the authenticity of this recording, and once it was done, if this information is valid, we will increase the mission reward and put the task publisher on the blacklist, the staff said hurriedly as she left Dio on the room. After a few minutes of waiting, a woman came graciously to the room. I am the minister of the task here in the Nova Empire. You can call me Nova. I heard that you are demanding a trial for your task publisher, she said graciously. Yes, I've already put down the information needed in the recording earlier. Dio said coldly. She nodded and walked into the computer to see Dio's recording. After the video ended, Nova was horrified herself. A planet occupied by the macrophage worms. She said to herself in her shocked state. She now realized that the mission clearly didn't suit its rank that was judged as a C-class mission. This was more like an S-class mission, or probably a special class. It looked like this task publisher was deliberately feeding a bunch of bounty hunter to the macrophage worms. I understand. Your reward would be readjusted after I held a meeting to review this case. The task publisher would also be sanctioned according to our rules. I will personally make sure this kind of deception would never happen again. Nova said angrily. She knew that if she couldn't handle this case properly, things might take a worse turn later. After all, from the record, more than a hundred bounty hunters have fallen victim to this mission. This was also the Union's fault for not keeping track of the strange record regarding the mission. Hopefully, we can reach an agreement soon. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you that Red Rose was the only survivor of her crew. She has worked hard on her crew's well-being, and now that they are dead, I hope the Union can somehow compensate her on that. Dio said coldly. I understand, I will report it in the meeting, and I also hope we can come up with a solution to this problem soon. I will make sure that everyone was compensated for this incident. But surely, I wish that this kind of information doesn't spread to the outside world. Nova said as he took a deep look into Dio's eyes. Before walking out of the Bounty Hunter Union, Dio envisioned the worst possible outcome where the Union was in cahoot with the task publisher, and thus the Union would try to shut Dio's mouth before he could talk about this problem. But this was all just Dio's own imagination, but if it came to it, Dio just had to take the Union down. Report Captain we found a trace of Zen Hobari's race nearby. The Dark Elf spy reported to Dio. D 
Dio immediately realized that it was Gamora. She was the only Zihobirian left after Thanos massacred her race. Dio knew that Peter Quill wouldn't be far behind. Dio knew that Gamora was here to ambush Peter as Dio was also doing the same thing. She wanted to give the Iron Orb to Thanos, while Dio simply wanted money out of it. Dio immediately checked the Bounty Hunter network as he knew that Peter should be in the system thanks to betraying Yondu. Peter Quill, also known as Star-Lord. Status, Wanted Alive. Reward, 40. Star's Coin. Publisher, The Ravagers, Yondu Yudanta. Requirement, Captured Alive, Missing Some Limbs is Allowed. Dio smirked as he found Peter's bounty mission. The Guardian of Galaxy plotline has begun. He immediately rented a room to stay nearby the marketplace, where Peter would come to hand over the mission himself. Because of that, Dio sent Red Rose to the battleship as it was easier for him to work alone now. Dio extended his stay on Xander for a couple of days in pretense to make sure that his ship was all repaired and worked normally. The next day, the Dark Elf spy that Dio had stationed in several places around Xander reported back to Dio that they found Rocket Raccoon and Groot. But their Star-Lord was still nowhere to be found. It wasn't until the third day that Dio finally found Peter strolling lightly near the government building. Hey, Peter. Dio said to draw Peter's attention. Have we met before? Peter said as he was confused to see a man that he never saw before calling his name. Dio smirked as he already knew Peter's character for a long time, but clearly, Peter never saw him before. Listen. If you want my signature, you will have to wait. I have things to do first. We can go to a pub after that, how does that sound? Good. Peter said with his casually annoying attitude. Hmm, that was a good offer, but I am here to cash in your forty. Bounties. So, I will give you a chance to run. Dio said as he smugly smiled at Peter. Oh, wow, I never saw that coming. CK, you better walk away now. Peter said as he pulled out his weapons. Dio sighed and closed his distance with Peter almost instantly and shot him with, red hot chili pepper, S power. Peter never had a chance to shoot as Dio was as fast as lightning itself. Peter immediately fell to the ground as he was tasered. Dio had made sure that he wouldn't cause any permanent damage to Peter and made sure that the electricity that he used to shock Peter was only enough to make him faint. Dio then put Peter outside of the broker's place while making sure that he tied up Peter's hand and feet. Dio also took the iron orb from Peter's possession and took away his weapons too. Dio then immediately entered the broker's shop as he knew that he had to be quick. He had to get things done before Gamora, Groot, and Rocket arrived at the scene. Hey. I am here to hand over the mission. Dio said to the broker as soon as he entered the broker's shop. Well, look at that. Looks like giving that mission to you was the right choice, the broker said excitedly. Dio then put the iron orb on the table and let the broker look at it. Now, I would like to be paid in cash. Dio said as he smirked to the broker as he knew that the iron orb was the real one. The broker didn't seem to mind, and he immediately put ten golden coins on the table where each coin represented ten. Star's coin. Pleasure doing business with you. Dio said as he put the coins inside one of his playing cards. But Dio knew that the broker wouldn't keep the iron orb for long. You know, I am a little bit upset here. You never told me that the mission was a high-risk mission. Dio said in fake annoyance. What do you mean? It was supposed to be a high difficulty as you have to find it yourself without a sufficient amount of information, not a high-risk one, the broker said confusedly. Well, that is true, but apparently, Ronan is also looking for this item. I had to deal with several of his men on the planet where I found this orb. Dio said, still in fake annoyance. Ronan. Shit. Take it away with you. I don't want to get involved with Ronan. The broker said as he shoved the iron orb into Dio's hand. What? Why are you so afraid of Ronan? Dio said in a fake curiosity. Are you mad? He is a maniac. He was furious about the peace treaty that the Kree Empire made with Nova Empire. He was willing to do anything to break that treaty. The broker said nervously. What? So, what do you want me to do with this thing? Dio said, still in his fake annoyance. Do whatever you want with it. 
but make sure to take it far away from here. The broker said nervously. Dio then left the broker's shop with a big smile on his face. Before Dio left the broker's shop, he still found it in him to threaten the scared lizard man a little bit. You know, I can't do that. This is your request. Now that I have returned it here, this thing is useless to me. If you hand it over to me, then you are basically shoving the danger that comes along with it to me. Dio said in fake annoyance. I'll give you ten. Stars coin, but you must leave with this thing and never come here again, the broker said nervously. I don't think ten. Stars coin is worth the danger. Dio said coldly. Then, you are the one who brought this thing here, so you deal with it. The broker said nervously. No. Give me one hundred. Stars coin, and I assure you, Ronan would never look your way. After all, you're the one who provides this task. Did you not care if I ruin your reputation later? No one will ever accept your task again. Dio said confidently. The broker was regretting he ever released the task now. If he would have known Ronan was also looking for the orb, he would never interfere with it. That is my last offer. The broker said, still looking nerve-wracked. Think of it like this. You want me to get rid of something that could get anyone killed with so little amount of money. So, if I said no here, I think you will be in a lot of trouble. Dio said coldly. You are pushing it here. The broker said, feeling annoyed that Dio was really pushing it now. Don't you dare to make me look like the bad guy here. You are the one who sent me on this mission, now here I am, bringing what you want, and now you're telling me there is someone really dangerous wanting this shit and suddenly, you don't want it and give it back to me to dispose of. You are clearly trying to get me killed here. Dio said annoyedly. Dio's word really hit the broker hard. He knew that whatever he said from this point would be his fault. So, he sighed and agreed to Dio's request. Okay. I'll find someone to make your Pegasus's armor later. I still have the data that I got earlier. I'll make the armor free instead. How about this instead of star coins? I promise everything will suit your request. The broker said tiredly. Dio was amused as he knew that the Pegasus armor worth equal to 100. Star's coin, but the most important thing that Dio realized was the fact that the broker didn't want to lose money, no matter what. But this deal was acceptable as he needed the armor too. If the armor disappointed him later, Dio could always complain. Okay, we got ourselves a deal. Dio said casually. I will need a week to prepare the armor. You can come again after that to take the armor. The broker said worriedly. No, make it five days. I'll send someone later to pick it up, but for now, I will leave. Don't try to fool me. You know the consequences. Dio said coldly. You demon. I hope this is the last time we met. The broker said while gritting his teeth. Dio didn't bother to say anything else as he immediately left the broker's shop looking smug. He didn't care about the broker as he knew that he could always deal somewhere else. Dio knew that in the future, the broker would deny him access to any of his mission. As he stepped outside, he noticed that Gamora has waited for him. He also noticed Rocket and Groot to the side, but he couldn't find Peter's whereabouts. Hey there. Are you waiting for me, or are you waiting for this thing? Dio smiled as he showed the iron orb. Gamera's attitude changed as she saw the iron orb and immediately rushed towards Dio to get her hands on the orb. Wow, easy there. Was Thanos the one who taught you to steal someone else's property right under their nose? Dio said as he flipped Gamora to the ground. Who are you? Gamora said annoyedly. As soon as she heard Thanos' name, she knew that the man in front of her wasn't any ordinary. Bounty Hunter. Me, I am just your regular jolly bounty hunter. I still have to sell this thing for profit. I hope that you don't mind. Dio said as he laughed a little bit. He was amused at Gamora's expression as he knew that Gamora was thinking about defecting from Thanos' side now. Have you seen this guy coming here? Raccoon said as he showed Dio Peter's photo. No. This man is a bounty hunter. I saw he was captured by that guy earlier. Gamora said annoyedly as he looked at Dio. Rocket and Groot immediately attacked Dio without hesitation. They wanted to get Peter's bounty, 
although they didn't know whether the woman was telling the truth or not. They knew that Gamora was not a bounty hunter from the way she fought and that alone assured them that she wasn't a business rival. Dio sighed as their attack hit his Hammond shield, but clearly, it didn't have enough power to penetrate his shield. That's it. I've had enough. Dio said as he rushed towards Gamora and hit her in the stomach. She was shocked to see Dio was moving so fast, and she didn't have enough time to evade Dio's attack. Rocker immediately pulled out his shotgun and immediately shot Dio, while Groot sneakily moved toward Dio's blind spot and immediately extended his arm to grab Dio. But Dio already saw it all. He pulled Gamora's body, using her as a shield against Rocket's gun. Dio then threw Gamora toward Rocket as he knew that Gamora should have fainted. At the same time, Dio roundhouse kicked Groot's extended arm back to the side. Their fight was witnessed by a lot of people, more and more people came to watch what was happening. But, Dio saw that Gamora was standing up again. It seemed the shock from the gun wasn't enough to put her down for a while. Dio wanted to spar with Guardian of Galaxy's members some more, but as he saw that the Galactic Enforcer was already coming his way, he had to finish this as soon as possible. So, he summoned his two ice stands and immediately turned his surrounding into ice. He successfully froze Gamora, Groot, and Rocket completely. He knew that it wouldn't be enough to kill any of them, but at least they would suffer the damage when they were thawed off from their frozen state. Dio then immediately walked into the crowds, blending in and disappearing easily. Not long after that, Nova Squadron came and used their gravity gun to capture Gamora, Groot, and Rocket. They were annoyed as they knew that Groot and Rocket were repeat offenders, while Gamora was the princess of Thanos. On the other side, Dio ordered the rest of the Dark Elves who were observing the place to return to the battleship with Peter in tow. Knew that the Dark Elves should have captured Peter once again as they knew that Dio had no intention to let Peter go. Get some water to wake him up. Dio said to Mapedoff as they reached the battleship. Mapedoff nodded and brought a glass of cold water that he immediately poured on Peter. Peter was shocked as the cold water hit his body. Man. I know that you are a fan of mine, but do you have to kidnap me like this? I will give you my signature if that is what you want. Peter said with his sarcastic remark. Dio knew that this was just Peter's way to keep himself calm, but Dio was already bored of Peter's antic. Well, how should I put it, you are already worth 40. Star's coin. Why would I let you go if you are already worth that much? Dio said with a smirk on his face. Motherfucker. It was Yondu, wasn't it? Fuck. Peter cursed in annoyance. You don't think the Ravager would actually pay you, right? You know that there is no way they would lose money just to get me. Peter said confidently. I already knew that much. They are after the Iron Orb, aren't they? Dio said as he smirked knowingly. Then why are you doing this? You know that guy was the one who kidnapped me from the earth. He always threatens to eat me. If he knows that I no longer have the iron orb with me anymore, they will immediately turn their attention to you. Believe me, when I said this, we are better off selling the iron orb than dealing with the Ravagers. Peter said desperately. He really hated to return to the Ravagers again. Okay, that's a good idea, do you have any place to sell this stupid ball? Dio said casually. I do. We can share the money, just the two of us. 50-50. Peter said confidently. No. How about 60 dash? You 40 and I 60. Dio said casually. You can't do that. Peter said annoyedly. Dash. Dio said casually. You need me to sell that orb, you know. Peter said, trying to argue. Then. Dio said amusedly. All right, fine. We will do 60 dash. You piece of shit. Peter said annoyedly. Well, you better watch out. I can always just give you back to Yandu if I feel like it. Dio said threateningly. Dio's word immediately silenced Peter as he really didn't want to get back to the Ravagers anytime soon. On one of Saturn's satellite, Dio rendezvoused with the Ravagers as they've already agreed to meet there. The dark battleship smoothly landed on the rocky soil while the Ravagers were already laying in wait. The dark battleship's door immediately opened, and fifty or so dark elves came out and neatly stepped aside while Dio walked out with Peter Quill in tow. 
Red Rose also came out to Peter's side, making sure that he wouldn't do anything behind Dio's back the Ravagers were shocked to see that the one who successfully captured Peter looked so powerful. The tension on the place immediately rose as the Ravagers felt threatened by Dio's crew. They were unsure about how the situation would turn out as they knew that Yandu wouldn't pay them a single star coin. Brave of you coming here. Yandu said coldly. I am just delivering the bounty. Now I am expecting my money. Dio said casually. Well, I never think anyone can actually catch this slime. But a deal is a deal. Here you go. Yandu said as he put four gold stars coin on the table in the middle. Dio then told Red Rose to take it while bringing Peter to the middle. Throughout the process, nobody dared do anything stupid as the atmosphere was so tense. Red Rose took the 40. Stars coin and left Peter in the middle. Peter was nervous as he didn't understand anything that was happening right now. One second, Dio agreed with his plan to sell the iron orb, but in the end, he still dragged Peter back to the hand of the Ravagers. The cosmic orb isn't with me. They took it away. Peter said as he thought of pitting them against each other so he could escape. He didn't care who won as the only thing that he wanted right now was to get away from Yandu. Yandu immediately told one of his ravagers to check on Peter's belonging, and sure enough, they didn't find the orb. Now, can you please give me what you took away from that boy? That is the belonging you got there. Yandu said calmly. What? Your request was only to bring him in, I've never heard that whatever he brought with him would be yours too. If you are in my position, would you give it away? Dio said as he smirked to Yandu. Of course not. Yandu said as he smiled at Dio. Dio nodded and immediately turned away as he wanted to leave that place. But as he did so, a familiar whistle was heard. Dio smirked once again as he knew that Yandu was activating his signature arrow. Dio turned around, and as the arrow flew towards him, he caught it in the middle of the air. Thank you for your gift. Dio said as he held the arrow in his hand and smirked at Yandu. Yandu was shocked to see his arrow was caught so easily like that. This was the first time that a scene like this happened. What did you just say? Yandu said, trying to maintain his cool. I said thank you for giving me your signature arrow. Dio said as he burst out laughing. Yandu immediately waved his hands, and the entire Ravagers immediately pulled out their gun as they were ready to shoot Dio. Dio was happy to see the scene in front of him. The reason he came there was not to earn the extra 40 stars coin, but to provoke Yandu so he could get his Yaka arrow. Dio immediately threw some implosion grenade towards the Ravagers, successfully killing several of them with one grenade. Then Dio stood in the middle while inspecting the Yaka arrow in his hand, the Ravagers were still shooting at him, but sadly, none of them could penetrate Dio's Hammond shield. At the same time, Yandu finally had enough. He was frustrated to see no bullet could kill the man in the middle right now. Who is that guy? Yandu asked as he pulled Peter to his side. He is a bounty hunter. I don't really know how he could deflect all those bullets. Peter said worriedly. Yandu was furious. No bounty hunter should have that kind of discipline and power. He believed the man was someone very important. Plus, the grenade that the man threw was something out of this world. It could be said a mini black hole in a can. Stop. Cease fire. We surrender, you won. Yandu said as he knew that his crew could be annihilated if this fight continued. He walked back to his ship while his crew did the same. He needed a new plan in order to get the orb back later. Tie everyone up and put them on the ship. Put several men to fly their ship. Dio commanded while playing with Yandu's Yaka arrow. It was impossible to grab this Yaka arrow mid-flight, but for Dio, who used Hammond energy, that was nothing but child's play. Yaka metal had a unique feature that allowed it to establish a connection with its wielder once it was forged into a weapon. The wielder could then control the weapon with sound. And that was why Yandu always whistled as he controlled the arrow. The fin on Yandu's head was used to amplify the connection between him and the arrow so that he could use it from the further range. Upon his return to the Dark Battleship, mapped off immediately prepared for takeoff while the entire Ravager's fleet followed close behind. The Ravagers themselves were imprisoned inside the Dark Battleship, while Yandu got somewhat special treatment. Dio put him on a cell on his own, so he could talk with him. 
You know, it would be a hassle to find you if you didn't issue the bounty. Dio said casually. What do you want? Yandu said coldly as he didn't understand Dio's intention by capturing him like this. Don't worry, I didn't have any qualms with you or your Ravager's crew, I just want a Yaka medal for myself. Believe me. I will set you free and give you back your ship as long as you give me one. Dio said casually. Yandu seemed surprised and immediately burst out laughing after hearing Dio's demand. What are you laughing for? Dio said, slightly offended. Too bad for you, the Yaka arrow that you took earlier was my last Yaka medal. I don't have any more in reserve, and I can't get any more of it. Yandu said as he still laughed at Dio. You are from Alpha Centauri, right? Yaka metal was a special mineral found on your planet, and you sold it to someone. Isn't that right? Dio asked with a slight frown. Who told you that? Was it the collector? Did he also tell you that Alpha Centauri has already become a dead star? Indeed, I brought many Yaka medals from my planet in order to escape death. But I've already sold it all as I still want to survive in this vast universe. So, this is my last statement for you. I don't have a single piece left of that damned Yaka medal except for the one arrow you took earlier. Yandu said coldly. Dio calmly calculated his move. If Yandu were telling the truth, then going to Alpha Centauri itself would be useless. He could ask for the collector's help, but he knew that he would have to pay so much higher for that. He could sell the power gem to the collector in exchange for the Yaka metal, but knowing the price for the power gem, it would be overkill. So, you are saying the collector was the only one to have this Yaka metal of yours? Dio asked curiously. If you dare go back to my planet, I would say you can have a whole lot more, but I wouldn't recommend that. Yandu said casually. So basically, you are useless to me now. Dio said as he sighed disappointedly. Dio left Yandu's cell looking dejected as ever. Sir, where to now? Mapdoff asked as he appeared near Dio. Go back to Xander for now. Then we go back to nowhere after. Dio said grumpily. It was time to meet with the Collector once again. Meanwhile, several people broke out of the Nova Empire's prison led by none other than the Rocket Raccoon. He escaped with Groot, Gamora, and their new friend Drax. In order to make sure the Power Gem didn't fall to Thanos' hand, Gamora had to make sure Ronan never got the Power Gem. And with that in mind, Gamora made sure Rocket knew that he could sell the Iron Orb for 4 million stars. That was why Rocket agreed with helping Gamora escape and searched the orb. As for Drax, he didn't care about the money. All he wanted was was revenge towards Ronan as Drax believed Ronan was the one who killed his family. Where are we going to find that bastard now? Rocket asked curiously. I think we need to go to the real buyer for the power gem. It was clear that the broker already rejected the orb as it was connected to Ronan. Gamora said solemnly. Yeah, so, I still need a coordinate. Raccoon said sarcastically. Who in the universe has four million to spare just like that? I know several people were rich enough, but the only one that I can think of is only one person. The Collector. It's gotta be him. Gamora said confidently. It was great to have a location, but have you already thought about a way to actually take the orb from that person? The last time we fought against him, we got our ass handed to us. Rocket said angrily. He was still grumpy about their loss to Dio earlier, as he knew that Dio beat them so easily that it was embarrassing. Nowhere. A planet that was initially a skull of a dead celestial. It wasn't until a few hundred years ago that Tanalir Tyvan turned the skull into his home base by selling the tissue sample of the dead celestials into the black market. Until this day, Tanalir Tyvan, or best known as the Collector, routinely inspected all his treasures and controlled the black market from behind the curtain. Why is this place still dusty? Clean it up now. Tyvan said to Karina, his personal maid. Karina immediately nodded her head and proceeded to clean up the place. The collector shook his head and left her alone, not knowing that the pink-skinned maid has had enough of Tyvan's arrogance. After such a long time, Dio finally returned to nowhere, but this place still looked the same. Dio used, Knum, so the collector won't recognize him. Dio immediately left the battleship in order to negotiate with Tyvan, 
but as soon as he closed into Tyvan's place, Dio realized that there were a lot of people following him, so he stopped and investigated his surroundings. Those people immediately showed themselves while looking at Dio coldly. Dio was curious about on whose order did these people move. But he noticed the men stood around nervously like they had some information about Dio's power. Not attacking me yet. Dio said tauntingly. Dio then assumed that those men's purpose was to halt his movement, so he immediately attacked them without mercy as he knew that he could spare several men to guide him to their client later. Dio then pulled out the Reaper's gaze from his deck of card to attack. You picked the wrong opponent. Dio said as he started to slice the men in two. Just as the chaos broke out, Gamora and the others laid in wait in a nearby corner. This was the way they came up with to try and get the orb for themselves. Gamora has spread out a word that said to capture a stranger that comes toward Tyvan's place, and if they managed to capture the target, she promised 100. Stars for them. That was why these men were desperate to stand in Dio's way. Gamora and the other side in relief as they saw there were a lot of people who went after the target, they saw that the man easily killed the people they contracted, but in the end, he was alone against so many people. There was no way one man could defeat almost the entire nowhere. This is too much. Dio said as he summoned, White Album, and, Horus. The enemy suddenly clad in white skeleton-like armor, surprising everyone. But the next scene easily made everyone who saw it shit their pants. Dio immediately covered, Reaper's gaze, with his Hammond energy, and thus the, Reaper's gaze, immediately became bigger. And with, Horus, S ability, Dio created a huge ice spear around him. Dio immediately danced around the battlefield, splitting men in two and impaling several with his ice spear. Everyone who saw the scene was immediately stricken by fear. They couldn't move from their spot and simply wait for their death in Dio's hand. After Dio was done, the people that he didn't attack fell on their knees with their eyes filled with terror. The way that Dio killed so many people in such a short amount of time was brutal. Although he moved elegantly, the result was still brutal. Some of the men were panicking and ran away from the vicinity as they didn't want to lose their head just yet. There was no way they would take the risk of losing their lives just for 100. Stars coin. Not only that, but they would never able to capture such a monster, to begin with. But several men still had their hopes up. That guy is a close combat fighter. Keep your distance and bombard him with a long-range weapon and keep your distance, one of the men said confidently. The rest of the men immediately nodded in fear and did what the man said. They pulled out their gun and started to shoot at Dio's feet and arms. They were still adamant in keeping Dio alive since their mission needed them to capture the man alive. Dio shook his head as he knew that the men were too naive to think that such a half-assed attack would work against him. Dio knew that it would be too boring if he used his stand to kill off all these mobs, so he kept dancing around the field, splitting any aliens he saw in two with his oversized scythe. The armor that the enemy used didn't give any resistance at all, as the scythe was too sharp. If killing could become an art, Dio would become the da Vinci of killing art. In a short amount of time, Dio had taken 200 life easily. With the power of Hammond energy, everything is so easy. Those who didn't run before tried to escape now as they knew that they couldn't do anything to the man. They questioned everything on their mind, was it worth it to get 100? Stars coin with the risk of dying like this? On the other hand, Gamora and the others looked at the gory scene with a horrified look on their face. They were shocked to see the man dealt with countless people with ease like that. She believed even Ronan wouldn't be able to do that. Gamora began to wonder if this monster of a man would go up and challenge Thanos, her father, what would happen? They are all dead. What are we supposed to do now? Rocket said curiously. My advice, whatever the plan is, it is not worth it to go against that guy. He said nervously. Gamora and the others turned their head to look at each other and nodded in silence. Let's go. Gamora said as she led the rest of the Guardian of the Galaxy back to the ship. But they didn't know that Dio saw them. But he decided not to do anything as the Guardian of the Galaxy was a part of something bigger later. As the enemies have already fallen, Dio immediately put back his scythe inside his deck of card and continued walking towards Tanalir Tyvan's mansion. He knew that no one could blame him for killing that many people in a short amount of time like this, as this place was one of the lawless zones on the universe. For instance, if he killed the Collector right now, 
he would instantly become the master of nowhere. But Dio saw that several men were coming towards him once again. Clearly, this new group of people was desperate enough to earn money that they still approached Dio even after he killed so many people earlier. So, Dio sighed and pulled out his scythe once more to use the ultimate attack. The Reaper's Gaze's property had the power to charge up kinetic energy, much like Black Panther's suit. So, Dio swung the scythe in one powerful stroke, and a powerful energy beam was shot out from the scythe. A half-moon looking energy beam cut through the incoming enemy easily and cut through the entire building across the street. There is no one left standing on their feet after witnessing the attack, and of course, no enemy left. More than 500 people were killed today. Unfortunately, they were dead because they went against Dio. If they chose to ignore Dio after he showed his capabilities earlier, they would be alive by now. Dio shook his head as he looked over the pile of dead bodies on the street. It was unfortunate for whoever stuck with cleaning this place up. It would not be easy to clean the bloodstain that literally splattered everywhere. But Dio knew that it wasn't his problem. So, he kept walking towards Tanalir Tyvan's place like nothing ever happened. As Dio neared Tyvan's mansion, several beggars immediately rushed towards the pile of dead bodies and started to strip them of their belongings. After all, the dead wouldn't have any use of those anymore. The beggars only left the body behind as they also stripped the corpse out of their clothes. For the beggars, everything was useful, no matter how dirty it was. It could be said that Dio has helped these beggars to get rich in one night. Because of that, the beggars wondered if the killer would come again to kill soon, or perhaps the killer could kill Tanalir Tyvan for them. Whatever happened inside nowhere, the collector knew. That was why he was shocked to see an unknown man killing so many of his people over some worthless mission. But he was surprised to see that the man was walking toward his door of all place. I am Tanalir Tyvan. The master of nowhere. Welcome to my mansion. Tyvan said politely as he opened the door for Dio. Dio was a little bit surprised to see the collector himself was the one to open the door instead of his maid like last time. But he quickly shoved it off as maybe the collector was the closest to the door. I am just an ordinary bounty hunter, and I've heard that you are looking for this orb in exchange for 4 million stars in the black market recently. Dio said as he pulled out the iron orb from a card. Dio saw the excitement in Tyvan's eyes and smirked as he knew that Tyvan wanted this orb so badly. With all due respect, you are definitely a great bounty hunter. I will verify it immediately, and you will get what you want soon. Tyvan said excitedly. He then took the orb from the table and put it inside a special machine that immediately rotated the ball in such a way that it immediately opened. My new friend, did you know how this universe was made? This universe was made after the previous universe exploded, creating a big bang strong enough to start a new life. There is nothing left from the previous universe, except for six stones imbued with the universe's power itself. Power, mind, soul, time, space, and reality. With this stone, the Celestial carved the infinity gem that each one of it could destroy the entire planet. Tyvan said excitedly as a purple light immediately filled the room. It's so beautiful. Tyvan said as he looked at the gem with an obsessed look on his eyes. I don't care. Where is my money? Dio said with a bored expression. Tyvan immediately snapped back to reality and looked over to Dio again. Right, so, how would you like to be paid? Tyvan asked curiously. Cash, it was better that way. Dio said with no hesitation at all. Dio knew that a transaction with the collector must be conducted carefully. He couldn't rush it as Tyvan was as sly as a fox. Thanks to, Knum, Tyvan didn't know that he was doing a transaction with the Midgardian that he met back then. He never knew that Dio had planned everything in his head. He would leave this power gem in Tyvan's care until Ronan came to collect it. He would then retrieve back the power gem from Ronan, and he would be getting 4 million stars without losing anything. Tyvan then came back to Dio with 40 brown colored bars that Dio immediately realized that each bar represented 100. Stars coin. Dio smirked since he would become rich overnight. With this much money, Dio would be able to build his own base somewhere in this universe. Although he really missed Earth right now, it was far more profitable to open a business on the universe than on Earth but he would go back to Earth again sometime soon. Pleasure doing business with you. Dio said as he put all the brown bar inside a card. 
Dio then immediately left Tyvan's mansion and immediately walked into a corner to transform into someone else, immediately ditching the appearance that he got earlier. He even came prepared with another set of clothes to make it harder for those who have been following him to notice him in the crowd.